Flakes America. Hi. Flavor Flav! We discussed that all day yesterday, Patrice. All day long. Thank God no one raped my girl. Oh, oh it's close, say. right? Every time I had to go to the bathroom, it's like somebody got a hair balled up in their fist. It's like, I'm just going to leave this steak here with these lions for a minute. What you a fat boy for? Come on, baby. <laughs> Flavor of love. Love me. She's like, <laughs> the I got to love her for that. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Help me. Come on. You know you love me more than that. Come on. We were just trying to do an innocent Halloween party for our fans. Oh, I'm so surprised. And it turned out that oh. Flavor Flav just hijacked the whole thing. Thought it was a record release party for him. And an evening with Flavor. <laughs> yeah, an evening with Flav. Was, how clueless is this guy? It's a bunch of white people in the crowd, and he thought that they were all there for him. <laughs> it was a... Look, man, maybe... an evening, an evening with Flav. Maybe. Brought out everybody. <laughs> He's a great performer, though. He's 75, man. He's still... <laughs> 75. Yeah, boy. Blah, 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 blah. He's one of the greatest yeah. hype men. He, he is the hype man. He's, he created hype men. Yeah, I understand yep. that. But he really, really thought everyone was there to see him. He was a part of what we were doing that night, but he had no mm -hmm. idea. No, I guess he never got the message, <laughs> or he did get the message and it didn't care. I don't think the message... I don't think if... I think he got the message... And, just and I think that he didn't give a, a good goddamn about it. Didn't care. <laughs> he didn't care. The radio audience only heard maybe five minutes of Flavor Flav. He was on stage for uh, almost an hour. I think it was 55 minutes. More Introduced his uh, his family, his friends, Mom, one at a time. Kids. And they're all coming out, and they're looking at this audience like, what is this? What What is wrong with this picture? And Flavor Flav was the only one that didn't notice that that there weren't any black people in the audience, basically. I don't think, but I think PE has performed in front of every single crowd. I mean, they're, they're, yeah, that's true. oh, absolutely. Super, and, and, they crossed over. And to the credit of some of them animals out in the audience, <laughs> they they were into Flav, and I think some of his new stuff was good too. Yeah, I can't, I just can't deny Flav. I, I grew up on that. So you know what? I, that's what fantastic. I said. I said I didn't mind. No, we're not. Yeah. When he when he got out and started rapping and doing all that, that was great. But it was that babbling in between with introducing everybody. What is that necessary? I don't know how this became. Somebody was, I think I was listening to Ron and Fez um, in the car. So, I don't know how. And, oh, I was on Pal Talk and I caught them. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about how if this was another station, you know, yeah. if it was Hot 97 or something, it, this would, that would have been the event of the year. Right. It was a throwaway for your racist audience. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it was like, yeah, it, we're chanting, nee, nee, nee. and it's like, and then Flav comes out, and he's he had and seen all of that, and and Graham, let me tell you something, Grandmaster Kaz was there, who is, is arguably in the top three guys that, that you give credit for creating hip hop. Right. Raheem from, from, from the Furious Five, yeah. who you've never heard of. It, but it, Raheem and, and Kaz is like saying, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Frankie Valley, the, <laughs> First white man to steal blues. Give it up for. <laughs> give it up for you know who who, who you know weird Johnny Johnson. Yeah. It's like Kaz. The average person go cat cat, but it's it's cool. Herc and then Grandmaster Kaz is people who created hip hop and and they were there and they were there. <laughs> we don't know. And Hank Shockley. They were there. Hank Shockley, who was another dude, um, who they said looked like Mike Epps, the comedian Mike Epps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He 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 produced the entire Nation of Millions album, the one with with, with Don't Believe the Hype, Night of Living yeah. Faces, the, the the biggest one of the biggest albums of all time, the top five to me biggest hip hop albums of all time, and he was there. He they all was there. <laughs> <laughs> I think Melly Mel was there. Run DMC was. <laughs> <laughs> so if this was like at the BET Awards if or something, and, and the they BET came Awards, out on stage, the audience would have gone this, crazy. Because PE's been broke broken up for a few years. Now. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if they broke up on bad terms or not. I don't know that story, but they they haven't been around in a long time. Chuck is like he's he's on on uh, uh, Air America. He's like real you know super political. He's always political, but now he doesn't rap. Yeah. He's like you know you know he's real mm -hmm. respectful guy. He's a nice guy. And they haven't been together in so long. But if this was 
I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you can say Hot 97. Eh, it doesn't yeah, matter. Who cares? Yeah. So, if this was Hot 97 or if it was, uh, you know, 107, this, it would have been the biggest, the biggest yeah. event of the year. It would have been covered by the newspapers. It would have oh. been huge. And the media Ebony all over the country. Ebony and Jet cover stories. Slave right. did an impromptu concert. <laughs> he brought his mama, his kids, his kids' kids, his crew, his Grandmaster Cash. It was, Chuck D was there. <laughs> and, and Chuck D was there in, in, with the, the intention of being a rapper. Right. Which he has not been in a long time. He hangs out with Janine Garofalo now and, and the, the, the radio thing. And it but, was wasted. <laughs> on Grand Wizard costume <laughs> and not know, and, and, and you, you were pretty funny though, cause every, every couple of minutes you would go, Give it up for Flavor Flav. Flavor Flav, everyone. Flavor I, was Flav, just trying to get, I was just trying to get him off get the him stage. Off. The easiest thing right. possible. Let's <laughs> move it on. And then I would reach over and I would say to Obi every couple of times, I said, what he's doing now is called scratching. <laughs> scratching. I, I looked at Patrice at one point. I go, Patrice, now I know how you feel. This <laughs> is good. scratching. Being the, the only black man in a white man's world. It felt really good. I was oh, very I'm happy. sure it did. Oh, you, were, you, two you, had, you had your hands in the air like you just didn't. I so you're leaning back in your seat, yeah. smiling, going, oh, you were savoring the moment. You were taking you pleasure. You wizard costume you're, on. Dude, you I were... had my wizard. I did. I looked like the grand wizard of the Ku Klux dude, Klan. You were taking pleasure in the fact that our show was hijacked by this. Fla uh, it, you, and then. Uh, what, did you notice the costumes as, as this whole event's going down? Like you said, Flavor Flav and Chuck D performing for the first time in who knows how long. All these legends of hip hop. And in the audience is a guy. Uh, well, I can't say it over here, but he's dressed as a as a as a male member. Right. Yeah. Uh, you got uh, No Filter Paul in blackface on the side of the stage. And yeah, as, 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 as Flavor Flav. As Flav. As Flavor Flav. 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 You got a, a flasher. You got all these crazy costumes. Here's what made me. I, I I can't tell you how happy I was that you still had to do the costume party after yeah. Flav shut it after. down. I was like, hey, fellas, take care of yourselves. Yeah, you left at the posse. I'm out. <laughs> you left at the posse. Uh, you I'm out. You had to do that dumb costume party. Yep. And, and, and then the cycles was standing there still waiting to show their costume. <laughs> Nobody cared. It was like, go flavor. At go. that point, it was over. <laughs> Oh, he just destroyed our whole and show. Nobody, destroyed the energy. You know what it was like? You know what it was like? That would have been like Simon and Garfunkel getting back together in front of the Nation of Islam. Yes. Yeah. At 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 Moss number seven. <laughs> right. In Harlem. Yeah. And, and here it is. A little brother. <laughs> and the sounds of silence. <laughs> Kick it. And this is yeah. my mom. And, and I like to introduce. Bob Streisand, come yes, on out, Bob. Come on out, <laughs> Bob. And, and the people would have been there, like, ah. when are, when are these white people getting off the stage? I I don't get this. I don't want to. I didn't pay for this. I didn't want to see this. Not knowing that it's like the biggest thing ever. They bring them back. A lot of hip hop legends on that stage, why, huh? Why I am a you? rock. <laughs> I am a not. I, well, time, time, time. I See don't, what they've uh, done to me. <laughs> and, and, and they're doing that while everybody's waiting to do uh, caramel apple dipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And where's the caramel apple dipping contest? <laughs> <laughs> how, about, how about the guys that are on stage? They're pretty much naked except for their underpants. And they got uh, glue traps all over yeah, their bodies, traps. and that's when Flav decided to come out. <laughs> so then these guys are standing on stage just awkwardly waiting to yep. to, to move on with the glue trap bit. You gotta love his ethic, though. The, the dude was performing in front of a, just a crowd full of clan members with costumes <laughs> and just frothy eyes, and Flav just in this state of just, I don't know what denial. In. I yeah. can't call it denial. Doing comedy. When people are booing you at the same time as people yeah. are laughing is denial. Like, you're like, all right, let me just focus and right. plow through this. But he was not, he was truly, he was going, yo, 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 everybody say, oh, hey, yo, give it up for my mom, man. And yeah, my mom, and uh, no, no, check check it out. Check, and then he go like that. He kept saying that. Yo, check it out. Let me tell you something. Let me. Oh, he's going to tell us more. Oh, he's <laughs> going to tell us something else. And the great else. thing is that I, for not for one second, did I not believe that it wasn't going to be a, a race riot in there. And, oh, and to please. the credit of I don't know who, maybe Kenny, 
I maybe think, the S1Ws that was with Flav. I think God intervened, <laughs> knowing that understand. the body count would have just been too high. <laughs> where all I want to ask you for people that were there, all the the ONA uh, crowd. Yeah. Where when Flay was performing, where were the I already said that. We called them out on that. Where was it? Cra bothering poor Billy Burr. Yeah. Ooh, Billy. Where was it I with Flav and his and, and a crew of Negroes? We called them out on it. Yes. Where were you? Because they're saying called them out. They were starting, you know, F free FM chants, and they they were out of control. They had so some flavor control. They had some chance when and they had some chance just... when you came out on stage. Oh, yeah, they was, but where they were, were they? Where were they when they had all these convicts on stage? But when but when the S one Ws and a couple of unknown yeah. Negroes that, yeah. that you don't feel safe with, good old safe Patrice, part yeah. of the show, yeah, real Negroes came in your face, <laughs> dressed up as Mousetrap, dressed up as uh as me, dressed up as Flavor, dressed up as Opie. Oh. Negro, Negro, Jew, Jew. Where was it at? Where was Krusty Flavor Chance? Nowhere. I bow to you. Nowhere to Patrice. be found. I bow to you today. You was in complete control. <laughs> Although I, I saw your real side too in the green room. Like, uh, damn, I thought we were hanging with a real brother. Let me tell you something. I realized there were there's so many levels of brotherhood, and you're like you're pretty Flavor. low in the brotherhood ladder there. Let bro. me tell you something. Fla and and. I'm a homeowner now. There's a different attitude. Yeah, there is. I want to live. You gotta be responsible. <laughs> now I want to live forever. You are, you know how to pick it out. Now, Keith, Keith, you're a cop. You know how to pick out when you're in the streets. You know how to pick out a uh, brother that stays in in a black neighborhood, lives there. You know, knows a little bit of something, and you mm. know the difference between this dude m will kill me. This dude's face. I, he'll shoot me, and this dude is somebody I can be Mr. Officer with. And some dudes look at you like, like I said, you can only go so far. I'm, right. I'm hard enough to to exist up up to about 139. I got one 139th Street look on my eyes. Wait, for the rest of the country, we got to <clears throat> bring him into this conversation here in Manhattan. You know, Whitey, uh, in general, we get scared going above 100, uh, 100 Street. Yeah, we go a little oh, higher about, than about that. About it. We go a buck ten. The average. We could go a buck ten. The average one, white one, one Joe. Ten, and it depends on uh, far on the uh, and for the and on, for, the, on the west side. And also for the rest of the country, we're broadcasting right now on 57th Street. So we could go from here <laughs> north to about a buck ten, maybe. Yeah. That's 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 pushing it. It depends on uh, uh, what time of day it is. But you're saying you could go all the way up to 139th Street. Flav had, <clears throat> you know, I mean, look at this. I'm, like I said, my girl was there, and dudes would try to whisper in the air every couple of minutes. Yeah. I'd go to the bathroom. i come on, go, you guys. You know? It's like, okay, I would if I had to, I would. Oh, I'm not looking for that because he was with four. Now, he had about 20. Yep. I'm not counting the two S1Ws who are the security of the first world, the two dudes that were watching the quiet Kenny types. It was two uh, black yeah. Kennys that were floating around. When Flavor moved, they Hand moved. In the crowd. were dangerous, but they weren't dangerous like, oh, mm -hmm. man, he's this jerk off. Excuse, excuse, sorry. They're, uh, wait, they're waiting for they're, somebody they that, are professional. for a problem. He was with four dudes. and now He had 30 dudes with him, but he was with four yep. that you look and you go, they're looking to rob somebody. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to explain something to you immediately. We talked about someone's purse being uh, lifted. So. Somebody got their purse stolen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's two things you know. You know somebody can fight when they got cauliflower ears. <laughs> when that ears a cauliflower, you go, this dude fights. <laughs> and he yes. likes it and he doesn't care that his face... When you see somebody with a tattoo on their neck, they they don't care. Yeah. They're not trying to get a job. They're not trying to coexist with anybody when you got a <laughs> tattoo on your neck. And he had a couple of neck tattoo dudes. And you could you could fake it if you want, but you see it was a couple that that poor security guard it was like, all right, where's your Opie and Anthony passes with your two faces on it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> with goofy mug. I, I think I saw a couple of rip laminated <laughs> backstage access passes. <laughs> we talked about it because the security at the Hard Rock Cafe didn't want to know nothing. They the, let the all these guys blue, right in. The little wide. Uh, yeah, yeah. Blue, oh, he, yeah. He, no one wanted trouble. The thing is, that there was guys in there. There were some guys in there. At my blackness, which is about 139th, hanging out with Flav, enjoying the residual Flav uh, cooch, uh -huh. re residual Flav fame, blasey, blasey, blasey. But he was with dudes that just wanted to cause some problems, that look you up and down, yep. you know, and, and you know, and, and get you. 
He that, that it's as simple as that. And and Opie was starting trouble in that room, <laughs> saying, "Oh, because Ross says so." <laughs> and Ross got so scared. Oh yeah, because you wanted I, to drag I him took, in. I took pleasure in that because Voss was getting all cocky and back in the safety of our white green room. Mm. And I'm like, "All right, why don't we go across the hall and tell Flay what you just said?" I made the, I made the mistake when I first got there of walking into the smaller dressing room that was Flay's, and uh, it was ours last year. Yeah, and I walked in. Just blindly, just turned the corner and walked in. And a couple of his boys are in there. And I just went, I went, hi, gentlemen. Didn't get an answer. Got this look like, what the hell are you doing in here? And then I just went, okay. I turned around walked right out. Walked right out. These guys wanted no part of me. They did no clue that I even belonged in there. This is becoming just, uh, an ugly scene. But he's beloved, though. That's another thing. I don't. I'm not gonna say Flav. That's who he is. He's yeah. just beloved by the hardest of the hard. I mean, Flavor is a hero to the. Somehow know, they know who to latch on to it just, at any yeah. given moment. And Flavor love, like, man. Flav's got some popularity massive, now again. Massive it show. The, it, in in the hood, it <clears> is. <throat> The, it is it is bigger than NBC Nightly News. Yeah. <laughs> Just huge. It is humongous. Yeah. And I'm going to say something about Flay real quick. That show, I, I, I couldn't watch it for one reason. I've seen all kinds of porn. Mm -hmm. All kinds of porn. And nothing bugs me more than watching that old man kiss in the mouth. No kidding. All these girls. It, it's, it no bothers kidding. me more than bestiality <laughs> porn. I have seen a pony no do kidding. things to people, and I've watched it. Man, hallelujah and, to you. And please. tongue kissing, watching him tongue kiss, mm -hmm. I can't watch it. No, impossible. I, I watched every episode of Flavor of Love season two, and you <laughs> you you nailed that, man. Yep. <laughs> like, oh God. It it just tough. Time to fast forward. Yeah. All right, we got to take a break, oh. but uh, we wanted your take on that because this thing is becoming legendary now. A Flavor Flav came and just hijacked our whole oh, Halloween he did show. A nice hour and a half. Cause he, did, <laughs> he did an hour in the middle. He, yeah. He, before the show, right? He did, a, I don't know, he did about 10 minutes, then went back to his dressing room, then came out and did a, almost an hour. <laughs> almost an hour. <laughs> thought it was his, uh, his special it, day. Thought I, it was I his, really loved it, dude. You know, he, he thought it was a celebration because his record was dropping. <laughs> that's, that's the Flavor yeah. I love, man. Dancing around, jumping on speakers. He's 97. Uh, he, he's the best. <laughs> Best performer I think I've I still ever seen. Other than uh, Run DMC, that was amazing. Yeah, the, watch his energy, man. He's amazing. And we, I think we said it yesterday the performance itself was uh, it was unbelievable. And it then was when fantastic. And when he got but together, you with don't got introduce your mother and your grandma and the kids and everyone. Oh, and the mics were broke, and they and him and Chuck performed on the same on mic, one mic next yeah. to each other. Yeah. Until we got the second oh, mic. Man. All right. Patrice O'Neill filling in for Jim Norton today. Jim Norton's uh, down there in Atlanta all weekend long. We got lots to do today. We got uh, Borat coming in today. What? <laughs> what? I don't know. You don't know? Don't See, know. that's what it is. See, it's like know. Borat showing up here. I, you said, is he coming in today? The guy from the movie, the, wanna, with the mustache. Wanna, wanna flames, um, you know? Who? Um, no. You know who Borat is? All the I, I know who Borat is. Yeah. Sasha. Yeah. Yeah. Getting massive reviews in the paper today. Is Everything's it, four star is, for this love, movie. Do they love it? They, they love this more movie. than love it. Rotten uh, Tomatoes is giving it ninety five percent positive reviews. There's only guy, like two bad reviews and people that of people that just don't get it. He's right. the Andy Kaufman of uh, our time, I believe. Yeah, he I said that. I said that yesterday. That? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's doing some Andy Kaufman. He's, he's, it's about he's time because so many people have tried since uh, Andy left this earth. And uh, are you allowed to say his other character? Who? Ollie. G. Ollie G, yeah. Yeah, because he might be super bore right now. It's in like, character, oh, yeah. Ollie G dead. In, oh, no, no, yeah. he's he's coming in character. He's, he's fully character. So if you, oh, yeah. Yeah, try to break him today. Good luck. Uh, well, he, I, I don't he's doing all his interviews in, in, in character. Good luck. God bless him. <laughs> God, see, God bless him. That's why I'm, I'm nobody. If I did yeah. a movie where I played a character and they go, can you play the character... What? So no. <laughs> no. I, I did I it. sold my soul. Do I have to sell everything? <laughs> Can I love myself to some degree, you pieces of garbage? <laughs> Here's someone that doesn't get it. Stephanie in Pennsylvania, what's up? Hey, guys. I just have to call you out because yesterday you said that he was a has-been and his show's done and it's over with. And just because Patrice is there today, you're trying to backpedal and say what a hit. Patrice said in, in the community, it's huge. 
I don't watch it. I don't know anybody that does watch it. I watch the Flav. What's that, Flav? Yeah, I don't watch the show. White, white people might watch it as a guilty pleasure, I'm sure. Yeah. But black people, it's it is yeah. gospel. He man. said in in the community, it's huge. There, it's, Stephanie. It's, it's, we acknowledge that his performance was really good. Yesterday. And yesterday I said, yeah, when he was rapping, it was cool. But when he talked, it was like, get him off. This sucks. We had a problem with him introducing every single person he knows. Did you listen to a, what we said, Stephanie? We had a got, problem. Now she's got me pissed. We had a problem that he hijacked our show. What did you hear that we didn't say yesterday? They, yesterday you said that his show is done, that it's over, and it is VH1's number one show ever. Stephanie, we did not say that because we we would look like jerks. Everyone knows that Flavor of Love was massive. Now, if it's you, a, it's if a, you was, it was like the biggest show in cable history. If you or something. was to say if she's saying you said that it is over now, I can see that. I can. I can oh, we see. said that. Yeah, we said that uh, it's not like you know he's going to get another show on VH1. So he's at the he's at the pinnacle of his career no, again. He will get another show, and, and he's hoping out. because of this. We'll get another show. I'm, sh I'm absolutely, absolutely sure. Yeah, well, she's right about that. Yeah. Well, New yeah. York got one coming out. You're yeah, select that. selectively I listening, I Stephanie. You guys try to get a little black when Patrice comes around because you want to be his friend so bad. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. She, Good she calls y'all liberals. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, what the hell is she doing? Trying to get along Go with black man. screw off, Stephanie. <laughs> you piece of crap bitch. Shut up. <laughs> I hate these oh, people I that... Oh, I hate that whore. I hate you, you whore. Go satisfy your man. I hate Make him a cup of coffee. I hate people that uh, do their selective listening with this program. We oh. said the performance was good. We were bummed that he was on stage for 55 minutes. We were bummed that it, he completely hijacked the show and introduced everybody he knew. We were bummed ourselves that we weren't brave enough to try to figure out how to move him along, okay? We were, we were trying to figure out who Jesus. told him that it was his uh, his private party. We said all that. We said we had no clue who we were, what we were doing there. I said flavor of love. I oh, love. I, yes. I said. Uh. I said I loved the flavor of love on VH1, but we also said that this might be the you know the pinnacle of his second career here, and it might be going downhill now because he's trying to use the success of the show to get the rap album going. And I don't and know. I, bought, I, bought, and I don't know if it's gonna work. I went to Virgin. Me and my woman walked to Virgin after the Hard Rock, mm -hmm. and, and not is it Virgin? Yeah. And bought uh, flavors. Uh, oh, see, so it see, worked. I bought it. There you go. Yeah, it got a sale. Yeah. <laughs> it got one sale. <laughs> uh, Jay, what's up? So everybody yeah, else there was like. Patrice up on something. <laughs> what? Hey, I, want, I just want to put Patrice up on something. What's up, Daddy? <clears throat> what's up? Yo, man, the, the, the back pulling of these two cats is doing right now. Holy! Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, God! Oh, they trying to say what did y'all say yesterday? Backpedaling, backpedaling. So you're trying to say they changing up because I'm here, but I want to not hear the show. Why, first of all, why would we change up with Patrice? Yeah, we're not scared I, of Patrice right, anymore. If, 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 if I can understand, I am to them am safe Negro. That's right. For that, the first ten appearances on our show, we were petrified. But oh, then we're look at the pictures down. of us on the website. You will see our bored ass faces sitting there. Fifteen minutes in, I'm leaning on my hand, looking at Flav. I could care less who. Was up on that stage, and I'm looking like, when is this going to end? There's no way to make this stop. And then I'm getting people saying, I'm backpedaling. What am I saying today that I didn't say yesterday, or vice versa? <laughs> Give me an example, you dummies, you selective listening jackasses. Why'd you, why'd, you cut off the, why'd you cut off the brother when he was saying uh, I'm just trying out my new bed. It's I'm, his I'm new bed. Just but don't shock the him. gun too quick. <laughs> yeah, don't, sh don't shock him, because you know I wish that dude had a, got a chance, because right, I want to hear it. I right. wanted to hear what that idiot was going to say. All right, he could call back. back. He could call back. Let that guy call back. Please call back, because I want to hear what he It was nothing about what he was saying. I can't back try out my new bed. You pit. stole my bicycle. <laughs> I was excited to, to try out my new bed. Who stole your bicycle? Now you're trying to be a backpedal. I said I can't back Pedal, he stole my bicycle. Now you're trying to be extra racist, it's just man. Racist. What? Yes, I am being extra racist. <laughs> He's trying to keep it real. Let me tell you some n word. I gotta keep it real. Why don't y'all be honest? I'm not gonna let this idiot call me uh, up and say I'm backpedaling. I'm saying exactly what I said yesterday. I enjoy, and I even said it. Oh, you backpedaled. You said he sucked. I didn't say he sucked. I said when they got up there and he was actually Did you say doing. Slave suck. No, oh, okay. I said when he was rapping, it was cool. I'm not into it, right. but it was ex it was exactly what he was supposed to do there. Right. Get up and rap, not introduce 50 people I could give two f's about. Do you realize what show you guys? Did, do you realize yeah. the show that happened 
that who on that stage. Cared? You gotta understand the magnitude of the show. I didn't care. Right, you listen. should care. Listen. I shouldn't. Now you don't care. <laughs> Darren, what's up? Care. I don't like extra racist, hey. man. Hey. That's a new superhero. I heard the exact words yesterday. Well, what? I'll never be in season three of Flavor of Love. <laughs> Why'd you shock him? <laughs> Why'd you die? Oh, he's crazy on the taser now. <laughs> now he's now he's just gonna Roger, taser what's everybody. Up? <laughs> Roger, go ahead. Hey, I hate to agree with that stupid whore that called earlier, but you guys. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's just tasering, tasering everybody. Holy Jesus. Oh <laughs> Get out of here. Patrice O'Neill in studio today. <laughs> That's the, uh, I don't expect you guys to listen every day, you bastards. It's the only virus. Oh, boy, I wanted to play our Paul R. Nelson ID, and it didn't work. No. Now it's working on its own. Now I need to, like, uh, reboot this thing. Let's try this again here. This is Paul R. Nelson, and you're listening to the Opie and Anthony Show. That's right. Paul R. Nelson. Uh, Patrice, you, you into these negative campaign ads? <clears throat> yeah. Love them. Watch them all the time. Here's a negative campaign ad. Dimitri Martin has got a big... Ad campaign, but go ahead. Huh? What? Make my stomach hurt. Who? Damn it. Never mind. Who? <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you doing? Just I'm reading? Just, <laughs> just, it just caught me. I see Dimitri Martin's dumb face, and he's like getting ready to be a millionaire. Who's Dimitri Martin? He's the. He's a nice guy. I like is him. He? Yeah. I have no idea who that is. Uh, exactly. Is, yeah. he a, is he a comic or yeah, something? He's a oh, oh okay. you got it. <laughs> all right, I get it. Oh, now you're all, uh, I see. Just, you know, comic jealousy. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> now, you know how we are, we jealous. All you now, comics. Now I'm over it, now let's get back to business. One guy makes it, and it's, it's like, ah, that's <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to prepare now. Everybody, they call me a son of a bitch now. But if it I was, got nothing. If it was you, you'd be like, why is everybody hating? <laughs> but when it's anybody else, it's like, ah, this guy ah, doesn't deserve that. Didn't even put in his time. He didn't. I just had to, a burst of jealousy overwhelm me, and I apologize. It really did. It and, washed over oh, you. And I don't even hate Demetri. I, I just, just saw his dumb face. And, you you know. took us out of our game and yeah. everything. Like, Sorry about that. Damn, is that a black guy we're supposed to know? I, that's all I was thinking. <laughs> now, you, now you got me careful. Yo. I was like, <laughs> yeah, we don't know. Uh, I apologize for that, man. Go ahead. All right. I'm well. sorry. <laughs> no, we love this guy, Paul R. Nelson, uh, Patrice. We started playing negative campaign ads, and uh, the best ones were from Paul R. Nelson about this guy, Ron Kind. Ron Kind, and what he does, he puts a W, a big W, in front of Ron, and then a, a G at the back, so it's Ron Ki wrong Kind. <laughs> his name is Ron Kind, but it is is it? It's competition there. Wait, wait, what's the position and what's the state and what's going on? Uh, this guy, Paul R. Nelson's the Republican. He's a, a, a Marine, an ex-Marine. Running for? Running for uh, uh, we don't Congress. Know. Don't even know. <laughs> He's running don't for, even care. Running I think it is for Congress. Congress. You're right. Running <laughs> for Congress in Wisconsin. And he's run, running against a four-term uh, four incumbent, uh, Ron Kind. And uh, Paul R. Nelson's team has put together this little ad where uh, they put and say, he's the wrong kind. Ugh. Yeah. And it's just all negative stuff. And it's so far beyond any kind of negativity. I mean, they're they're accusing this guy of all kinds of shenanigans. <laughs> well, we got the, the classic one. We should play it again. Yeah. Let, let, let's just play to bring this. Patrice up to speed. This is the one where we, we were playing a lot of negative political ads, and they were all good. And then we heard this one, and it was all about Paul R. Nelson from that day forward. I'm Paul R. Nelson. Listen to this. With our servicemen and women facing death every day, what kind of congressman would try to gut military spending? The wrong kind. Ron kind. That's right. Congressman Ron kind is repeatedly voted to deprive our troops of the funding they need to fight for us. But Ron kind has no trouble spending your money. He would just rather spend it on sex. That's right. Instead of spending money on cancer research, Ron kind voted to spend your money to study the sex lives of Vietnamese prostitutes. Instead of spending money to study heart disease, Ron kind spent your 
money to study the masturbation habits of old men. Ron Kine spent your tax dollars to study something called the bisexual, transgendered, and two-spirited Aleutian Eskimos, whoever they are. Ron Kine even spent your tax dollars to pay teenage girls to watch pornographic movies with probes connected to their genitalia. Ron Kind pays for sex, but not for soldiers. If Ron Kind had better priorities, you wouldn't be having to hear this. Ron Kind is out of touch, and soon he'll be out of Congress. I'm Paul R. Nelson, and I approve of this message. <laughs> I'm wow. Paul R. Nelson, I'm Paul R. and Nelson. I approve of this message. Paul R. He sounds like he has something tied up to somebody's genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he has a small child in a closet somewhere locked up. Is he just the best? We hated the, him at first, but now we love him. We don't care what he, what just, he stands for. <laughs> I just <laughs> love the fact that he is willing to go out on a limb and put out a, a negative ad campaign like that. Just the worst. Yeah, well, we got the latest Paul R. Nelson commercial. Oh, wow. good. And this one's supposedly pretty good. A new one. No one has heard this yet. All right. We uh, Well, we have connections now in the Paul R. Nelson camp. Yes, we do. Because even Geraldo played that last ad on his show last night. He did? Yeah, it's all about Paul R. Nelson. Uh, How did we pick up on him so early? I don't know, but everyone's jumping on now. Wow. We just lucked out. Yeah. I, I would love to say we're that damn good. We just lucked out. I feel like we, we, we're, we're like Kreskin. But we have the brand new ad that no one has yet. All right. And we're not even allowed to, to tell people how we got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind, as long as we have it. Here it is, the latest Paul R. Nelson campaign ad. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, we're gathered here to witness the marriage of this man, Bruce, to this uh, this other man, Bubba. May if anyone objects to the marriage of Bruce and, and Bubba, uh, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Well, preacher, I object. Oh, thank God. State your objection, sir. Well, preacher, it's <laughs> it's two dudes. Well, Ron Kind says anything goes. He says I can marry anything to anything. Well, preacher, Ron Kind is the wrong kind of guy to get advice from. Hey, today it's two dudes, tomorrow it's two dudes, a lesbian, a pedophile, and a partridge in a pear tree. I think we better stop playing games with holy matrimony and leave things just the way God showed us in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Romeo and Juliet, not Romeo and Julio. I'm Paul R. Nelson, candidate for Congress. I approve of this message. And my committee paid for it. If you support traditional American values, help me keep marriage sacred. Vote yes on the marriage amendment and vote Paul R. Nelson for Congress. Wow. <laughs> Paul R. Nelson. Did you say Paul R. Nelson? Oh. Does, does Ron Kahn, does he have a I guy? said, did you say Paul R. Nelson? Yes. I'm Paul R. Nelson. has left the building. How great is that? The Mega Mix that one of the fans uh, sent in. <sighs> oh, God, that song was stuck in my head all morning. Yeah. I woke up with it in, in my head. I'm driving to work singing the Paul R. Nelson <laughs> Funk Soul Brother uh, song. What do you think of the new ad? I love it. <laughs> so wow. <do> <laughs> they just have gone completely... <laughs> One way. And They've gone completely with the uh, mudslinging tactic. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, I hope it works for him. I I don't I don't know. Like I know I know what his his stance is. It's really hardcore right wing Republican, which I'm really not into. You know I'm 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 more. I'm sorry. What? I am not into hardcore right wing Republican politics. I am also not into left leaning, bedwetting liberal. Uh, politics. I like taking a little from column A, a little from uh, column B. Right, you make up your own can mind. You, can you tell me what, yes, sir. what's the little from column B? Because oh. column A, we've seen you have Nazi helmets and the <laughs> you, see the, uh, and, uh, you well, hate all races and creeds and colors. Now, what's the other side that you take a little you bit You do of? see a lot of the right uh, on me come out. but uh, A lot of that comes left. out on the radio show, so it's actually a good question. The left, I, keep, the left? Uh, I keep camouflaged a lot. I'm 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 a pretty uh, charitable guy when you it comes the, to you things. You give the white charities. That does make charity. Charity does not mean white that. charities. 
There are enough black people giving to black charities that I feel I don't okay, have to so cough up my hard-earned money. You know wow. what? You know what? Hold I get, on, wait a minute. You know somebody, what? I get to black charities. On, it's on called my tax hold dollars. On. Somebody on the left side, catch him because he's falling. Right on the left. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, he's leaning left. He don't give me no nigga charity. It's called my tax dollars. Those are my charity contributions to the black what community. What is the left side? The left leaning that I that I I, I have a little bit. Oh my God! Oh, oh, uh, I'm not. Let's a, just I'm kind of with you, Patrice. I, I'm not a, I don't really hear a lot of uh, the left watching. coming out of Anthony. I'm not one of these staunch supporters of of George Bush. I think he's a boob. I think uh, uh, that's not even that. The, that's not even his wife. Don't even like him no more. <laughs> <laughs> How about gay marriage? Come on, gay marriage. I'm fine with that. Come on, I Anthony, could come care on. less. There you go. Gay marriage. Gay marriage. He wants Bruce and Bubba come to on, get Tony married. Duke. Abortion. I say let women have them whether they want them or not. In some cases, <laughs> I say let the boyfriend That's... make up their decision. Hey, oh, can I interrupt man, for you, you oh. almost ambidextrous? <laughs> can I interrupt? Dr. Martin <laughs> to surgery. <laughs> Doc Martin, wham! Can I... One right in the old you bread basket. Bit phony. Can I can I jump in here for a second? Al from New York. Al. <laughs> Hey, I just got to know, is that a bit you guys made or is that a real commercial? See, that's what's getting so confusing now. People really think we're just making up Paul R. Nelson commercials. That is a real Paul R. Nelson no. uh, commercial. The commercials gonna, you've heard that's are... That's going to be hitting the airwaves very soon. Yep. Genuine uh, Paul R. Nelson commercials. The song is a remix that somebody did. That yeah, didn't yeah. come from the Paul R. Nelson no. camp. No. Although, I think uh, if he wins, uh, they should play that behind him yeah. as he's uh, accepting his yeah. uh, victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at the podium. Wow. All right. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's say hi to Steve in Jersey. Steve. That was the greatest ad ever. Please play it again. Which one? <laughs> the uh, Bruce and Bubba one? Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Please play it that again. That is a good again. one. All right, we'll play, all right, we'll play that again. Let's go to Bernie in Boston. Bernie. Hey, Bernie. What's up, guys? What's up? Hey, when are you going to have Paul and Nelson on the, on the show with you guys? You ready for this? Seven o'clock today. Seven o'clock. Seven we will o'clock be today. We talked to talking Paul R. to Nelson. Paul R. Nelson. Yeah. Awesome. By the okay, way, the uh, the the mega mix was done by producer well, like Dan. Amos. He would like to ah. mention producer Dan. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. We're Bye, like uh, we're like Imus now, getting politicians on the yeah, show. Yeah. Look, look at us. us. Look at us. Paul R. Nelson. We got a congressional candidate from Wisconsin. People don't understand how messed up this is because I don't think we agree with a lot of the stuff he's saying. No. <laughs> and we know that Ron Kine isn't obsessed with the masturbation <laughs> habits of old men. And yeah, we know it we was. We see through all this crap. Do you have his platform? Did they get. Did you, he's got, did you they, can't tell from that commercial. But I'm saying all of his, his old platform. It is so right down the right wing line. Yeah. I mean, anti abortion, <laughs> anti stem cell research, anti gay, uh, anti gay marriage. A uh, staunch supporter of Bush and, and uh, the war in Iraq. Anti-sex in general. <laughs> really? <laughs> he's not. He's not just for sex. procreation. He's not into sex. Seems at like all. a very religious guy, very family-oriented guy. He's got the wife, the kids, the whole thing, and uh, he's just using Ron Kind's um, platform of uh, what what he wants. What Ron Kind was doing was uh, trying to get a bill passed that would fund a sex study. That included all these things, like um, Vietnamese prostitutes because of uh, the spread of AIDS. Like they wanted to see how that worked. Uh, the old men taking care of themselves at the old age home is just like the sexuality of older people and what they might need uh, to make their lives a little better as they get older in that way. Just this overall sex study. But he made it sound like in that commercial, like he's pulling out tax dollars going, show me some Vietnamese prostitutes. <laughs> here, I got some tax dollars here. All right, hook up that electrode over there to that teen girl and let her rip. You know, it, 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 it's kind of taken way, out of context. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is hot, by the, I mean, by the way, that is that is sexy. And he justified it by saying, you know, if he wasn't doing these things, you wouldn't have to hear it on our commercial. That's right. But we're going to tell you anyway because oh, he, Yeah, he knows it makes a good commercial. On the official Paul R. Nelson website, we get a plug. Uh, T-shirts. The Paul R. Nelson T-shirts are yeah. officially sold out. And then he writes, thanks, Opie and Anthony. <laughs> yeah, I guess a lot of the pests uh, and fans of this show... Absolutely wanted the Paul R. Nelson T-shirt, oh, so they they got went to the website and they're wearing them now. <laughs> Just the dregs of humanity. Why <laughs> walking around with the Paul R. Nelson? Why can't you support? Uh... 
All right, look, I because I'm Jesse Paul Jackson. R. Nelson. <laughs> I'm Paul R. Nelson. Let's play the spot again. I, I guess nobody serious is that is that funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once again, here is the latest Paul R. Nelson commercial. It's entitled Bruce and Bubba. We can't write funnier stuff than this. No. Great. My dearly beloved, we're gathered here to witness the marriage of this man, Bruce, to this... Uh, this other man, Bubba. May if anyone objects to the marriage of Bruce and, and Bubba, uh, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Well, preacher, I object. Oh, thank God. State your objection, sir. Well, preacher, it's it's two dudes. Well, Ron Kind says anything goes. He says I can marry anything to anything. <laughs> well, preacher, Ron Kind is the wrong kind of guy to get advice from. Hey, today it's two dudes, tomorrow it's two dudes, a lesbian, a pedophile, and a partridge in a pear tree. I think we better stop playing games with holy matrimony and leave things just the way God showed us in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. That, that's terrible. I'm Julia, sorry. Not Romeo and Julio. I'm Paul R. Nelson, candidate for Congress. I approve of this message. Message and my committee paid for it. If you support traditional American values, help me keep marriage sacred. Vote yes on the marriage amendment and vote Paul R. Nelson for Congress. <laughs> vote Paul R. Nelson, people. Yeah, he'll be on the show in a few minutes here. <laughs> Paul hey, R. Nelson. This segs into something that's been pretty cool. We've been asking the listeners to come up with anti uh, uh, political ads for members of the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah. And there's a couple that came in that are really funny about Anthony. Yeah, I don't understand it. And uh, and here, listen to this really fast. This is from Joe. It is a time time for us. Go Billy Sandin. He started to die. Only come come long. He started to die as a spin. This is Anthony Cumia, and I approve of this message. <laughs> That's I, don't think, I don't think I approved of that. <laughs> Isn't it simple, short, and sweet? <laughs> Maybe before we get fired, we'll explain. That. Uh, trans- to help out the listeners, we all said, I- I'm Opie, and I approve of this message. And we went around the room and so they could tag their spots. <laughs> I, uh, Actually genius. I want that translated. I'm not sure I approve of that message. This is Anthony Cumia, and I approve of this message. <laughs> I could have just been talking about the trains. And then this came in from Beth H., <laughs> Candidate Anthony Cumia wants you to think he's a regular guy. But is he? Do you shop on Rodeo Drive? Anthony Cumia does. Do you live in a mansion in Long Island? Wow. Anthony Cumia does. Wow. Do you drive a Shelby Mustang? Well, guess what? Anthony Cumia does. Do you have mind-blowing sex with a girl half your age? (laughs) That's right. Anthony Cumia does. Candidate Anthony Cumia. What a lucky f***. Anthony Cumia, and I approve of this message. (laughs) The tag. Wow. (laughs) Wait, is that an anti-you? But she she started off saying he wants you to think he's a regular guy. It sounded so anti until uh, the end. Yeah, but then he realized, you know what? This isn't a bad thing. How come they're all about me? <laughs> that should have been an OB. This is this is OB. Uh, they, they, Greg Hughes and I approve of that message. I'm kind of happy they left me out of it, man. They, uh, they but we all we it. all threw our tags out there. Jimmy did everybody, but they're all about me. They left me out of it. Here's uh, the last one we'll play for now. Uh, Anti Anthony. This is from John in Hartford. This is one of my favorites that came in. Well, that ain't it. No. Anthony Cumia. Hold on, hold on. But that was another one against me. Jesus. <laughs> Who they hate me. Wow, what happened? The polls that... No, here it is, here it is. I'm not having a good time with these CD players lately. Before you head to the polls this November, Steve C. would like you to know a few things about his opponent, Anthony Cumia. Did you know that Anthony Cumia doesn't like black people? In fact, he lives in one of the whitest neighborhoods in greater New York City. And though he may be surrounded by Jews, it's a known fact that Anthony Cumia is a Nazi. And during a recent skit on the Opie and Anthony program, Anthony played the part of Senator Mark Foley. Kid toucher, you decide. Steve C. speaks with perfect enunciation (laughs) and inflection. Steve C. has never had a girlfriend placed in a loony bin. Steve C. cares about the environment. 
He drives a hybrid, not some flashy Mustang. Steve C. cares about the environment because he lives in the environment. Grr. Paid for by the World Wildlife Fund. Steve Irwin, treasurer. <laughs> Steve C. That was a pro Steve C. Yeah. Anti. Anti. Martini Steve? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Anti me. <laughs> Anti climatic. The other ones were a lot better. Actually, yeah. what was good about it was the music in the back. You got to hear yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Well the done. ominous music when they talk about me. And, and then, then it, it gets the all trumpet. nice. Yeah. Right. But patriotic. But that's what they do in all these. Uh, all right, spots. We got to step aside. This show is going to move real fast. We got Paul R. Nelson next. We also have Borat coming in in about a uh, half hour, I guess. Nice. All right. Patrice O'Neill in for Jim Norton. Jim in uh, Atlanta all weekend long. There you go. There's all the info you need. It's the ONA virus spreading across America. It's good to know. Phil Mushnick. Phil Mushnick. Phil Mushnick. Phil. Phil Mushnick. Phil Mushnick. Ned. Ned Ryerson. He's a uh, sports writer, I guess. In the New York Post. Sports complainer. He's not even a writer. He just bitches about everything. You know what? We like to bring the whole country into our discussions. I have no doubt every paper in America has a Phil Mushnick. This guy's uh, in the sports section. He writes a column, and he does nothing but bitch and complain about people that are working for a living. Yeah, here's the deal. He writes uh, a sports column. So you would assume right off the bat he's got to be a fan of sports. But you no. read this column day in and day out. And uh, you realize that maybe he's not into sports anymore and he should go uh, write about something else. Yeah. So today he takes a shot at us. Yeah, has a little problem with us. Uh, Wednesday, he writes, during the Knicks opener, uh, Madison Square Garden Network twice ambushed its audience with that Opie and Anthony radio show ad in which they tell a woman, a woman that it's not her dress that makes her look heavy, but her, and then he puts, expletive. Really? Her expletive? I, I'm thinking in my head it's got to be worse than ass. I would have to go with the F word. Right. C. Or maybe the C word. Something <laughs> awful, yeah. Other than demonstrating that Opie and Anthony are vulgar, what's the rest of this message? That they're cruel? Brilliant. The message is very simple. It's tagged and tells you what the message is. The message, jackass, is the fact that we can't do anything but radio. We're so stupid uh, and, and, and single-minded and rude that we couldn't possibly hold down another job except for radio. And we've even had trouble doing that over the course of the years. That's the message, Phil. Sorry we had to explain it to you. Basically, that commercial shows that in the real world, we just stink. Yeah, we're horrible. The joke, Phil, is on us that we can't work we can't operate as normal human beings in real life so we have to sit behind these microphones because it's the only place we can really function see phil god when you got to explain it to retards and while these two champs are so hip and happening should we forget they eagerly threw in with vince mcmahon to host his nbc xfl pregame show which was not only pure and predictable garbage but served as a, the warm-up act for history making garbage well, Phil, uh, yeah. But you know something? Well, he's always had a problem with Vince McMahon. Yeah, he hates he, Vince. He goes after Vince McMahon all the time. Hates him. Not as much lately, but he, he thinks, uh, you know, that the, all those wrestling shows don't have a place in our society, don't have a place on TV. And he was really jumping on them when they were at their peak. Right, right. You know, where a lot of people were watching and entertained by it. We're embarrassed that we did the XFL because it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> That's the only reason we're embarrassed. Not, and let me tell you something. I got no embarrassment for it. Somebody offered it. We we took a shot at something. It's not like a Phil Mushnick ever takes any chances. He's the kind of guy that will sit there and die at his desk at the New York Post uh, after uh, 50 years of just bitching about just a miserable guy other that has, people that are taking chances and working and doing things. Just a miserable guy that has no business writing about sports at no. this point. He doesn't like it. He hates it. He hates what what sports has become. So move on. Go Be find miserable. another hobby. P Perish the thought. He take any chances or do anything. Yeah, go do something new if you're not enjoying what's uh, the sports anymore. We took a shot at it. It was uh, years ago. It bombed. Actually, Who I'm cares? not even really that embarrassed. It was NBC. Yeah. It was pretty exciting. Let me say, it was, it was, it was a, cool. Who am I kidding? It was a career Israel highlight for us. Phil Mushnick. Phil. 
Shark Hunter. <laughs> you Phil can't, you can't do much with Mushnick as a lesson. Yeah, <laughs> no, just the name alone. When when he shakes your hand and goes, I'm Phil Mushnick. Don't you just you want to go ugh oh, and wipe? I'm sorry. You want to purell your hand? I, I guarantee you, when people work with him, like people that go, Hey, Mushy, or yeah, PM, oh, they he, got hates, it, yeah. he hates anything that Mush. Yo, Mush, yo, what do you mush. got today, Mush? Uh, Don't call me Mush. It's Mush Nick. <laughs> Why can't they just call me Nick, not the Mush part? <laughs> You're Mush Nick. So what does a dude like that like? See, that's what I always like. What is? We're reading his column, and he's just bashing everybody. He doesn't like anything. But what's, what's he enjoy? He, he has to be a. a, a he enjoys a to the Yang, you know. What he, I mean? Well, I mean, obviously, he got into writing about sports because he enjoys sports, but he enjoys old school sports. He, yeah. en he enjoys, you know, underhand free throws. He under he he enjoys the two hand set shot as far as basketball Layup. goes. He enjoys football with leather helmets. When the Celtics were all white. <laughs> right, right. He, Those little shorts. <laughs> he enjoys baseball when they were wearing uh, baggy uniforms. And ran in fast motion around the bases in black and white. See, there's there's so many, uh, like Phil Mushnick out there in society, they can't grow with society. They, You know, there's there's music critics that think it, it ended with the Stones. But it ain't full Mish Mushnick's fault, though. It's, well, well then it's, move on though. It's minute, the so post. He, it's the New York Post they, fault that right, they don't they don't get a more yeah. uh, a hipper columnist to write about today's sports. That's that's, that's what I was gonna say. It's not. How can you blame Phil Mushnick for being Phil Mushnick? Uh, look, he's uh, look, being Phil Mushnick. Look, uh, no problem. You know, I, I'm sure bashing it is part of the you know the job. Sure, but all I read is him bashing. I don't I don't see an uh, I don't see a, an inkling of this guy actually enjoying watching mm -hmm. sports. So I say the ONA Pest should email this guy and yeah. ask him if he's retarded because he didn't understand the Opie and Anthony TV commercial. Uh, and, and we're not pissed off that he's trashing us. Trust me. It's, it, we got print in the New York Post today. He's playing right into our hands. And it's printed in the Post. You could get a hold of him. It's a phil.mushnick at newyorknypost.com. Phil.mushnick. M-U-S-H-N-I-C-K. Phil with one L. At nypost.com. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, because you're, you're free to comment on any columnist's uh, column. So go ahead. Yeah, have fun with Phil uh, Have Bill fun Bush with Phil today, guys. A quick little mission. Have fun um, with him. Have I fun. Don't, I don't want to lose uh, all right, yeah, our yeah, guest yeah. here that we have on the phone. I, I am so honored. Yeah. Hey, Anthony, really fast because uh, it might set up uh, the next break. Yes. John Alberts from Long Island. I have no idea what this means, so please give me more info. It says, uh, all it says on the answer feedback, that Super Bowl champ died yesterday in a car accident. Some bitch ran a red light, just thought you'd like to know. Punching out John. What? Is How that, about some more info? Did we lose one of our guys last night? That Super Bowl champ? Is that the guy that came in and got oh, stung on the ball bag? Super Bowl. The, 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 the mouse traps on the, on the Are spot. you kidding me? Some one of them died? I, I'm starting to think that we might have lost the, uh, the guy that won our Super Bowl, um, uh, competition. Wow. Was that the story? Where was he from? It's, uh, maybe that's the maybe story that's on the TV. the Northport, uh, story? I don't know, but, uh, hey. that's all John is writing so far. And it just starts in the middle of a sentence. That Super Bowl champ died yesterday in a car accident. Well, get more info on that, people. We need more info on that. But without further ado, yes. let's say hi to Paul R. Nelson. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me on your show, gentlemen. Mr. Nelson, it's an honor to speak to you. Um, we've been uh, keeping track of your campaign uh, over the course of the past few weeks. And, uh, yeah, it's an honor to talk to you. Um, uh, you, you. You've been a lot of controversy. I've seen you on TV a lot about your uh, ads against wrong kind. That's correct. And, and uh, some of that uh, credit has to go to your show. When you guys picked up our ads and crashed mm -hmm. our website, our phone started to ring off the hook. I know for a fact that reporters working for the Washington Post and Tucker Carlson and others at MSNB listened to the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, now, what do you what do you do um, for a living? You're you're a real estate agent. I'm a real estate agent and a hockey dad. A hockey dad. Now that's something we we're a little confused about. We know what soccer moms are, but what what's a hockey dad? <laughs> uh, hockey dad. He is likes to knock his kids' teeth out. Always kid to hockey every night. Oh, you take your kid to hockey. <laughs> that's nice. And you come off like a very wholesome guy, very uh, American uh, uh, kind of American dream uh, family. You know what that is. 
What is that? You know what an American dream is to a Negro. You know how we. Well, Pat Patrice O'Neill is here. He's that's, uh, white, that's white people's words for you know. Uh, that the he, R word with two quotes. Sometimes Patrice gets a little out of hand, Mr. Nelson. Sorry, I, I don't. Uh, just don't pay any attention. To I just want to know how to. do you feel about um, 300 pound Negroes sleeping with small white women? He doesn't. <laughs> You know something? He's laughing. <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> Would you, could we maybe get a few minutes of a Paul R. Nelson uh, interview? Well, well, if you don't think that that's a valid question, what if I wanted to vote for Paul R. Nelson? I'm a big black man. I want to know if he if he minds if I come to Wisconsin yeah. and and deflower a couple of um delicious blue eyed uh, devils. Let's, I, keep it, let's keep it simple. Paul R. Nelson, are you a fan of the Negro? I'm I'm a fan of all people. Actually. All people. That that's what Paul's been about. How is... about those Mexicans that are sleeping and um and 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 peeing in the spinach? Oh, okay, uh, Paul. <laughs> what about uh, immigration? What's your uh, your stand on uh, immigration and the situation we have with a lot of illegal uh, aliens coming over the border? Sure. Hey, we're, we've been very clear on our positions in our ads that, that we don't. We're not a very nuanced campaign. We try not to leave a lot of room for ambiguity. Mm -hmm. I would be against illegal immigration. Of course, uh, wrong kind would be one that uh, would want to sponsor amnesty for illegal immigrants. So that's all we're pointing out. And, and people keep talking about our attack ads. You will note <clears throat> in our ads that we do not go after Mr. Kind for personal financial malfeasance or marital infidelity we are simply pointing out his voting record these really are not attack ads uh, they're really what mm -hmm. the campaign is supposed to be about now telling I, the voters the difference between what the two candidates would vote i understand that uh, mr nelson uh, and believe me i am a fan but let me play the devil's advocate here do you do you think that your ads kind of leave it a little vague as to where that money was going, really. It kind of comes off like uh, a wrong kind is taking the taxpayer's dollars and going to Vietnam and paying for hookers. It kind of, it sounds a little worse than it really is, because I think in actuality it was a bill um, based on uh, a sex study um, all wrapped up into one. Uh, and, and it kind of sounds like these are... A separate incidence in your in your ads, right? And you know, uh, uh, but but the language in this ad, and that's why we put the NIH grant numbers, the Toomey Amendment number. I mean, we live in the information age. People can go to our website at paulandelson.com, <clears throat> and they can look this stuff up. Um, this is part of the congressional record. The words that we used in the sex studies ad are part of the congressional record. It's uh, it's actually. Really, really accurate, and and uh, I would so, certainly challenge. So you think Ron Kine is obsessed with the masturbation habits of old men? No, I don't think he's obsessed, but I do think that he knew what he was voting for when he voted to fund that study. Yeah, Paul, you might have asked you a quick question. Just, uh, Patrice O'Neill. Just two, yeah, Patrice O'Neill here. Just black man. Just two, <laughs> just uh, two man to man. You don't think just man to man. You don't think that hooking up electrodes to, to <laughs> a, a woman's vagina and making her watch porno and see how she reacts to it is a little bit sexy, just as a man? <laughs> I know you're running for Congress, but just as a dude chilling out with a beer, you don't find that to be hot? <laughs> the, the, the point that we're making, whether or not we think that may be an interesting point. Yeah. That some, wait, wait, wait. That someone took the time to take an electrode. All right, be careful, Patrice, because they're dumping out. Uh, to take an electro, I'm not. Did, did they dump out on me already? Possibly. Oh, I, I, I just want to help you out. What We're you, teenage uh, girls, porn, okay. and something attached, and electrodes, okay. and yeah. electrodes. Let's just let's just keep it at that. that Everyone somebody can figure took it out. the time to do that as a study. Yeah. That just, that doesn't get us just a little bit of a like whew. Like you didn't have to wipe your brow a little bit. <laughs> A little sweat didn't drip down your face. He's, just he's just a little. <laughs> it's uh. <laughs> All right, listen, uh, Opie and Anthony. I wanted yes. to issue a public challenge okay. on your radio show. Okay. Mm -hmm. To have Mr. Wrong Kind actually come out from underneath his desk where he's curled up in the fetal position, sucking his thumb and asking for his sippy cup of milk and a blanket. I want him to come out from underneath the desk, mm -hmm. and I want him to come on the Opie and Anthony show Monday morning, the day before the election. Right. And let's have the pests call in, and we'll have a debate on air. God, you know, would that be great? Everything. Wouldn't that be great? Why won't he face you? Wrong kind is scared to death death of the things that we've been running, the ads that we've been running in this campaign, because mm -hmm. as I mentioned, 
we have been running ads that accurately depict his votes. And uh, Mr. Kind, uh, his values and right. waste of taxpayer dollars are well outside of uh, of uh, the realm of the voters here. In uh, speaking of which, we got the brand new ad. Uh, I don't know how we got it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, the Bruce and Bubba ad. I love the Bruce and Bubba ad. Well, uh, we, we happen to think it's a moment of brilliance. You know, we, uh, we have a lot of young people in this country that don't pay attention to politics because they think it's boring. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we put some things together that we think, uh, have made budgetary issues a little bit interesting. And, and now we put an ad together that we believe will, uh, will make the gay marriage issue a little bit interesting to young people. And, uh, I don't think that young people understand how much power they can have in an election. Uh, your listeners, they want to go on our website at paularnelson.com, make a small contribution to our campaign. We are beating the political life out of wrong kind with these ads exposing the way he's so, voting. So you're not a fan of the fruits? I'm not a yeah. fan of what? Yeah, you know, fruity, well, fruity people. Well, look, they can do anything that they want. Mm -hmm. We're not putting any restrictions on people. But you can't tear down our institutions. And the institution of marriage has served mankind pretty well since... As we point out, I, I think straight that. couples have already destroyed that uh, institution. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. That's a fair point. Right? I mean, <laughs> what is it? What, what's the stat up to? Like sixty to seventy percent of all marriages uh, fail. That's a fair point, man. <laughs> I mean, we've already destroyed it. So, all right, Opie, you man, man loving. <laughs> just, just take, that was a fair, you listen a fair to Paul point. R. Nelson's ad, and you tell me if that I sounds. I say, uh, let them suffer like, like us, right, guys? <laughs> You sound like you, you tell me if that sounds like something you want this country uh, uh, running around with uh, with men w w walking around with men holding hands and and being married. Only, That's not me, uh, Mr. Nelson. They only want to I get agree with your uh, with it's your not, platform. They would stay doing because men don't want to get married, but they just do it because they didn't get insurance. Do you do you, do you are you for anything like that? Like uh, um, some kind of legal, uh, not a marriage, but some kind of uh, joint partnership between gay gentlemen or women that they they can then get benefits and health care uh, together. Well, uh, listen, fellas. If anyone can go to an attorney, you can own property together. You can you can put together um, uh, joint agreements where you can visit each other in the hospital. Uh, certainly, people um, can live however they choose to live in a, a legal one, contract, legal agreement, right? That's fine, some kind of contract, but not in the eyes of uh, God. Well, however, you, the, the legal definition of marriage. Uh, has been a, a sacred contract between a man and a woman. I, I just think it would be very destructive to our society uh, to, to go ahead and do that. And we can look to uh, Western Europe, to Norway and Sweden and the Netherlands, places where they've done this, right. and it has certainly been destructive. Paul, what if they're uh, two really hot lesbians, though? You know, not the not the uh, the butchy kind, you know, <laughs> but like lipstick lesbians. Not the ones they're showing on the news when they get married. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing. That's what I'm saying. Jeez. It's like, isn't that Paul, more, come on. Hey, I, love, I love Paul R. Nelson. Isn't that come more on. for us? Isn't that more? Paul, you got to you know, lean a little bit for us. I mean, all right, man on man. All right, let's 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 be honest. We all understand that. But lipstick lesbians, where's your stance on that and them getting married? We're <laughs> gay marriage. We're, we're, we're gender neutral. He's pretty, yeah, he's pretty right. straightforward with What's that one. What's your stance on lesbians and electrodes? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's already stated. How about Vietnamese lesbians <laughs> with electrodes? With old men watching. <laughs> that's something wrong kind wants money uh, going. Uh, that's wrong going kind. Going to wrong kind. Did you guys just sit in that room when you figured out that you could put a couple of letters at the beginning and end of his name and make it wrong? Did you guys yeah. just go, oh my God, this is great? And as we were sitting at the table discussing this, we realized we had destroyed the man's political future right there and then because. Uh, wow. How, how do the how do the polls look, uh, Paul? Not, not looking we, good for Paul. Yeah, we also. haven't we haven't taken a poll at this point. Uh huh. <laughs> he doesn't want to know. <laughs> no, well, why? What's <laughs> Paul? You, you gotta you gotta be honest here. You know it's going to be really really tough to uh, win this election, right? No question. Every uh, incumbency is extremely strong. And yeah. That's why incumbents uh, challengers have to come out and uh, and and they have to uh, make very articulate points and they have to tell the electorate why it is that you should fire the incumbent. And uh, that's, I think we've been doing a fairly good job of pointing out some of those reasons. Hey, Paul, I think I could help you out. Yeah. Okay. I got pics. I got some go. pictures you might want to see. What, you got wrong kind of? I might have some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? 
Don't believe him. <laughs> Look how excited. You can tell how excited Paul R. Nelson is. I call him wrong P. <laughs> wrong P. He's wrong OP. <laughs> what about abortion, sir? Where are we at? Uh, hey, come on. You guys have listened to the commercial. I'm a mm -hmm. pro-life candidate. Uh, yep. Uh, four children, one on the way. So so we're. I'm, wow. I'm a, I'm a big supporter Jeez. of children. Yeah, he's uh, you're pretty much right down the line, uh, Republican, uh, conservative. Uh, uh, that's probably a fair statement. Yeah, fair statement. How about taking it out from time to time, there, Paul? You like a black? You like Sean Kemp? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I gotta be honest. Um, I I once held hands with a man at a Mets game. Yeah, I have too. My dad. Ah, that's sweet. What? His dad. What about him? He held hands with him. Oh no, no, this was uh, this was uh, just another man. Who? That I wasn't related. This to. This is something I've never heard of, Paul. Oh no, I I, I could see it now. The Paul R. Nelson and Anthony show. I don't want any part of this. Wait. Opie holding hands with. Them. I told the story on the air. Where are you at with me, Opie, holding another man's hand that I wasn't related to at a Mets game? Opie, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with you <laughs> doing anything you want with another man. <laughs> Short of getting married, Opie. There you go. It, it was our own Danny, and I didn't know. I thought I was holding my girlfriend's hand, <laughs> and they did the old switcheroo, and I walked out of Shea Stadium holding another man's hand. It's a true story. <laughs> Paul, Paul, just to get to uh, know a little bit more about you, aside from politics, what are the things you you find funny? Like, what? Where, where does your sense of humor lie? <clears throat> I um, I sell real estate, so I work with people. Uh, I, I enjoy laughing. I, I try and laugh at work. Uh, I, I find... I find uh, uh, everyday life things humorous. I enjoy Bill Cosby's humor. Uh, I enjoy uh, 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 Jeff Foxworthy. You might be a redneck. Oh, oh, well, it's, you're you know, us. it's the Midwest. You're losing us, Paul. You're losing us. He's a Midwest guy. Ugh. He's a Midwest guy. You Would might you be a, a politician house? if... Can I buy a house in Wisconsin? Yeah, what's the real estate market looking like in Wisconsin? The real estate market in Wisconsin is a little slow right now. Yeah, everything, yeah, right? So it's not that that damn bubble house. burst so right you, after I bought. It's slow for you, Anthony. Yeah. So when you lose the election, you're going back rich. to real estate? or? Oh, when I lose the election, oh, I'm planning to lose the election. He's not planning on losing it. <laughs> and and I want to know, I, I am throwing my hat in uh, the Paul R. Nelson ring, and I want everybody else uh, that's listening right now in Wisconsin to vote for Paul R. Nelson. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why? Because I like this guy. That's it. That's yeah. all it takes. I, li I, li I like uh, I like uh, his uh, gusto. He's got gusto. We might not agree, Paul, on what every the, and on, on all the uh, all of the issues because it's very hard for everybody to agree on every issue that a politician has. But I kind of like this guy. He's got spunk. The fact that he doesn't like Italians doesn't mean anything to you. I don't. I don't know about Italian. We we, we don't discuss things like that. And I don't think Paul R. Nelson has. A, 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 he doesn't. He like judges that. people you, as people, you not are as colors or immigrants. You know, you got. Excuse me? <laughs> Italians are illegal immigrants. My came, family came here so long ago. You snuck I... here, and you, you probably named after your uh, town where your great-great-grandfather grew up, Cumiaville. And, and you came here, and you destroyed our, ta our, our lives with your mobsters and your spaghetti sauce. I want you out. I want to know think? how you'd live in buildings with bricks stacked up with no cement holding <laughs> them together, my friend, if it wasn't for my relatives. So uh, you quiet down, Patrice. Paul, I'm still on the fence. I'm not sure if I want to vote I for you. I don't know. I got, I got another, I'm being honest. I got another scenario for you. All right. Let me tip you over here. All right. Here's, here's what uh, the main qualification of a candidate should be to the American people. All right. And that is that the American people know unequivocally where the candidates stand on the issues. You may not agree with Paul R. Nelson, but you will always know where Paul R. Nelson stands on the issues. That should be the primary qualification for any candidate running for public yeah. office. And I submit to you that most candidates do their hardest uh, uh, job of trying to obfuscate the issues and, and confuse the American people as to where they stand. All right, I got one more scenario, and how you answer this question We'll decide if I vote for you, okay? Oh, boy. Uh, let's just say there's a, uh, a guy from Long Island who went to college in uh, Geneseo at a state school, and he was very lonely. He was 400 miles away from home, and he wanted to join a fraternity to get some friends and a social life. Mm -hmm. And let's just say this fraternity made him drop his draws and pick up marshmallows. And oh, then maybe right. waddle across the floor and drop the marshmallows on something that represented maybe another fraternity that they hated. And he wasn't using his hands at and the time. And he wasn't right, using right. his hands. 
Right. Well, I've been Where do you stand on that? As long as he's not marrying the marshmallows, I'm okay. With <laughs> okay, see? I vote for Paul R. Paul Nelson. Paul R. Nelson. And, Paul, if we, if we may, this is a very uh, good question that Patrice brought up. What does the R stand for? Raymond. Raymond. Paul Raymond Nelson. Hey, Paul, did you hear our Mega Mix yet? I have not. Oh, you, you know what? We have heard your Mega Mix. And, you know, I wanted to, to thank you guys for that. You know, we noticed in our campaign office, by the way, we've listened to almost every show where you've been talking about us, and my campaign staff laughs until they cry. Oh, good. Yeah, we're really funny. You are. I'm a big fan. But I've noticed, I've noticed yes. over, the, over the days that oh. you have become more of a fan as you've, uh, as you've, as you've explored actually, our issues. Actually, we yeah. started by hating you. Because of the negative ads, but then we're like, man, there's a sense of humor in these ads, and then we, uh, yeah, you completely yeah. turn us around, and we turn don't, us around. and I don't even know if we agree on anything. Not there, like I said, there are a few issues I agree with, a few I don't agree with, but uh, you do, like he said, you do know what he stands for, and uh, I don't know what this uh, wrong kind is all about, except uh, uh, he's kind of uh, hiding. All right. That's what I see. He is absolutely hiding. I think your pests need to get him out from underneath his desk and motivate him to pick up the telephone and call the Opie and Anthony show and so that we can have a debate on air on the Opie and Anthony show. All right. Paul, any problem with somebody maybe collecting World War II memorabilia? Because I do that. Oh, not a problem. I, I sold a house recently for a fellow that mm -hmm. had his whole house full of World War II memorabilia. See, thank can you. Can we be specific here and say <laughs> Nazi? No, it's from all sides. I have a, a British Enfield rifle. Time out. That gun control, Paul. Uh, conservative Republican. I'm all for guns. All right. I love this guy. See, How about now black men with guns? Uh, illegally. How about guns? If they're le <laughs> if they're legally obtained. How about nines, nigger? Yeah, we got it. We got it. We got to go, Paul. Thank you so much for uh, checking in with us, and good luck uh, on the election. And uh, uh, pests uh, help out, Paul R. Nelson. Paul R. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. There he goes. Peace Paul. out. Paul R. Nelson, everybody. This is Paul R. Nelson, and you're listening to the Opie and Anthony Show. All right. That's <laughs> Paul R. Nelson. <laughs> I can't believe you talked to He's him. He's like a celebrity to I love Paul R. Nelson. He's just a dumb real estate guy. He's a real Wisconsin. estate guy. But Tossie's but a he's, celebrity now. He's a celebrity. <laughs> All right, we got a break because uh, we got Borat coming in. It's the ONA virus spreading across America. <laughs> Uh, the, the movie opens today. Uh, I can't even, you know, the movie's called Cultural Learnings of America for Make Benefit Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's getting massive reviews. New York Papers giving it four stars. All of them giving it uh, four stars in the New York Papers, I guess. Uh, RottenTomatoes.com, 95% uh, good review. Good Who's, review. I talk like him now. Good, good review. review. Who's the idiots that uh, didn't give it a good review? Just some, Who are the people that didn't get it? Just some dope, too cool for the room, saying Phil he's Mushnick. saying he's yeah. ripping off Phil Andy Mush Kaufman. Phil Mushnick. All right, I was answering your question, but oh, oh but you. you two speak Screw amongst you. yourselves. Who Screw cares? You. Whatever. Talk amongst yourselves. Now, one ass saying that he's uh, he's doing a cheap Andy Kaufman, which I, com I completely uh, disagree with, by the way. It, the guy's just a dope. He's just too cool for the room. He has to be the one. Like, look what I look. I'll be the one. That writes the naked review on the movie. Ah! Phone ringing! How about what? Linda what Stassi? Huh? How about Linda Stassi? Did she give it a, a bad review? Uh, no, I don't know. She doesn't do movie reviews, so... No? Well, hey, what that was the big does. intro for Borat. What's going on? Maybe We he, can't do a better job maybe, than that. Maybe he's busy. He's in bathroom? <laughs> he's in bathroom. Be right back. <laughs> he's in bathroom. Be right back. Maybe he decided not to do our show. Maybe yeah. got some last-minute uh, info on us. He was offended that Paul R. Nelson was a guest before him. <laughs> well, hey, we could take a break and completely catch up and then get into Borat. Oh, wow. I don't know. What do you think? Where is he? Is he taking a, uh, a you-know-what? A duck? Is he panicking on us? <clears throat> no. What's happening? How can he panic? Hey, Borat! We're on in the bathroom, so. Are we? Borat! How's what are it? our numbers in the bathroom? How's it coming out? You doing good in the... <laughs> <laughs> Two out of three stalls love us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's good. We're up. <laughs> We're up a bit. I, I don't know what to do. Is he, is he coming down the hall? Oh, my God. If we break, we can, we can be back on track. Should we do that? He's going to have to wait like seven minutes. All right. Let him wow. dump. All right. Let him dump.
Let them dump. I don't think anyone's uh, going anywhere. Then this, jump right right now. This Make is a the big, decision. This is Make a big guess for us. We went long with Paul R. Nelson. We're taking another break. Make the call. All right. It's the only virus spreading across America. Oh, oh, no. Oh, that, yes. oh, oh Anthony yes, doesn't sir. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony doesn't like the kisses well, on the cheek. Oh, well, yeah. It's customary in his country. Uh, I'll just go it's for a handshake. Customary. I'll just go for a handshake. No, nah, he's got it. He, he's, it's uh, right. customary. Uh, be, you would be insulting him. Very nice. <laughs> Now you gotta put some Purell on your cheeks, dude. <laughs> nah, I could, I could. Hello, oh, feel free to sit right here on this beautiful red couch. Yeah, well, we we tried to get Borat in about 15 minutes ago, but uh, at the last minute he had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, yes, I needed, uh, I had problem uh, with my anus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Last night. I'm very excited. I go to your nice restaurant, McDonald's, yeah. and I eat uh, 14 hamburger and uh, 2,000 packets of this red soup uh, that's called ketchup. Uh, and now this morning, after what just happened, my anus, it hangs loose like a mouth of a tired dog. <laughs> yeah. So you don't, have, do you don't have fast food restaurants in your hometown there? Uh, we do not have so much. There are stalls on the uh, road that maybe sell some uh, fermented horse urine <laughs> or uh, horse's throat yeah. uh, that have been boiled, but not so much this wonderful hamburger. I am bringing back three uh, so that my premier can eat it on the, on the opening of Parliament dinner. And what do you think of the American toilet? It's, a, it's nice, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Very nice. I, uh, I uh, make my toilet in this room, and in the corner there is a bowl mm -hmm. uh, on the floor with water in it, which <laughs> yeah. is very convenient to wash your face with after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever, whatever you can use it for. Yeah, the water in the bowl. That's. Uh... Yeah, it's very nice. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, but... <laughs> yes. You're very nice, Pippos. People are loving I like you. you. America, like... USA Day. Yeah, you like <laughs> Yeah. You know we're shock jocks. What a minute, shock jock. Uh, have you heard of shock jocks in your country? What a minute, shock jock. Shock jocks. Shock jocks. <laughs> what a minute, shock jock. Shock jocks. <laughs> they say uh, outrageous. Oh, things. outrageous. Aye. Crazy yeah. things. Yeah. What, you uh, shoot gypsies live? <laughs> no. <laughs> we have a show like this in Kazakhstan. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> What's the entertainment like over there? You gypsy shooting? Uh, and... Very nice. Our uh, number one show is hosted by uh, animal actor Johnny the Monkey, <laughs> who was the star of Transibiski Express and hundreds of other pornos. <laughs> <laughs> pornos, huh? Uh, yes. Well, great. Great. Well, uh, people are loving your uh, your movie, your documentary. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. People are loving it, except I, I'm, I'm hearing maybe the governments uh, in your country aren't very happy about it. Uh, there have been some controversies in my country of Kazakhstan about the amount of anti-Semitism in my movie film. <laughs> yeah. However, eventually the Kazakh censor allowed the film to be released after deciding that there was just enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a little confused by the name, though. Can you come up with something a little... A little shorter there. A uh, Borat Cultural Learnings of America for Make Benefit Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan. <laughs> right, right, right. It uh, this, is, this is the abridged title. It doesn't. Oh, it is. It doesn't flow off the tongue, sir. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I think it does. Do you think? Yeah. What do you think we should call it? Uh, that's a good question. I wish I had an answer. I would. I would look brilliant at this point. Uh, you're, uh... Um, at informative learnings of America for my <laughs> Exactly, exactly. There you Good go. Good name, too. I, uh, what, how do you explain, um, on the beach that, that, uh, bathing suit that you had on? Where yes, when that? I was in the Cannes Film Festival, <laughs> yeah. I wear a bathing suit. Yes, very yes. nice. <laughs> very nice. Uh, it is the official, uh, Olympic swimming suit of Kazakhstan. Oh, it is? Okay, yes. that's where it fit in. You must have a good crumb to wear it. <laughs> you have a nice crumb? Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been told. It's it been is, okay. uh, yeah, it's we say bad. to be a good, uh, Interviewer, you must have a good crumb. <laughs> good crumb. Yes. crumb. Yeah, you yes. have a nice one? Yeah, I think it's okay. Uh, can I uh, touch it? Italian. Uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> Why not? Well, I, I kind of like uh, girls to touch uh, that, not not men. Yeah. Yeah. 
You're a man. All right, that's it. <laughs> no, you're a man. <laughs> What the problem? Because you you're a man. If... But I am not the man who makes a bang, bang, bang in Addis of Adam. Uh, oh, no, no. Uh, oh, no Anthony, uh, I, Anthony have, is you, there... I have had made a sexy time with three women and 15 prostitutes. Yeah, but it sounds, <laughs> it sounds like you want to go to the edge of the forest with Anthony, though. No, I do not like to make. Uh, you want to go to I the edge of like forest, right? I do not like to fill uh, anus with goose liver. Uh, so there's no tearing. <laughs> no, no, okay. So there's no tearing. <laughs> goose liver. Is that yes. what's used? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Yeah, because it's uh, very slippery, I guess. No, in my country, yeah. uh, now uh, homosexuals treated equally. They no longer have to wear blue hats. <laughs> <laughs> are, are they allowed to get married? <laughs> What? Are they allowed to get married? Why would they get married? Well, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the big fad here in America. Uh, they do not want to get married. Last year we had uh, very many of them. We found 15 of them. <laughs> yeah. But after we cage them and give them electric therapy, <laughs> we cure them. <laughs> I like how you think, sir. Now, uh, what's the problem with the Jews in your country? The Jew. <laughs> uh, we uh, would like to say that we in Kazakhstan very much support uh, anti-Jew warrior Melvin Gibson's <laughs> yes. in his statement about the Jew. <laughs> uh, he say uh, that they start all the wars. Uh, we also have uh, proof. Uh, from our government scientists that it was the Jews yeah. that uh, were responsible for the end of the dinosaur period. <laughs> <laughs> Your uh, scientists have come up with that one. Yes, uh, Dr. Yamak. <laughs> Dr. Yamak. Just one scientist? Yes, so Dr. You Yamak, you have uh, one you scientist. Need. He also proved that the woman's brain is the size of a squirrel. <laughs> Yeah, again, like now, a little peanut. A lot of women are coming out and saying that. Look at this man! He is a big. Do you have? Uh, <laughs> hey, do you have that color in your country? Uh, we have uh, a one man uh, like this. Uh, he uh, work in a circus. Uh, people pay twenty five thousand tenge to touch his hair. He's called. He's called Gogol. You know him? Don't, don't I look like Kazakhstani women? <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you are not a woman. <laughs> He's, uh, you are a big man. Yes, sir. I would like to wrestle you with no clothes. And I, I, I wish I had the cram that I should have been blessed with. <laughs> oh, you don't, you don't have a big cram? Oh, I, I wanted a baby on, but I didn't get blessed with a big cram. Yes, mine yeah. is thick like a can of Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of a lot of women have been talking about uh, your film and saying that it uh, it doesn't show them in the best light. Like you, you. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a problem. They are not allowed in the cinema. Uh, no, not where I'm from. Uh, we have a pen outside the cinema where you put your animals and your wives. Yeah. <laughs> and you must give in a ticket stub to collect them. <laughs> If they are not collected within three days, then they are resold. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah I like that. So, obviously, they don't vote yet over there or anything, oh. right? What? <laughs> <laughs> no voting. Let's just laugh. We say to give a woman vote is like to let a monkey fly a plane. <laughs> Very dangerous. Uh, we we stopped letting monkeys do that ever since the Astana air crash of 2002. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we all heard about that. Oh, yeah, that was a sad day. Tragic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Ah, yes, he is a big, uh, very strong, big black man. Yeah. He wants to wrestle you naked, Patrice. Huh? He wants to wrestle you naked. I don't care. He wrestles people naked. All right, I'll wrestle him naked. <laughs> yeah. how, many, how much? How much is a Kazakhstani dollar or whatever you call it uh, compared to American dollar? Our conversion rate uh, is um, one U.S. dollar is about. Uh, 250,000 Kazakh tenge. <laughs> Now, what, what, does, what does one Kazakh tenge buy you? It buys you a woman's. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of prostitution over there. Yeah, so my yeah. sister, in fact, is the number four prostitute in all of Kazakhstan. I, I read Congratulations. that yeah. this morning, yeah. Yes. The uh, family must be proud. Uh, we are, particularly since uh, last month, she received an award from the Minister of Industry uh, for best mouth party. <laughs> <laughs> mouth party. Wait a minute, so one Sounds American great. dollar can give 
get me 250,000 Kazakhstani prostitutes. If you, you could find that many, I yeah, guess. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, he likes the the prostitutes. Well, I mean, not the. Jeez, yeah, I don't like, like the prostitutes. You must, I'm you talking like, like he does, that's you, all. You must like come uh, stay in my house. You can eat my food, you can uh, sleep in my house, and you can use my system. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you she, to... she is tight, like a manzanus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he likes to swing a little bit, you know. He likes to... He yeah. likes to swing. Yeah. 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 Even he knows. <laughs> I thought he was going to say like a gorilla, but he was like, oops. <laughs> Even... <laughs> yes. he... No, he... It... it reached there. Did he, Did he get flavor, flavor, love out in uh, Kazakhstan on television? What? No. No, he doesn't, he doesn't know what that is, of course. What, when do you have to go back? Do you have like a visa or something? Uh... Uh, yes, uh, I must uh, return uh, soon. I stay in mm. uh, New York for a few more days, and then uh, I go uh, return. It, uh, I will arrive back in Kazakhstan uh, maybe in three months. We travel. <laughs> yes, we, How do you uh, travel? It must take Yes, a... we go a boat, and then uh, my uh, son, Bilak, who is 11 years old, and yeah. his uh, wife is waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have a new child. Yeah. Uh, who we are hoping to sell to Madonna. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Would you ever think of living here? It's a very nice country, but uh, I like uh, very much Kazakhstan. It's a very similar place to America now. Really similar? Yes, we treat uh, people equally. <laughs> Uh, we have opened in May the Almaty uh, Disabled Care Center. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, it's nice. very nice. We have uh, 300 new cages for them to live in. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a, a great industry. Yeah. yeah. In your country is the making of cages. Yes, and uh, it's a <laughs> public... There's a lot of cage stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the cage welder must do very well over oh, there. Sure. Yes. I'm sure that keeps uh, crime down. Yeah. Keeping a lot of people in cages, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, we should talk about the movie. For the people that don't know, you yes. gotta explain your movie to everybody. It's getting great reviews. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Four. St you don't even have to be here, so we appreciate four this. stars in all of the newspapers and. Uh, four star is a good. Four uh, star is yeah. very good. So the American uh, government give it four star. Uh, well, no, we have like newspapers uh, that's separate from the government. We're supposed what? to. What? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Different guys have different opinions. Yeah. What yeah. does uh, Premier George Walter Bush think? <laughs> <laughs> we are very big fannies of him. Oh, yeah. you like him? Although of he course is, you are. He is strong, although not as strong as his father, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Tough guy, Barbara. My <laughs> name Barbara. Don't mess with me. Who's in charge over there in uh, Kazakhstan? Our Premier Nazarbayev, glorious. 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 He yeah. is a glorious leader. And yeah. he takes care of his people. Very much. He is a very wise and very strong man. Mm -hmm. He, uh, in your country, you win the uh, vote. Mm -hmm. You, the one with most votes wins. Right. In my country, it is the one who can suspend the heaviest weight from his uh, hrum. <laughs> and that, he managed the car battery for 3.4 seconds. And that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys fighting anybody right now? Uh, yes, uh, we are defending ourselves from uh, evil nitwits Uzbekistan. Who are our neighbors? Oh, you, oh yeah. Oh, you best. Oh, right, right, right. Yes, there's a very are, bad. Are you people. all form? You are all the former Russians, right? All former Soviet Union. Yes, right? before uh, 1991. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they were all uh, common uh, now under it's, communist now it's a uh, bunch rule. Of countries we can't pronounce. <laughs> yeah, that's all I know. <laughs> and and, uh, explain the movie though, there, Borat. You you, you went around America. And the movie films uh, show how I come to America to make reportings for my country. <laughs> yeah. And then I fall in love with a beautiful woman and must go find her. Ah. Oh. Her name is Pamela Anderson. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got a crush on her. Yeah. You gonna bring her home? I with did you? not crush her, no. No? <laughs> no. no, crushing her. You like the, uh, <clears throat> In my country, uh, you American women's, you like to have the, uh, teeth. Yes. 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 Uh, they're very up. Yeah. In Kazakhstan, we like it to dangle. Oh, really? <laughs> Our women's. Uh, to make themselves look more pretty, they hang rocks from them. <laughs> In fact, uh, Kazakhstan, Miss Kazakhstan, Karilga Shatmova, she have a beautiful pair that make dangle 1.3 meter. <laughs> wow. 1.4 if you include the milk valve. <laughs>
<laughs> and that and when that's she attractive. when she bending over, it looked like she had four legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very attractive. Uh, very nice. So, <laughs> traveling across America, what what did you learn about America as you were filming this uh, movie? I uh, learned uh, many things, uh, democracy, uh, how uh, etiquettes your people, mm -hmm. uh, but I also learned uh, some things that surprised me. For example, that it is now illegal to shoot at Red Indians. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, can I please use this opportunity to once again apologize to the staff at the Potawatomi Casino in Nevada? <laughs> Uh, it was an ugly scene up there. Uh, and there were no signs. No signs, well. Yeah, because uh, a lot of people, I guess, from your country would think that uh, we could still do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, shoot, uh, shoot Indians. Indians. Yeah. Was... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things have changed. I don't know how much of our history. It is a shame. It is a shame. Uh, it is a shame. I don't know how much of your history, of our history, you're familiar with and when it happened and how long ago, but that was a while ago. Do they yes. get along with the, the other kind of Indians, the Dot Indians? Uh, what, people from uh, India? Kazakhstan, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, what? The You're other Indians. Dot Indians? The Dot Indians? What are the Dot Indians? Well, there's the red ones that at the casinos, and then there's the Dot ones that we mistake for Arabs. Yes. What? <laughs> the ones that look like the ones that look like black people with white people hair. Ah yeah, you're angry. Now you 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 are a fat. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa, Borat! <laughs> All right, hey, very man, nice. Just having fun here. Woman, <laughs> what Borat's the hell? Messing with my self-esteem. I just asked uh, about not Indians. Women would go crazy for you in Kazakhstan. They like it very much. A fat. <laughs> 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 Would they let me get on top in Kazakhstan? Or is, is, what's, what's the what's the yeah? What's uh, the position? The known position, the best position. Our mm -hmm. most famous position in Kazakhstan is called uh, the dog style. Ah, That's right. Where the man stand up mm -hmm. like this. Oh yeah. And the dog stand like this. <laughs> <laughs> now you I, try this? No, no, never tried that yes, one. Now the uh, you say you f you fall in love or you f uh, with a woman and you, yeah, you try to find her. What are, what is the uh, difference? Like uh, it seems like in your country uh, you don't treat women that well and like you said. Before. What? <laughs> well, you you treat them differently yeah. than here. How do American women react to the way uh, you, you treat them? Uh, I do not know. I mean. I have not had time to buy any here yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, I did not ask them. No. Yeah. No, you just kind of fell Some in love. Some of them, when I am walking in the streets and I ask them how much, <laughs> they get angry. Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. Uh, by the way, they're not all prostitutes. A lot of amazing. people on what? the what? <laughs> a, a lot of people on the instant feedback want us to tell Borat that he's not our slave. He, he's he's an equal here. Oh nice! <laughs> I don't remember any. I don't remember Borat saying anything about having slaves in Kazakhstan. Yeah, well, and know, if there were slaves, they're not black American dudes. We're trying to educate I, him. He's. A, I have what, a slave. What are the lower oh, class yeah. citizens in Kazakhstan? I yeah. have a slave. His name is Bishkek. He is uh, Uzbekistani. Oh. Uh, oh, uh, but he liked to be chained. <laughs> oh, he does. Okay. Yes, uh, then it's okay. Gypsies uh, once broke into my house, and they. Uh, Touched Bishkek in a bad way, he became depressed. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Borat has to go do some TV. You're, yeah. Are you enjoying the TV? What? Are you enjoying <laughs> doing American TV? Uh, very much. Yeah. I meet. Uh, I went on this show, <laughs> Letterman's. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I uh, on stage with this uh, pop star Beck. Ah, Beck, yeah. yeah. Very pretty girl. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you shaved the mustache. You look like that guy from uh, Talladega Nights. What? Yeah, the gay guy, the gay Formula One driver. Are you I, related to him? I am not the gay. <laughs> <laughs> you just go to the edge of the forest every once in a while. I do not go to the edge of forest. <laughs> I, I have do. never made a romance inside another man. You know, that mustache... <laughs> Maybe once on the Feast of Shurik, but this is obligation. <laughs> <laughs> that mustache in America kind of, you know, means something yeah. a little different. In uh, my country, if you do not have a mustache, yeah. it means you are a lully lully. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, this is going to be really awkward because he's got to go to do, uh, do TV. Do you take uh, photographs? Yes. Can we get a quick photograph? I like to take uh, photographs of ladies making toilet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to get along. <laughs> All right. What, he's got to go. Borat's got to go. 
Yeah, he's very busy. I want to take you back to Kazakhstan. I will make a lot of money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> selling him to the circus. No, not selling No, no, no. Circus. Come with me. He wants to like you. you. Well, you gotta give me a context. <laughs> well, yeah. to, to touch your hair, I would think. Sleep with your sister. Do yeah. Do circus work. All right. You get you get him a part in your next movie. He'll go. Okay. He'll go, he'll go with you. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but please, I ask people to come see my movie film because my government have told me if it's not a success, I will be executed. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we'll never see him again, unfortunately, so enjoy your career. We get you guys Boring. just before you make it, and then we get you when you're way down at the other side. How much? Uh, how many Kazakhstani uh, ooplies are you getting paid? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, this, uh, what is movie? this movie. Yeah. This uh, movie. This movie. How many uh, prostitutes? Put it this way. How many prostitutes can you buy from this movie? Well, I tell you, it have made a lot of money in Kazakhstan. It uh, took the number one spot from uh, Hollywood movie King Kong, which has oh. been uh, the number one film in my country ever since it was released in 1933. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't say. Well, I'm not saying a word. We don't need to say anything. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, uh, you're, you're a, a joy to have here. It's very nice to be with your people. Yes. Can we go later on, make a party in my hotel room, uh, drink vodka, uh, wrestle no clothes, and shoot dogs from window? <laughs> we certainly could. I would love that. Sounds like a party. Sounds like an afternoon right. of fun. Yeah. Uh, the name of the movie again, sir, because I can't uh, do it. It just doesn't flow. It is flow. a Borat. Right. Cultural learnings of America for make benefit the glorious nation of Kazakhstan. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is, Opie. It's Borat, everyone. Yes, thank, thank you very you much, so much uh, Laura. I love you. You're wonderful. I like sex. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a quick break and we'll continue. It's the ONA virus spreading across America. They were trying to talk me into, like, trying to get him out of character. Yeah. I guess that would have been a good uh, gag, I guess. But that was just way too much fun to just go with it. The the character he does is so friggin' funny. I mean, why? Yeah. Yeah. And you could see him out of character. I'm sure we'll get him out of character at some point. I tried a little bit because, uh, did you see Talladega Nights? Yeah, he's in that. Did you see the movie, though? No, no. The movie's, you know, it's okay. It could have been a lot better. The concept was great with Will Ferrell and all. Yeah. But uh, what's his real name? Sasha? Cohen? Yeah. Right? He plays a gay Formula One driver, just beyond hilarious. Beyond yeah. hilarious in the movie. <clears throat> guy's blowing up, dude. We'll that never see him again. going to be huge. This movie is just getting the best reviews. Unbelievable. We'll never see him again. The People... character is such a goof. Oh. You know, I was telling Patrice, too. I'm like, you know, usually when guys play characters, I'm like, ugh. Yeah, ugh. Stop already. I think Jim Norton's the same way. But he just pulls it off so well. Yeah. Like, I know I, I knew he was pulling it off really well when Patrice was going with it for the most part. Because I, I thought <laughs> out of, don't go with anything I thought like out that. of the three of us, you know, even though people were asking me uh, to go with it, you know, to try to uh, break them, I was thinking the whole time when Borat, Bor uh, Sasha, whatever came in, that Patrice would finally go, all right, dude, stop. Stop. We all know yeah. that yeah, you're... Patrice would be the one that goes, all right, don't talk to me We all know that you're voice. British, you're Ali G, you know, stop. <laughs> but you, it was on it, it was on the tip, but the dude, it's almost like when I was looking at him, it's something connected there where it was almost like, he was like, uh, just come on. Just go with it. <laughs> and I'm would like, you just you know, go with it? We both had eyes like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'll do it, man. Because it, it, was, it was there, and I was just like, I wanted to just throw in some, it, just, yeah. come on, Ali, yeah. chill out, man. No one's yeah, great. Ali, what are you doing? Come on, Sasha, <laughs> stop playing, dude. It, it brought me back to being a kid because it was like, it was almost like a Santa Claus moment. When Santa Claus shows up? No, well, I'll tell you why, because... As soon as the interview was over, this is what we give you guys, the behind-the-scenes stuff. As soon as we went to break, yeah. he pops out of the chair and he starts talking yeah, with, it's his, like, with, I'm, his, with his British accent. I'm like, oh, man. You want to take a photograph? I, yeah. I kinda, like, wait, what the... I kind of wanted him... Where did Borat go? I kind of wanted him to leave his Borat. Like, yeah. if the little kid in me was like, just play it all the way through and walk out his Borat. But, but he that, jumps that up and... Like that yeah, made yeah, me I like understand. That made me like yeah. him like more, like you know, because it's like he, if he had got up and been like, I think you're buying it. Yeah, we take like, photographs, <laughs> right? <laughs> photographs. Yeah, but he's like, like, and then he's like, thanks, and then he's like, 
And then he goes, sorry, you know, in the British accent, I can't do it. He's like, sorry, just, you know, I really had to take a, and then he said the S word for, yeah. you know, what? And, mm -hmm. and he took me right out of it. I was like, man, I was, I was being a kid there, bro. You're a Borat. You're a Borat. I want to believe. Puts, you know, it's really weird. He puts on the, uh, well, he goes back to his regular voice with the English accent and his body mannerisms and facial expression, uh, changes. Yeah. And all of a sudden he's like, even though he's got the dopey mustache, he's like a smooth, cool guy. And two seconds ago, he had that dopey face on with the thumbs up thing going. It's like in, in a split second, he changes and he's kind of like smooth. Yeah. The English, you know how the English are. I got to tell you, the X Hammer's got the <clears throat> got the good interview. They dumped out a bunch. I'm starting to hear now. Oh well, any any reference to uh, female uh, parts yeah. that you can't talk about on the radio? He was using uh, certain descriptions of them. Yeah. <laughs> that were really funny. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, that's it. You know, hey, sorry, it's the price you pay for. Uh, you know, free radio. FCC, uh, <laughs> free radio. regulated free radio. That's why it's free. <laughs> wow. What can we tell you, people? Yeah, well, that's how it is. I'm hearing seven dumps uh, during that segment. Uh, before you came in. Uh, oh, I thought you were talking well, about then, his uh, bathroom. Well, habits. then the one. Ah, so ah, uh, let's ah, go ah. with a total of eight. Then uh, <laughs> there was eight there. <laughs> let's say hi to Shane in Florida. Shane, what's up? Howdy, boys. Hey. Uh, I just uh, I don't know if it's wrong of the day, but it was pretty damn funny. Uh, Boy, I said he liked to he, he liked to take photos of women making toilets. <laughs> making funny. Yeah. Making toilet <laughs> making. I, do they allow that? I hope. So. I hope they would. That's I, pretty I don't innocent. see any problem with that. I hope they allow that because that could, the, could that's actually be in a factory. They're making toilets. Yeah. Well, we'll see what the line of the day is today, but it's gonna be. Uh, it's got to be one of his. It just has to be. Joe in El Paso. What's up? What's up, Bonnie? What's up, Patrice? How you know? What's up? Yeah, man. That guy is the funniest guest ever, I think, in my my opinion, man. Yeah. I yeah, mean, he did a great job. Is he, is he too big to have his own XM show? <laughs> oh, he's never going to. No, no, what are you kidding? That guy's huge now. Joe, let me tell you what's going to so happen. Johnny. We will never see him again. The movie is going to be beyond huge. They're saying it's one of the funniest comedies in, in, in forever, basically. Like, they're pretty much saying it's the funniest comedy ever. Yeah, I've never seen a, a movie get so many uh, four-star reviews. And, for, and they're already for talking comedy. about uh, paying him, what, $50 million or something like that for his next movie. Yeah. Uh, the gay character he does on Ali G. The, is he going to just run off to Africa for, uh, like, three, four months and right? then come back and not oh, sign any contracts? Oh, oh why? <laughs> why did you have to do that? Because <laughs> Dave Chappelle is a nut. <laughs> why do you have to Because Dave Chappelle's crazy. Relax. You don't have to stick up for Dave Chappelle. No, I'm not. <laughs> he blew it. I, I predict that, uh, that he'll be back, though. Yeah, I do. I, 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 because I believe that he's at the level he's at right now. He's he didn't grow with the show. Yeah, he's, he's at a certain level. Borat is big. It's mm -hmm. official. And his next one, he'll come in and he'll be down. I hope you, so. You know, it, uh, there was there wasn't a dead spot in that twenty minutes. How long do you give it before he is so sick of doing that character? That's well, the, the, that's the downside of doing a character driven uh, well, no, movie or. Well, the beauty interview. is, though, he's doing the, the press junket now. And yeah. honestly, I, I think he only has to do it for a couple more weeks. That's it. And maybe at an award show or something, something like that. But, but when a movie's huge like that, he'll be out on the street and people just be like, hey, Borat, do it. I, yeah. He's smart, though. Do the Borat. That dude's smart. He's He'll do it. And then when they rise up against him because it gets too big, <laughs> yeah. he just disappear into another goofy character. Yeah, he's right. been Ali G forever. And that's still going on because that never hit that I'm tired of it stage. And he'll do the not, thing. Well, actually, not, I don't think many, a lot of people jumped on the Ali G thing. But now with this, they're going to go back and get the DVDs and kind of catch up on what that's all I about. I hate to admit it, I haven't seen one Ali G. I'm going out I and saw getting a couple. it. I'm going out and getting it yeah, today. Yeah, now I'll get, today. The, I'll get the box set. Today I'm He's going famous to get it. in England forever. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, but uh, it's, that's, it is what it is. Yeah. All right, let's say hi to Certainly Joel McHale. Is. Joel. Hey, jo Joel. Joel McHale. <laughs> Joel. Joel fell asleep. Oh boy. He didn't want to wait for us. We got uh, our, our buddy Joel McHale. Hard who, hours over there at uh, the who, soup. Who does the soup? He made me laugh pretty hard because he celebrated his 103rd. Show one hundred and third. <laughs> yeah, everyone does that dude the celebration funny. at hundred. Yeah. He's, he's hilarious. He makes me laugh, man. Well, he can work he's those. A uh, funny guy, man. Well, he might have killed himself because uh, the phone's not hung up, but we can't get him on the line. Joel, 
Is he playing, killing us. playing the silent game with us? <laughs> Maybe. He's sitting there laughing, snickering to himself. Yeah, he's made the soup worth watching every weekend. He is good. On man. the E channel. It's hard to do those clip shows, you know. <laughs> oh, it's, it's disgusting. It's clips. And to make it entertaining like that. It's I'm going to put him back on hold. He's very smug. We'll go, uh, we'll, we'll go uh, back to Joel in a minute. Russ in Alabama, what's up? Hey, it's Wes in Alabama. What's up, boys? Well, hey, Wes. What's up? Patrice, what's up, chocolate face? <laughs> good, man. That was a uh, line from his movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a line from his movie? That's funny. I, I don't care, dude. You don't have to have a disclaimer. Like, dude, dude, it's a line from the movie. It wasn't me. I swear to God. I didn't say that. Don't beat me up if you ever see me. <laughs> Whatever. Do you think? I'm just kidding with you, Patrice, man. I saw you in Birmingham here a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of months ago, man, and uh, you're hilarious. But we saw the pre-screening of that guy's movie, and he comes to Birmingham, Alabama, and uh, he gets etiquette training here. Yeah. Holy crap, it's hilarious. Uh, he gets chased out of the place, so uh, you guys just got to go out and see it. You seen the movie? Yeah. We now, the, now we, how, we how long the, is it? Uh, I mean, it's regular movie length. So we saw the pre-screening. Let me, tell you, let me tell you, like an hour and a half. You know it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What keeps, what keeps that character from being boring for an hour and a half? Like, what is in it to keep... Oh my God! It's uh, the interaction between people that have no idea that it's not a character. So, mm -hmm. oh, so it's like what serious. I mean, the, what, yeah. Okay. Did I say that right? So, not a character. What makes it so yeah. great is okay. like part of it's written and and part of it is him just messing with people. It's it's hilarious. Um, a lot of but, political uh, incorrectness. Uh, yep. The whole the whole thing is totally wrong. You guys would love it. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go. I, I, too bad we couldn't get a screening. Rolling. The funniest part. How the hell am I going to go see this movie this weekend? I think I'm going to see it tonight. Why, why didn't you invite me to a screening? I, I did, but there were all the times I emailed you guys about. They only had like three screenings. I'm sorry, can you take the helium uh, balloon out your throat, please, for a second? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> can you go into man throat mode, Roland. please, sir? Yeah, like, give us your deepest voice, Roland. Hey, the funniest. Hold on, hold on. We're getting a bit from Roland. <laughs> <laughs> You're done. <laughs> oh. Oh. Rolling, your new nickname is Tinder Voice. <laughs> he didn't have to be tased, Opie. Well, it's my new bit, though. I, I know. Try it out. I understand. I got to work out the bugs. Yeah. Hey, uh, Roland, what's your deepest voice there? Hey. How are you? I don't know. Oh, my God. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Can, can somebody get the lotion? <laughs> the uh, uh, oh. <laughs> did, did Borat's people like the interview? Uh, they loved the interview. They did, huh? Yeah. yeah. It seemed to go real well. Yeah. He and you really enjoyed himself. He did? Mm-hmm. While you walked out with him? Yep. And what did he say? He said, thank you very much. I had a great time. Does he remember our names? Opie and Anthony. Yeah. I'm thinking next movie, Patrice. Maybe. Ah, you never know. Hey, did uh, you <laughs> see him out on the street? Yeah. Did you see him go out? Were there people waiting for him? Uh, on the other side. He went on the right side. People were waiting on the left side. Does, does, are, do people look at him and go, oh, my God, that's that guy? Is he, yeah. like, highly recognizable now? Yeah, people walk in the building. There's, like, the, the double take. By the time they realized it was him, he was already... He is. Yeah. The Borat character is a lot of him massive on YouTube. It's yeah. just massive. Yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of costumes Halloween on Borats. Halloween. Halloween Borat. Our own Danny was a Halloween Borat. Yeah, oh, Jesus. A little he, too much. He wore the bathing suit. He got Borat to sign that bathing suit that he yeah. wore at the uh, Halloween party. Party. All right, I think Joel called back. Uh, Joel. Yeah. We're giving you the nice plug, and you're not even there. <laughs> well, I uh, they they were t I could hear you guys talking, and Roland kept saying, "I'm going to call him right now. I'm going to call him right now. I'm going to call him right now." And I so I felt like I was in one of those dreams where I had died. Yeah. <laughs> I was going, "No, I'm right here." And <laughs> I'm here, please. Yes, and then tears, and uh, it was, and then I was okay. Hey, uh, Joel. Yeah. I think we have a pretty nice relationship going. I think so too. You've uh, done our show uh, what, almost I, ten times now, maybe? Yeah, we, we could call it ten. Uh, I saw the celebration you had for the one hundred and third episode. <laughs> yes. Of the soup on the E Channel. Is that something? With our new pal Joel McHale. Is that something Thank people you. do? What? Celebrate the hundred and third show. <laughs> That's why he's like think yeah, that. that's why once he's a good. week. <laughs> like <laughs> once a, uh, that takes ten years, but on E is like on five days. Yeah, was it the hundred and third <laughs> airing? Uh, yeah, of the well, same well, episode. Since we air eight times. It only, yeah, it takes about six weeks to get to one hundred and three episodes. Joel, yeah, got a little problem. Uh oh. Saw a lot of people congratulating congratulating you on the hundred and third show. Right. Where was the call for Opie and Anthony to congratulate their new friend Joel McHale? They want those were people <laughs> that came in to do the Daily Ten. Oh, 
Mm. None of them actually came in to wish me anything. Yeah. We, Some... did, we grabbed them and said, hey, would you say something? And Something tells me they to muster a camera crew together to fly to New York is a, yeah, it would have been a bit almost much. like going to Mars. We'll send our own video. Yeah, we would have made our own video, Joel. Uh, it, well, I'm starting to think this relation we, uh, relationship we have is like fake. It's like uh, <laughs> it's not a real friendship. It's not a real friendship. It's a hey, I need to promote, and you guys need content. Yeah, we're like friends with benefits. Just, <laughs> I just kind of use you, and then I leave you. And then I'm like, hey, I don't have a girlfriend right now. What are you doing? Yeah. Do they just drag in people for all those, like, clip show type things? And, well, like, you're there all day? If you, you know if, all those, like, countdown shows? Yeah, the countdown shows and things like that. I, I'm they just thinking. Have celebrities that come in for those. Those are all. Those are all kind of uh, my, uh, people that are kind of working. Whereas. The Daily Ten or E News gets actual celebrities, and then people in the building go nuts when they're there, and you can't make eye contact with them, and the halls are cleared. Oh, they tell you they tell you to knock it off, and, uh, and then I'm like, it's Michael Rappaport, and they're like, don't even look at him. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't look at him. Get out of the Jesus, hallway, that's get out bad. Of here. That's pretty funny. It's you know what? <laughs> Michael Rappaport. <laughs> that's that's brilliant. <laughs> Our buddy Jim Norton did David Letterman the other day, and uh, I went for the taping, and man, you're not allowed to look at Dave. When no. he's uh, not on that stage, we learned that. Well, that's because that's for your benefit because you might you might melt because of his star power. Yeah, I've heard uh, people have either turned to stone, their hair gets that pure yeah, white. I mean, he is. He's now a legend. So yeah. So what are we working on for the soup? Well, it sweeps. Ah, uh, oh so boy. People Look are out. going nuts. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Tyra is going to tackle, and I'm not kidding, racism, homelessness. And modeling scams. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the three most important things. Back. We're both obsessed. This show and Joel McHale are. We're both obsessed with Tyra Banks. You didn't. I didn't tell you my Tyra story. I didn't talk to you guys. You well, what Tyra happened? Story? I was on Tyra. You, where were you, you were on, on Tyra. Tyra. They might cut me out. They might absolutely have me removable. You better hope for your career they cut you out. Wait a minute. I was, you know, they, she was doing a web show, and I was one of the judges because of the web junk thing. Oh, Jesus. So they were showing films of, <laughs> they were showing films, and I was one of the film judges, and they had a girl that got up there, and the first film was, um, I've been fat my whole life. Oh, no. And I lost 15 pounds. And I just think that I am a tough girl now, and 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 you know everybody's going yay. Yeah. So she yeah. said, Judge number one, he's like, Hey girl, you are beautiful, and you should stay beautiful. And everybody's like, Yeah. Woo. And I go, Hey, <laughs> hey, give it up for uh, fat white women, because it's courageous to put fat white women on camera. Give it up for a fat white girl on camera. Come on, fat white bitch. Oh, so Jesus Christ. So she started crying. <laughs> <laughs> of course she did. <laughs> So Tyra gave her the, don't listen to him, girl. And then they cut my mic off for the rest of the show. Wow. <laughs> oh, what I love to see that clip. They, I'm sure they burned it. Oh, you got to get great. to be friends with one of the editors and copy yeah. that. Yeah, is that how you guys work it? Yes. <laughs> so Tyra's doing all that for Sweeps Week. Uh, yeah. What else is on TV well, this week that interests you guys? And went to the Playboy uh, costume party. Okay. And she wore... Uh, her costume was like an 80s aerobicizer instructor. Yeah. Yeah. And people were wagering at the party whether vomit and tears come out of Lycra. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, uh, did you guys see that Chevy Chase is going to be on uh, Law & Order? A I, story ripped from the headlines. Yeah. I saw the... I saw the clip or the preview, whatever, and uh, very disturbing to see uh, Chevy Chase he, in that role. He's so bad yeah. at acting. He's we such a to, horrid actor that, clip, that he's we? trying to do the Mel Gibson thing is yeah, what they were got, working on he's here. He's got the drunk thing down. Yeah, he's got that down. <laughs> but then you combine that with the anti-Semitism, and then it's kind of like uh, starting up a, a 74 Nova again. <laughs> I think it it kind of just looked like a reality show to me. <laughs> yeah, that it, seems like Chevy just walking around his house, just yeah, yeah. blurting out uh, anti-Semitic uh, lines and being drunk. I, I, I guess this is a comeback of, of sorts. Well, I got to yeah. tell you, we've been fortunate Dramatic. enough to meet a lot of people because of what we do, and I got to tell you, the most pompous ass ever. Yeah. We were on the John. Which show were, were 
uh, Donny Deutsch. Which uh, awful show we're yeah, doing. Yeah, we, we get to do all the awful talk shows, although we finally got to do Letterman, which was cool. Yeah. But, but before yeah. that, it was John McEnroe. It was Donny Deutsch. Working, a, you're working the way up the ladder. Uh, our, Donny, our Donny Deutsch no. interview never aired. And uh, we were on the same show as Chevy Chase when he was wearing a pink sweater and we were in makeup together. And the guy just wouldn't even acknowledge there were anyone. Doesn't else. acknowledge anyone else is in the room. In, in the room. He couldn't get. You and remember you hear that, that from was... uh, even like you'll hmm. you'll hear that from six year olds. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> like, hate him. It was a fun ballroom and good candy, but that Chevy Chase, he's really full of himself. He couldn't get any friends for his roast. You, you, I heard about it, the Comedy Central roast. Not one person. Who meant anything to him? And really, in a, like in a, historically for us, like Bill Murray or right, right, whoever Jane Curtin, some of the, the people that have worked with him and something. Nothing. Beverly D'Angelo no one. couldn't get no her. One. They had Greg Giraldo roasting him. They, I'm like, why, yeah, why do they have people that don't know you roasting you? And it's because nobody. Oh my God, likes no one, no one likes him. Lisa Lampinelli was roasting. Or Michaels would have Oof. shown up. Yeah, no, nothing. No one. So what else there, Joel? Well, Courtney Love. What's also, the... speaking of Mel Gibson, was helped by Mel Gibson by he brought a drug counselor to her. Really? Now he, this is all in her new book, and it's got a rejection letter uh, that she received as a kid from the Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> and uh, I, the song goes like, M I C, see you in rehab, and uh, it, it, that didn't work at all. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tase Joel McHale. I just tased you. Dang it, Behave. We got that from the show, and uh, and now I know why. Thank you. <laughs> but you know, you see, you know what the thing is. You could say it on the show, and then you could put that little smirk on. You can't smirk on the radio. <laughs> yeah, and it'll be like the uh, it'll be like the Native American looking at the uh, trash. Uh, right, one single America. tear running down your face. All right, let me let me try this one. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now, and this is true. Ivanka Trump uh, is now dating Topher Grace, right? Really? Isn't that exciting? Mm. It's sad that I know Who's that. Who's Topher Grace? <laughs> yeah, thank they you. They were I'm... in Las Vegas, and apparently they were, very, they were canoodling, and they were very close. Oh. Upon hearing the news, Donald Trump was called Topher, the biggest, most lavish, spectacular, nerdy <laughs> indie film to ever bang my daughter. <laughs> That worked pretty well. That was very good. All right, this, what happened to this? I, I'm some sort of weird toastmaster. <laughs> you, got, you don't have anything on Madonna this week? Oh, well, uh, yes, of course. Uh, we have set up, uh, there's actually, we have whole new uh, graphics for her. We appeared on, uh, we appeared, they showed a clip of the soup on Dateline NBC two nights ago in showing how she is being vilified. And I'm not kidding. Really? So you, we were, we, the soup could not have been, I, I was watching it thinking, okay, we've got to watch the, uh, the interview. And then they showed a clip, and I uh, have never been more complimented in my life. Your show was being, was news. Yeah, they said, they cut to me saying how her check had cleared and they had her baby <laughs> shipped to her. All right, Joel. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're looking for the cheap Opie and Anthony plug. Yeah. Or, um... We're going to have the pests uh, attack you. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, we're sending a crew to you. All right, so oh, that would be nice. I might have to, this is how, it'll, we're going to literally have to buy bus tickets for these people. We can make our own video. but We, we got a handy cam. But we expect really? a, we no, expect no, some we, kind we, of Opie and Anthony really plug. It? Yeah, of do course it. we would. We're, we're looking for publicity. What, now, you know that uh, more, like 15 times more people listen to your show in one hour than watch eight episodes of our show. Now. I know, but but we even know that, it, you know, the goal is to be on TV. There's something about TV. You get a little more respect than doing this crap every day. Yeah, but everyone, <laughs> hey, man, if you that would be great. Uh, I, but you, it is E. You know that. You yeah. know that you're going to be hurting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It, yeah, it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's like you're going on the logo network. Oh, well, ooh. wow! Look, man, if you're into the logo <laughs> network, that's fine. Yeah, what's the logo network? It's the, uh, it's the gay network. Oh, 
How did you know? <laughs> Mr. Poof the Network. Uh, because I'm bisexual. Oh, oh, oh now it's out. Of, of course you have right. to watch that for uh, for material for uh, the soup, yeah. right, Joel? Yeah, yeah you, you logo, must. Logo, logo Network is one of our go-to. You must pull a lot of stuff from that network. <laughs> yeah, we pull a few off. <laughs> a few clips. Yeah, sure. I can only do about two an hour. Or pull a yeah. lot of stuff out of that network. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> See, on TV, I can point. <laughs> yeah, you a point, you could smirk, you could go, hum. <laughs> if it's not working, you go, hum, and move on to the next thing, and it looks cute. Make a big eye like, yeah, hum. And then we always feel slightly tired afterwards. Yeah. Hmm. All right, Joel. All right. Joel, uh, Congratulations when? Congratulations on getting Borat. Yeah, that was pretty cool, right? Yeah, what is that? What are the chances of him coming to the E Network? Ooh. Well, you know, if you gave us that uh, opportunity to, to congratulate you on the 103rd episode, you're not letting this go, are you? Up? We would have, uh, we would have uh, made something happen. Okay, we're sending a crew now. <laughs> God, you made me cry. You look at work. I'm crying. Oh, all right. No, he wouldn't come within five square miles. It's part of a court, uh, court thing. Oh, all right, Joel. Joel. We'll see you on the soup. When is that? This weekend. Uh, tonight at 10, and then it repeats 80, 80 times. 80 times. Yeah, I, I, you I just miss it. I, I, pick, I uh, watch it during one of the repeats. They're even sneaking it onto other channels now. Yep. Where they just shove it in, and all of a sudden, I was watching, what happened? I was watching CSI. Right. Now soup is on. All right, Joel, thank you. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just a matter of time before they cancel us. No, you're doing fine. That show's been on forever. It's an yeah, institution now. Yep. Institution, my friend. Now I'm stuck, actually. You're yeah, right. you pretty much are. All right. Thank you, guys, and thanks for helping me uh, lower your ratings this morning. No uh, problem. Thank you, Joel. You went rat to me. All right. <laughs> All right, Joel. Thank you. Bye-bye. There right. goes Joel McHale from Joel the McHale. Soup. Watch the soup. Carlos. You guys got Borat? Yeah, we got yeah. Borat. We had Borat. That is awesome. Yeah, Borat was pretty cool, man. I heard some of it. It was Funny stuff I've heard, man. Yeah, I think his movie might actually do well. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a winner. I'm not familiar with like how Mexicans do. Is this sarcasm or is he, is he being serious? <laughs> you're not. I'm not familiar, not familiar with, with, with Mexican Panamanian sarcasm. You know, sarcasm. I'm not sure. Panamanian sarcasm. uncircumcised sarcasm. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, this is Carlos Mencia. Yeah, Patrice, see, you're the one that gets me in trouble. <laughs> I'm not positively... And everybody goes, oh, Carlos went out and said he's made his Mexican character after Borat. <laughs> Did you hear Carlos a Mexican character? <laughs> that German sure knows how to be a beater. What's wrong with you, Patrice? No, I can't forget. Carlos is really from Kazakhstan. <laughs> he's not even Mexican. The guy's from Kazakhstan. Carlos is... <laughs> his name is Borat. Borat Mansiovich. <laughs> yeah, we had a great morning, man. Borat just killed it. I know. I was not being sarcastic. All right, let me just check it. And then Joel, uh, you know, did what he did. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Phone-ins are just the worst. Their phone should be illegal in the business, man. They really are. I, 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 I just can't. I can't you, you can never have the upper hand in a phoner. Oh. Like when you guys call into a show, you just, you know, because we're all insecure asses. You're on the phone by yourself wondering if they're enjoying what you're saying. You know they're looking at each other like, oh. Whoa. Here's every phone call. Back goes Griffey looking up, and it's out of here. Or is it? No, it's all for wall. My mistake. <laughs> it's almost there. You think it's I I, I no. He caught oh, it. I like the band phone calls with the it just oh I can't do them. Yeah. Just, Even that wasn't uh bad in terms of bad phone calls. What's we've we've one? had some oh. that were just the worst. I've been bad phone calls. I've been horrible waking up. Yeah, but you know, see, even that though, you go, ah, this sucks. I'm getting out of here. I'm, I, you'll just hang up on us. Yeah. You know, you'll see something's not working. It's like, ah, I'm out of here. Goodbye. Goodbye. Like the people that are on the phone though, and and they're they don't know the show. They've never been on the show. Oh, oh, can those get brutal? So, Carlos. Uh, Carlos. Oh, I'm sorry, we're talking again? Not too much pressure on you. Yeah, we're talking. We're actually got to wrap up here, but... Um... No, go ahead, guys. This show is kicking so much ass. 
I just wanted everybody to know that I'm going to be at the Beacon this weekend, and we just released. The shows are sold out. We released like 200 tickets. Oh, so nice. I don't, want to know. I don't want to be the guy that ruined the show. But I just want you to know, next time I call in, I'm going to do my impression of a Panamanian. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, Panamanian sarcasm. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> so is the Philly show uh, sold out? Yeah, the Philly show is sold out. We were uh, that's tonight, yesterday. Tower Theater. In Boston, so it's, it's all right. Fun. So you get tickets tomorrow night here in New York at the Beacon Theater. Yeah. All right, right on, man. All right, Carlos, thank you so much. No, nah, I love you guys. The show's so kicking ass, man. And I was not being sarcastic, you fat black dude. <laughs> 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 I just didn't know. Dude, it's hard to tell sometimes. Yeah, Carlos is like a nice guy now. I forgot. <laughs> Carlos was angry before the mind of Mencia. In my mind, home. Yeah, what do you got? Like, uh, what are you on the tenth season of that? <laughs> it's been on forever. Ten seasons. <laughs> uh, it's been on when it was the Hot Network. It won't go off. <laughs> the Daily Show, Colbert, and 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 he's batting he's batting cleanup just like every <laughs> other Puerto Rican. <laughs> he's running out of uh, minorities to make fun of, so now he's making fun of space aliens. <laughs> <laughs> he's the Albert Pujols of Comedy Central. <laughs> yeah. Carlos, like, what about these Eskimos? Hey. What What's with these rubbing noses, man? <laughs> <laughs> you ever see these people in Bangladesh? What is with these? <laughs> like, what happened? What is with the Mongolians? <laughs> <laughs> what are they, Chinese? <laughs> <laughs> We're going <laughs> to... Man on the street in Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> They're running out of races. <laughs> God damn. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I don't know what I think. All right. <laughs> Hold back. <laughs> yeah, next Colbert report. <laughs> next Colbert. <laughs> All right, Carlos. Love you guys. Love the show, man. All right, thank you. Thank you, man. Carlos, take it easy, Carlos. Carlos. See ya. The uh, Beacon, they just released more seats. And that's how we end today. Uh, Patrice, thank you so much. You're welcome, Puddin. you got to do another hour and a half with us. I'm, Two hours. I'm All right, cool. Wait, you got a plug where you're going to be? Huh? Bananas, Hasbrook Heights, when? Tonight and, and tomorrow, my pal Joseph for? T. Curry is doing his comedy. Very cool. And the headline in the middle. Okay. Joey Cola. Hey. Be over there at XM. Trees, we plug in anything over here? Yes, November something or another. I'm at uh, another awful plug from it, it's 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 November 17th. How about you write this crap down? December 19th. I'm at Helium in Philly. I'm in Philly. Just go helium. write it on your Just hand go. or something before Just you come in. Com at Helium Comics. Ah, ah, oh, you can't taste Patrice. <laughs> Look, see, he doesn't go down. He doesn't go down. You know how we are. See, he's still yeah. talking. They're, they're resistant. We're like running. Ah, 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 no, but look, see, he's still up. He's still up. <laughs> what the hell is it gonna take? November, then I, November seventeenth and eighteenth at Helium in Philly. You think? It's something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We try to make the listeners not work so hard. Oh, okay, November seventeenth, eighteenth at Helium Comedy Club. You're positive? There you go. I'm. Cause damn sure. <laughs> damn sure. All right, because your stand-up is beyond amazing. I want Thank people you. to go see you at the Helium. I don't think... In Philly. And you're not trying to kiss my unus. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to see you in Philly. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Oh, hey. I said that last time, didn't I? <laughs> I did. Ah, <laughs> oh, let me tase myself. Ah! Oh, Opie goes down. Look at that. Oh, that had to hurt. I did say I was going to see you at Stand Up New York, which is like five blocks from my house, and I never made it. Liar, liar, pants on fire. All right, listen, if you're not joining us over at XM Satellite Radio, have yourself a great weekend. Yes, we'll see you over there. There we go. Yeah. Holy shit, it's cold. <laughs> I, I can I tell you out right the now. I coat today. Yeah, you got the. Is that the the new one you were talking about? No, no, I got it. Oh. I got one that's gonna make yours look silly. That's impossible. This big, is the silliest coat ever. Big hood and everything. It's nice and warm though. No, actually, all that counts. Actually, now that I look at yours, yours. No mine's gonna, ridiculous. Yeah, no one's gonna top that. One. People laugh at mine. Yet I'm warm. I'm a little worried about Andrew. I'm starting to think he didn't uh, appreciate the cake stomping. We have I, seen I just would like to see him one time, just so we can like feel better about ourselves. Feel better about ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want him. 
I don't want to think like he died in the cold thinking, they smashed my cake. Yeah, well. I was, treat yourself. Treat yourself. As he just dies in a gutter of the cold. That video moving to the top of the Opie and Anthony YouTube videos, by the way. Top of the charts. It's in the top five. Is it? Yeah, the top five. Uh, number one is Bill Burr taking on the Philly audience. I earned that cake. That has like 130,000 hits. Yeah. Then it's uh, us on Sean Hannity. Really? Then these are the top five. I'm trying to remember now. Then it's uh, keep oh, looking. then it's the, uh, our TV commercial that Phil Mushnick doesn't like. Phil Mushdick. And then it's uh, what's her name? That actress. Oh, her. Who? What happened to the nigga Nazi challenge, you motherfucker? Yeah, that's a biggie. That's moving up the charts, but it's uh, not in the top five yet. Fuck that. That was a big no, one. Wh who's the actress, Aunt? She was laughing her ass off and fell off her oh, chair. Oh, Mila Jovovich. Yeah, she's Hunting one of Mila she's Jovovich. She's one of our top Opie and Anthony videos on YouTube. And then finally, the uh, cake stomping uh, is Hello. Number five. How the fuck does that beat the nigga Nazi challenge? How are you, sir? Hello. <clears throat> what, why, what, what does the hat stand for? No sweat. Take it easy. Take it easy. I like that. Ah, live longer. Where are you off to? I'm off to. He's uh, off to the meeting gym. of the elders Your gym? of Zion. Yeah. That's where I'm going, right there. The elders of Zion. He's Come. off to make the rules on the end of the earth, goddamn <laughs> Jew. <laughs> <laughs> old motherfucker. I was just trying to have a nice conversation with him, Patrice. Man, fuck that old bitch. Look at Patrice. Fuck that nigga. <laughs> talking to old Jews. Don't we talk enough? Look at this sissy. Balls hanging out. <laughs> oh, look at. Wow. That's right. Good jogging. Panties will do nice. <laughs> I love the people. And What's I up, babe? You got What I, you got? I used to be a big-time runner, but I never did what that. You got? Had no. a jogging what you got? place Some... at the red lights. You yeah, you have to stop and what keep jogging. What you got? Jogging. Some bootleg purses up in that motherfucker? Let's talk what to you, this lady. What, what you got? What you got? What you do? Got Yo, some hats you in there got? your daughter made? What kind of hats? What you got? Uh, what movies you got in there? What I you got? Borat? What you got? I don't know. Borat. I don't know. What you, Cambodian? Can, can you? Oh, what, what do you guys got? What are you selling today? Mm. Everything. Anything, anything you can see, we sell. I see hats. I see scarves. You got Keep You got the blanket. new Borat movie? Sir, we're no, free. No, we don't sell no movies. Can I look in your bag? I'm not allowed to go in. No, I'm not allowed, I'm not allowed to go in that bag? No. What's no. going to happen if I go in that You're bag? He's going to hit you with that cane. That's a gun. That's a cane. I'll knife. get arrested. That's yes, right. How yes. am I going to get arrested? All I gotta do is just call the name. Hold on, the skipper from Gilligan's Island. Before what's you get the on? phone out of your pocket, I'm gone. He's trying to get the lowdown from John Candy's cousin, Freddie Candy. <laughs> Boop, little buddy. Boop. 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 Hey, he's not watching his stuff anymore. Let's hey, wheel, this, wheel this crap away. Let's go. Really go. Take it with us. Yo, hat man. Take it with sister. us. What's up, my beautiful black princess? Delicious. I need uh, to get me one? and my girl a girlfriend. This gotta stop. Fat boy Slim. What's up? <laughs> there you go. Hey, how you doing? How are Not you? you? How will you never be fucked? Uh, look at the sister. She has to ride the bus. Uh, That's outrageous. At least okay. you can sit in one of the front seats I'm not though in this day real. and age. <laughs> That's right. Oh, That's delicious. nice. There you go. That's right. She doesn't have to get all that exercise, walk into the back of the bus. <clears throat> Hello, ladies. Look at this. What are you doing all later? All bundled up. Going to La Trapeze yeah. after this. Yeah? A little swinging. Yeah? With old seven chins. Uh-oh. Bob? Going to the airport, right? That's me. Okay. That's Borat? <laughs> I'm Bob. I go to airport. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was from Islam uh, letters. That's seven seven seven. I right. thought that's some letters from fucking Iraq. Ah. Uh, it's in the car. Go, uh, oh God. I hope. Where we? Where, where? What airport? I hope this guy's a serial killer. Oh. Which, what airport? Opie and I go. Yeah, Patrice. that's me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I gotta go to. Uh, oh. I gotta go to uh, LaGuardia. It's in a car. What was it? Uh, Newark, Newark. Sorry, Newark, right? Was it JFK? Teterboro? Newark. Hey, if I didn't know Big A, I just I wouldn't want to know. Look at creepy Big A. Gibbs. Down there. 
My name is uh, Gibbs. Let's see how this right? plays is out. Right? Is that what it is, Gibbs? Yeah, that's what it is, Gibbs. And it says the airport, right? Yeah, which one did they have for me? JFK, yeah. Where I'm going out of uh, uh, American Airlines? Yeah, JFK. Okay. How the fuck did they Let's go, bro. fly planes? Oh He's taking off with Anthony. <laughs> He's taking off with Anthony. Smart, yeah. yeah. What's that, sir? You think they didn't have help from the government hijacking planes? Look at them. What's that? Oh, uh, it's gonna, it's taken care of, right? Let's see. Uh, I think it's all paid for, right? Uh, you don't see this no? on the radio. It's not paid for? He's about as dumb as they All food. right, then stop. You don't see this on the radio, I but... I can't take the goddamn uh, ride, then, if I got to pay for it. I thought it was free, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony just got a free ride, XM. <laughs> I wanted me to pay for it. Yeah, I just made him drive me. <laughs> ah, it's nice and warm. He is pissed. <laughs> Is but he gave Gibbs away all the cat? info. He goes, who, Gibbs? I'm like, yeah, Gibbs. Whatever. He's now backing up on 57th Street. Uh, screw him. All right, we're going right in today. Yeah, it's too cold. Sorry. It was nice and warm in that limo, though. Was it? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Oh, why don't we have this over there? Lyrics and children's songs. Mm. Got a lot of stuff to do still today. Danny uh, was laughing his ass off in the elevator about the dumps. Just reading the dumps. Oh, really? That uh, Borat had. Oh, good. Let's oh, do that. It was so funny. Were there a lot of dumps? Yeah, yeah there were seven of them. That blows. Anytime it was like man's anus. <laughs> Anytime it's talking about the man's anus. Yeah, but they should just let that go. I know they don't. I would love to get a fine because uh, man's anus anus was said on the radio. And the goose liver part. Give a copy to the dump report to Anthony. Yeah. God damn it. That's what it happened. Is about FM Keep radio. the motherfucking cop asking a nigga for money <laughs> for the for my fucking fruit cup. No, no, here. Keith. And no. Fuck that. Ah, we'll pay for it. No, I got to go to the bank. Here, here. Don't, don't take his fruit cup. Please don't take his money. I Yo, don't take your money. Here, here. The fuck's up with you, copper? Motherfucking police oh, robbed yeah, me for my motherfucking drugs. Now you gonna rob me for my fruit cup money, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I don't try the chicken gumbo. I don't eat veal. Why? No? Is it a spiritual thing? Because of thing? the way they make the poor little you are suffer. Shit. You are shitting me, right? I d I made my choice years ago. Veal is delicious. And yeah. tender, How about on my? But I won't. There you go. I won't fucking eat. You're it. shitting me, right? I don't eat veal. What the fuck is the difference between that and a stupid little chicken who's stuck in a cage his whole life? Because so chicken have his head cut off. Chickens they live a chickeny life. They run around and just eat shit, and they just chick all chicken. What up. the fuck does a veal do? A veal, they make them stand. You know what they make? I know them what do. they make them do, but and I don't, I don't like it. I saw it. You know what it is? Here's my problem. Mm. If I see the situation. I'll have to, if I if they show a documentary of how of KFC uh, make you know makes the chickens take their clothes off and they, <laughs> they yeah like in the cartoons and they and they stand in I keep my feathers numbered for just <laughs> such an occasion. I say <laughs> just such an occasion. Come here, boy. I'll teach you how to play baseball. It ain't like that. They're <laughs> fucking jolting them with electric probes up their assholes and, and if, they're ripping their heads off with big machines. And if I see it, I won't eat chicken. That's why I can't watch it because I won't. eat Anything. So you made the mistake of watching the Veal show. And what I the watched, fuck was it? The Veal yeah. show on the Discovery? No, it, it, it used to be a show called. <laughs> well, it used to be the a Beale show, show. Called, on called um they, those amazing animals. Those uh, that's in, it, it came on after that's incredible. Yep, years ago. I remember that. And they and they would from time to time before when they actually had a heart, they would show fucked up shit about animals. Like I saw the baby seal cl clubbing, and it just destroyed me at the time. And what's the, what's the, the name of that club? Uh, 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 you saw baby seal clubbing? Club, Damn it. club head bus. <laughs> club, Little P. Diddy club, seal. Club, club eyes pop out the head. You know, it was just sad. And the saddest thing was the, the mother seals were crying. And then at the next week, they showed how they make veal. And it was just like, I, here it is. I'm, I'm not trying to be a, a, a fucking fag. I'm just saying. Doing a good I job looked at, at it. I looked at the fucking, I looked at the calf, right? Yeah. For, for it to live its entire life 
to be my food. Like they make it stand still so it gets mushy. And just when it's, it has no more muscle to stand up itself and falls down on the ground from just mushy muscles, Perfect. they fucking kill it so that Perfect. I can have motherfucking veal hootie hootie. Whatever veal the fuck. chops. Not a veal cacciatore and no. uh, blah, blah, blah. parmesan. And, and, and I don't, and, and I, it fucked me up as a kid. Yeah. So I just never ate it. So every time they try to show me what they do to food, I turn. Yeah. Anytime it's like, we have an expose on what they do with ham. I'm like, fuck, nigga. I don't want to stop eating ham. So I'm t- I turn. You know? You turn I just don't real. think I on swine. Because if they say, they say, here, piggy, piggy, and they go, and the pig goes in the room, and then he looks around and goes, oh, no. And then they shoot him in yeah. the back of the head, oh. and then another pig goes, slams the phone down. Fuck <laughs> 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 hey, that pig, nothing we can do. Yeah, nothing we can do about <laughs> nothing it. Nothing we can do about that pig. <laughs> and couldn't do nothing. <laughs> uh, how about lobster? Because you always, you know, I always feel better about how well, yeah, they, put in a, a I, I do, they put them in I a pot. They put them in a pot like boiling. This. I used to do a bit about this. Uh, sorry. Crabs. Uh, is that uh, about, because I'm a real animal lover, but I eat meat and stuff. I wear leather and things like that. But... God made it so that I can eat it. I'm glad our f- the food comes killed and murdered. Yeah. Because if I had to murder my own food, mm-hmm. if I had to kill a cow or kill a chicken, you be the, the side thing of is, a human. God, God, <laughs> motherfucker, put fish here <laughs> to kill because fish don't have any eyebrows. <laughs> any animal without eyebrows that can't like make the face like if you were stabbing a motherfucker right yeah. with a knife and he didn't have eyebrows. <laughs> And he was just looking at you as you're stabbing him, and it's hurting, but he can't, he don't have no voice, and he ain't got no eyebrows. So you're killing him, and he's like, this is killing me. Like, you take a fish out the ocean, immediately it's suffocating to death. Yeah. So... It, it, it can't breathe. It got a hook in his mouth, and then you just c- cut it up till it dies. But he doesn't look any different than he did when he was swimming. Alive and dead fish look the same. Yeah. And and you go and you just go. Okay, I'll kill a fish. Lobster. You take it as living, like yeah. hey, and then you put it in, and it turns red. But during that time, you're fucking boiling it to death, <laughs> <laughs> and it's fucking sad. It's yeah. sad. You know what I think about it. But we are. Uh, see, the, the, the thing is. I, I call it this. We're top of the fucking food chain. We're the big man We're on campus. We're not top of the fucking food on chain. On this planet. We're not top big of the food chain, Mr. Campus. Got a Gun, Mr. Fucking... Exactly. We were wait, able wait. to fashion okay, a tool, ready? a simple tool. You're fucking not the top of the food chain. I'm going to tell you why. Because you have to go to where something else is the top of the food chain where it's at. And and with a gun and with yeah. with, with a knife or whatever you do, you 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 you, That's you get target. Why don't you get in the ocean yeah. and just... Fucking sit there and wade no. in the pool, man. In a shark cage tank. with a fucking spear gun. Exactly. That's but, what I'm saying. But, You're but not but top of the fucking we pool. are because of our fucking yeah. brains. You're not. We're do not you top. Think, do you think if a lion could fucking lean up against a tree and hide and go and then go ding, 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 ding and tiptoe <laughs> out, <laughs> tap you on the shoulder and fucking rip your head you off? You don't think it does? He's, no, he's thinking. Look, at, I saw a he's fucking thinking lion brain. last night Look. about a killer alligator in India. Kill 200 motherfuckers. It's almost like a cartoon. because Indians are stupid when it comes to alligators. <laughs> They're fucking down by the river washing their clothes. The same alligators killed 20 people in the same That's spot. That's what I'm saying. Who's they don't get a fucking Maytag, you savage. Who, they look at them like naked we look at dogs. I'm fucking butt naked. The day it's I, like you are, we're, we're probably... I'll give sick. the alligator credit when he jumps out of my fucking Maytag and bites my head off while I'm washing my clothes. Because I ain't going down to the river oh, and washing my fucking clothes. Oh, if he comes and knocks on the door and says, hey, Timmy sent me. Hey, yeah. hey, UPS. Yeah. Hey, what's happening, man? Exactly. And they bite your head off. And let's go back to your example, example the, the shark thing. thing. T- take the shark out of the water, then what? Yeah. Let's see a shark get on what? a city bus. Take my what? ass. Would you say that? That's why I say take us out go? of this fucking room. But why would we go in the water? Read what and we put saying. you in a scorpion pit. We can go in I... into the water and breathe That's and right. kill things in the water. In the fucking water we can do that. We can survive we divide, in the water. We, we right. can't survive in the water. Did you see open water? That's what we. That's what happens to us in the water. Well, it's a limited time, but we, we can do it. We have boats. And we, look at the fact that we, we have this thing called technology makes it all make sense. The fact that we believe in 
our own hype that we're special and shit, but for the fact that animals can't. But one day, I'm gonna tell you, I can't wait till one day aliens come down and they fly and they and they stop yep. and we're begging for our lives and all the alien here is. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> let me like, tell you something. I got a family. Please don't kill me, please, sir. And you go, roo, roo. and he goes, I'm gonna just shoot this piece of shit right in his head. And you're like, yeah, now, I now I'm agreeing with you a hundred percent, and you've just made my fucking point. Thank you. What? You know why? Why? Because until that point, I'm going to be the motherfucker that goes, what? What? I'm eating everything. Why? This fine. Because, but that's why because when I'm the glad. aliens come, we're going to be sitting there going, arr, 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 I'm glad looking like idiots. Food, I'm glad there's motherfuckers like you who can murder food. <laughs> I don't you know I, I don't understand. I can't kill it. I can't Anything kill that it. Looks right. at you, I'll eat it, but I can't kill right. it. I've n I could not do it. I can't even kick. I couldn't kick a dog. It's it's just different. Well, I, I could kick a that's human. That's Opie's job. Hey, that was a legend. <laughs> I could kick a human, but no it's just. Proof. I mean, I, I hate to say it. I mean, really, we were talking about King Kong a long time. I watched. I finally got on DVD, and I just kept. Oh no. I kept fast forwarding it, and I just. It, 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 I, I, I was close. Did you cry? I was close. At the end of King Kong. The motherfucker just was just, and what, Too expressive. What, what made it fucked up is that she was like, don't kill him. Yeah. They were in love, nigga. Ain't that and, but the, up? but the, it was scenes in that movie where he was doing real guy shit. He finished fighting the, the Tyrannosaurus. He's like, Whew, and he just looked at it like, you fucking cunt. <laughs> and he just started walking. And, and she's like, wait, baby. He, yeah, bitch, get on my shoulder. And he just ignored her. And, and then she started doing a little dance. She's like, look at this hot little piece of ass. He's like, bitch, move. I'm looking at the sun. It ain't all about you, ho. And it's like, I was like, King Kong, nigga. I, I fell in love with the motherfucker. And then, and she fell in love because he, he really was like, that's how, he was showing how to get a bitch. He fucked, he was breathing and she, and he was like, and he's like looking at him like, I'm that monster, huh? I'm that motherfucker that's just ooga booga, beating, beating my chest and everything, right? I'm eating white women and all that, right? And now it's all, and then he just started running. Yeah. That, it, it, I was like, this is fucking amazing what they did with this wasn't animal. That, and then right? he went on the top of the Empire State Building, dude, and took a fat one for nothing. I couldn't. I, I was. I was upset. Wasn't it that hurt. bad? I love That's, when human beings uh, die in movies, man. That's why I love in my monster movies. I need the monster to be somebody that, it, it, like the Godzilla. I hated that that the new Godzilla. Yeah. Cause you fell for it. It had babies. It got stuck in a bridge and it just wanted to live. <laughs> it's like make my motherfucking monsters mindless assholes, like <laughs> like the one that like Harry Harryhausen used to make the the Kraken where he stop animation. Oh yeah, or yeah. the monster from Two Thousand Dubs that look at or the gargantuas that look at a woman and go, mmm, that looks delicious. Chomp and spit her out. No emotion. No, no emotion. You don't know where they came from. You don't know why they're like An they evil are. Evil monster. That's it. No family. The original yeah, no Godzilla. No family. Come no the, friends. No nothing. Kill people. That's Kill it. people. You understand? The original King Kong, just that big eyes and them big teeth. Yeah. And he, and he goes, I'm going to kill everybody except for this white woman. <laughs> but the other King Kong, like the new one, not the 76, I felt bad for the 76 King Kong. Uh, <laughs> come on. Motherfucker had feelings. <laughs> and then the new King Kong, <laughs> did you see when he they choked him? He was choking yeah. with the gas. The old King Kong, <laughs> and the eyes blinked slow, and then he fell. Because it's like, yeah, get that evil King. The other... 76 King Kong. Yeah. Why did they have to show him on the way to his death in the bottom of the boat, sitting there like a nigga in, in lockdown <laughs> I'm with, his, with his knee with his knee up? His one knee was up yeah. and one leg was pointing straight and the other ha hand was on his leg. He was sitting there in the bottom like. of the boat and Jessica Lang, he looked at him and he looked at her like, bitch, why you do this, man? I wasn't going to hurt you. And she dropped her scarf and he caught it. And smelt it, and she fucking fell in there. He caught her, kept the stuff, smelt it, let her fucking go. And then that's when that's when that bitch realized, wow, this motherfucker is not no mindless animal. The, this one, they stepped it up even another notch. They went, yeah, he's crazy choking like dog. I'm only trying to get her. We love each other. And so the bitch comes back like I ain't supposed to. 
I ain't supposed to be in love with this animal. This is no, nah, nah, I'm in love with you, you goofy, big nosed Jew. What's the, uh, the pianist? I have to be in love with the pianist. No, bitch, you in love with me. I'm fighting monsters. What's this faggot doing? Yeah. He ain't doing shit. I'm killing Tyrannosaurus Rexes. I'm motherfucking killing giant snakes, birds. I'm falling and shit. You know, there's a other, lot of other dead bitches that couldn't, that didn't keep my attention. And 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 I and I introduce you to sunshine. I introduce you to all type of shit. You had no excitement in your life till you fuck with me. And this is what you do to me. <laughs> Look at the emotion. That's exactly what it was I like. I fucking yeah. hated that shit. My God. You make make my a monsters, damn good point. I make yeah. my monster. I don't want to see Freddy Krueger. Like the fact that he was touched by, if he has a scene where, I'm sorry, I, I, I come in your dreams, man. I, yeah. They burn me up and I, I, I had an addiction that I couldn't control. Nigga! <laughs> <laughs> Put your, your glove knife on and fucking kill a motherfucker. I want to hear your fucking problems. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, motherfucker. I don't want Jason going, look, I drowned. They killed my mama. What would you do? Right. <laughs> <laughs> they killed my mama. What would you do? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Stupid camp kids weren't looking, weren't watching <laughs> out for me. I, I drowned. I drowned. I was sitting there. I was just in the lake. and She chopped my mama's head off, man. <laughs> Yeah. What what would you do? And you go, you know what, Jason? Go do your thing, man. Go do You're your right. thing. I, I don't need that motionless. shit. I don't need that. Like Frankenstein. I don't need that. I don't need you feeling for a motherfucker, man. I like the way, though, you, Frankenstein, the original one, with the girl. The girl, like, gave him the flower and shit, but then he winds up put snapping her neck and throwing her down the well or and something. And that was sad. I felt like that in my life. What, that you want to throw a little no, girl down no, the well? No, no, no. That you just, he didn't know. She threw, what she did was throw like a doll or something in the water. And he was like, yay. <laughs> and I've done that before. I've like seen, I just wanted to do the right thing. Like we used to, back in the day, used to turn on the fire hydrants and shit. So the fire hydrant water would <laughs> spray out. So I see one dude, this dude named, uh, this dude named, uh, Tony. He's, he would do anything to a girl. And like she, it would just end up fun. And everybody would be laughing at the end. Oh, and so shit. I tried to do it, and the, and the, I took a girl, he, he put her in front of the fire hydrant oh, hole, no. but he knew how to do it. I didn't know how to do it. I just went, I'm copying, I'm getting ready to throw a little girl in the water, and I take her, and I grab her by her arms before she could ever say stop. I'm, her face is in the fire hydrant water. <laughs> And she's choking, and I'm, and I let her go, and she flops down in front of the hydrant, with the hydrant is spraying over her, and some of the water's falling in her face, and I just ended hydrant day, because this bitch almost drowned. <laughs> you fucked it up. I ended hydrant day. <laughs> hydrant day. And everybody, thank you, sir. Everybody's chasing me around. You know what I'm saying? That's why um, I, I got those. I got certain feelings. I was always that awkward motherfucker. And, and you know, it takes you back. It takes you back yeah. being awkward, man. With shit, just, uh oh, I'm the nigga. I'm King Kong. I just wanna. And now it's like your brother and his all his <laughs> friends are coming with coming to jump me because I just wanted to grab your ass and play. Yeah. But you wasn't playing like that. You know. <laughs> nah, I, I agree with you. <laughs> But veal is tasty. Yeah. All I think about is those little eyes not uh, blinking. Hey, yeah. uh, Matt in Jersey. What's up, Matt? What's up, guys? You're hey, calling in. Patrice, you're such a fucking pussy. <laughs> man, look, man, have a heart, would you? You are such a pussy, man. <laughs> hey, you are a stereotypical black male. You know that? <laughs> Why? You are scared of water, and you love you some chicken. I, you are a fucking pussy. I love chicken, but, you know, if I uh, saw a chicken being murdered, I'd, yeah, I'd probably then you would wouldn't. Change your mind. I, I would change how I eat Sure. It. John in Tennessee, what's up? Hey, what's going on, boys? Hey. Hey, Pat Patrice, well, you would rather hire your hire a hitman to do your killing for you. I'd rather watch Bambi step out in the woods, blow his lungs out, and then rip his guts out, take him home, and eat him. Well, because you're a coward, man. What? First of all, you said coward, Bambi. Coward. You didn't you're say the, you didn't say no, the the fucking you didn't say the Yeti yeah. motherfucker. You didn't say the abominable <laughs> snowman. You didn't say I'm gonna hunt the fucking the the stingray that killed the crocodile hunter. You fucking fag. You said Bambi. 
I said, I don't. I'll go after a bear. I'll go after a bear. Oh, I'll shut the fuck up. Now change your With animals. your bare hands. You said Bambi oh, first because it's cute and it's and it's innocent and you and and it is a cowardice act. Go after something that can fight you back and then fight it on its own terms. If you fucking nasty like that. Well, that's why we're Kill in the food chain. We yeah. got the minds to build the machines. To build can, the machines. Do that. But you do but have to But we talk about nature, man. Thing. Let me tell you something. I can't hunt. I'm not a hunter. I love guns. I love shooting. I love target shooting. I can't hunt. I'm not a hunter. I always felt bad after I shot something. Even though we were, you know, killing it and, and eating it or whatever. But it's like, you kind of go like, eh, kind of feel like I took a life and, you know, you, you feel bad about it. But 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 wrap up any piece of fucking meat. <clears throat> I'll eat it. I'm the same way. I've eaten ostrich meat, and ostriches have a personality. A big little a, they, they head on the end of that stick neck. What do you mean they have a real personality? Like they, they, they have animals. like big eyelashes. That's like eating a koala sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that. They're nice animals and shit. They 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 give something. A koala <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> koala are like things that you just go, hey man, how are you? But yeah. here's the thing. Here's why hunting deer. And is is such a faggot thing. I'm gonna tell you why. All right, a lot of people are gonna disagree. Deer have no natural predators, so they stand there, and the only thing that keeps them moving is because they're they're just a little bit nervous about anything. Don't like bears. But no, no. Don't uh, they don't they a bear might, a bear might eat it. A mountain but like lion. an antelope, a, a lion is an antelope's natural predator. It's looking out for a fucking lion, an antelope. Yeah. The reason you ever see those Serengeti things with a with a yak or whatever the the the, the wildebeest, yeah. they go down to the fucking lake or whatever, and the motherfucking alligator comes and chews one, brings oh, it in, yeah. and the other ones back up for a second and then go, all right, nigga, I'm gonna get some more water. <laughs> That's because those creatures don't have natural enemies, natural predators. <laughs> That's why deer get hit in the street. They don't know not to go in the fucking street and get hit. So when when they're drinking and some fucking asshole with a reindeer hat and a and a reindeer whistle, and the reindeer's like, what, uh, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> Shoots him in the head and you carrying around like, unga bunga, I am the caveman. You fucking faggots. Why don't you run up on an elk and try to choke him with your bare hands and sneak up on him, sneak up on him like a fucking, like, like a soprano with some wire and go behind a fucking antelope naked you mu with, a, with a grass skirt. Kill him like Carlo, you gotta get him, get him in the car first. <laughs> That's the toughest part. Get him in the front seat of the old fucking Chevy. Hey, Elk, just don't lie to me. Just don't say you right. didn't know. Get out of the family business. <laughs> Let's go to Alex. Take you to Vegas. Alex, Alex. gotta pay a toll. <laughs> Alex from Miami. <laughs> Elk at the toll booth. <laughs> Alex. What the fuck? Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey. Hey, we wanna come upstairs? Oh, you did the walk over today? Uh, I, I, I took the stupid pass over and I didn't make it in time. I just flew down from Miami. I just want to see, you know, thank you. Well, see the studio. Oh, I, with you I just flew from Miami. My uh, arms are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Someone get Alex and bring him upstairs. Bring All right, stay there, Alex. Upstairs. <laughs> Let's uh, say hi to Ben. What's up, Ben? Ah. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, Patrice, let me overanalyze this for you for just one second. Go ahead. Okay, now you... Stole my deep deal because you saw what happened to him. Maybe and, and wait, wait. Let me let me preface this though. Okay. <clears throat> it's not that I'm I'm telling motherfuckers not to eat veal. It's because yeah. I saw how they ate veal, and it it affected me. It's a personal oh, decision. Oh, I understand that. It is well, all it just affected reason. me. That's all. Personal maybe, choice. Maybe I'm not that's preaching. The same you sympathize with King. Maybe he reminds you of your dad. Maybe he, in the 60s, your dad maybe crossed the line. I never met my dad, you fucking cocksucker. <laughs> so, Dr. Phil Fuckface. Yeah, look at him. Yeah, Mr. I, psychoanalyzing I never, I never met my dad. If anything, maybe King Kong might re represent me in a, in, a, in a way that maybe I f might feel that way in, in, in white society. In, in, in this society, I might well, feel that way. you know what that, that whole movie was about. Come of course, on, it's a nigga. Real here. And, 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 and that's the sad thing, is that I wish it had a stayed the 1933 version where it's just a mindless motherfucker. The the way that white people back then portrayed a nigga, just a big eyed, uh, eating motherfuckers, instead of what it would turn. This, the newest movie was more like a black man than the first movie. The yeah. first movie was Monster. This one I had, I'm not so supposed to identify with. Too. Yes. That's what it is because she, they had her so in love. She, and in the end, if you watch the new one, in the end, she never goes to uh, uh, the pianist no. and goes, I love you. And she never screamed for his help. 
she only tried to save the fucking monkey. Yep. It, 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 so I, it, I identify with, you know, not being understood. A big silly motherfucker growing up. I was yeah, a there big wasn't, silly motherfucker. There was an outtake from the, uh, the first one. Oh boy, here we go. Twas beauty killed the nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and then they decided to change it just to leave it a little more, uh, you know, obscure. <laughs> than to make it that obvious. <laughs> yeah. You don't think that that choking scene was Ro uh, 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 Rodney King when they throw the thing <laughs> and he's choking and they just keep throwing shit? Or, or he, he's a... <laughs> I'm Rodney surprised they didn't shove a plunger in King Kong's ass, a giant plunger, <laughs> while he was chained up. <laughs> I'm surprised. Wait a minute. If you count how many times the plane shot him, uh, 41 times. 41 times. 41 <laughs> times. Hey, hey, he did pull out his wallet, and it looked like a gun. <laughs> swear to God. All right, let's go. Let's do the dumps for today. Ah, the dumps. And then, hold on. I want to make sure this guy's here when we get back. Steve. Steve. Hey, that's Steve. Steve from Florida. Steve, we'll go, Florida. We're going to you next, so stay there. All right. Put yeah, him try to get that hole. guy. Make sure he's, he's there. All right. The dumps for today. Yes. Uh, well, it's 7.20 a.m. Hooking up electrodes to a woman's vagina. See, we know. See, we just knew, Patrice. Yeah. Patrice O'Neill talking about the Paul R. Nelson uh, commercial. At uh, 7.57, my anus hang loose like a dog's mouth. <laughs> Borat talking about going to the bathroom. Bang, bang, bang in the anus of another man. Borat. Fill anus with goose liver so there's no tearing. <laughs> Borat. She is tight like a man's anus. <laughs> Borat describing his prostitute sister. Tit. Borat. Dog style. Borat. Which didn't make sense in anything, the context or, no, or anything. He was, he was talking about a real gone. dog, but... Yeah, what are you gonna do? And uh eight fifteen. I have never made romance inside another man. Uh, you can't even talk about inside. No, it's not too bad. The old days Wow, you could say fuck him in the ass. That's why we got the XM. Alright. Could you? We're gonna shove some food Maybe down I'm our throats and we'll continue in just a bit. It's the worst. Nah. Well, Kev Kevin Smith put it best when he goes, you know, when I go to a uh, comic book, you know, superhero movie, I'd like to see him at least punch one guy. You know, mm -hmm. Superman didn't fucking do anything. He was too nice. He flew around. He didn't kick any ass. He didn't fly around. He just did a lot of floating. It was floating around. He didn't fly like, you know, Superman. You go 3D on that? Best scene What's was that? The, the airplane. Yeah. Did you wear the, the 3D glasses? I fucking... I, you know what? I wanted to shoot some jizz on the 3D screen. I just wanted to just take a shit right in the theater. It made me sick. Yeah. I was cut, kept waiting, kept waiting. So I was just talking about this Borat thing. They're giving it all these good stuff. But they gave Superman 4, and I'm almost thinking that any... Any any universally loved movie has to stink because the part it they gave two and a half in in in, in mm. daily, and they give him Borat three and a half four, and I think it's it's probably because they're like oh he's so smart and so. Bleh. Oh, I hope, and, and, I hope it's not one of those critically acclaimed because uh, critics are assholes. Have you ever seen a critically acclaimed movie that was actually you loved? That they just wow, forty-seven stars. This this is the greatest movie ever made. And that's, a, that's a good question, actually. I don't mm -hmm. know. I can't think offhand. Why does I don't movie? remember the reviews for any of these films. You see, Payback with Mel Gibson. You think that got four stars? That yeah. was a fantastic movie. Did not see that. You gotta see Payback. People yeah. will stop hating him if they, if Payback becomes one of his great movies. All right, hold on. Uh, Steve has been on the line for a while. I hate the Road Warrior. This I don't care what the fuck he did. I don't care what he did after that. <laughs> Let's say hi to Steve in Florida. Steve. Hey, guys. What's going on? Hey. Oh, man. I'll tell you. You're not going to believe this one. Uh, Saturday night, my old man calls me up. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Because I know what you're about to say. Uh, you're married. Yeah. How long have you been married? About three and a half years. Kids? Mm -hmm. One. High school sweetheart? Or what's the deal with the marriage? Uh, we dated. No, she she <laughs> she used to be my secretary. Oh, ah. married before her? Uh, nope, never been married. Okay, all right. So we got the back history. Married three, three and a half years. You got a kid. And who called you up the other day? Uh, my old man calls me up. My dad. Okay. Uh, and he says, "How old a fella? Out. How old a fella are you?" Uh, I'm 37. All right. So and my wife you. is 23. Okay. Maybe that's a problem, but 
But uh, my dad calls me up, tells me to go check out this porn site. And I said, Dad, I'm not into it. He said, no, you want to go check out this porn site, Simply oh. Great Porn. So I punch it in, and as soon Hold as on. I punch it in, oh, all there's, right. there's my wife in the upper right-hand corner. <clears throat> oh, boy. You found Doing. your wife on a porn site. Actually, your dad did. Now, uh, is there a website? I don't know what's more. I don't know what's more disturbing: my dad surfing porn sites or my wife doing it. Yeah, that's got to be suck. That's got to suck for him. He's like, damn, I don't want anyone to know that I'm freaking surfing the internet for porn, but I got to let my son in on this. My dad's one. 87. Wow, I'm 87, and he's trolling porn sites, eh? God bless. Yeah. Him. Hey, um, can you give us the website off the air so we can check it out? Sure. All right, hold on the line. I thought he said it, he and I did. thought I oh, had it. Oh, did he? It. I think yeah, I... Yeah, I said it, yeah. yeah oh, I, you did. I'm I sorry. I think I had it. All right, which one is she? We got the site up. No, nah, I don't have it. Shit. Uh, simply Great Porn. All right. And she's in the right-hand corner. I forgot That's not her right. real name, though. Which, what, what name is on the screen? Sarah. That's your wife? That's my wife. Oh. It's like, hi, I'm Sarah. Come chat with me. Free. Hey, can you turn it down for a second? Now? Is this a big like? Are you trying to just push this website with yeah, this story? Because uh, you know, no, we no, were willing no, to bite. I, yeah, we could no. just give you the free plug. I mean, you already did it, but is that no, really your wife? No. Come on. That, no, I swear. So what's the problem? Uh, the problem is I had no idea that she was doing this. Right. This was this was a complete surprise, and she's sleeping as. My dad's calling me. Right. And so I wake her up and I say, what the hell is this? She freaked out. She goes, how did you find it? I says, my dad called me. Okay, if my dad saw it. I says, but that's not the point. The point is, Bravo, she says, Sarah. it's something that I've always wanted to do. It was a fantasy. <laughs> I call Bravo Sierra. Mm. Ah, we've been doing this way too long, sir. Mm. You're just way too casual. Yeah. Yeah. Because yep. I was going to ask, where's she at right now? Right. Where, yeah. where the fuck she at? Is she at work? Yeah, he's just, and, you know, it this, that. Look, First he, of all, the guy wouldn't, he, he wouldn't call a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> like, that That right there is enough. And he said Saturday, he'd still be in shock and in yeah. pain if he's a square. I mean, I'd appreciate the fact if I found my girl's old porno <laughs> shit, but it's like this You're guy. You're a whole different breed there, I'd be like, Patrice, God let me tell you. damn, bitch. Yeah. But it, it's like, and that's too professional and too not, that's a non-under-the-carpet kind of porn site. She's yeah. like, hi, everyone, I'm married and I fucking am a porn bitch. But it, it's not, if she was on scuzz, but one of those scuzzy, uh, like there's some shit you go to, like uh, the Hun, or it, where you just pop on things and go, wow. This yeah, is some ooh. disgusting shit. Yeah, that's all pro. Like that's that's, that's a full time job for her. Yeah, that's pro. That's fucking pro. That that's motherfucker's a manager. Too good for a yeah, fan she's and doing all that. she's doing that full time. Yeah, what does she say yeah, she does yeah. for work? Where's she at? Where yeah. the fuck's she at now? We've been just at this game a little down a pull, long time. Pull the wool over our eyes, sir. All right, we got the uh, the gay evangelist evangelist. evangelist. We got that story. We got, uh, oh, uh, remind me, we got to play Jim Norton on Letterman the whole set. We, we were oh, supposed yeah. to play this yesterday, and Jim's in Atlanta, so we'll do that going into break. Someone remind me on that. We got shame, shame, shame on you. A new one? Yeah. From, what, what was the problem? Special needs girl late to school all the time because of long bus ride. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got to hear this. Uh, yeah, right to yeah, this? Yeah, we'll, we'll go right. right to that. What about the wax lipping? No, retard beats out yeah. wax lips. And what about uh, some children's lyrics uh, appropriate for children? Question mark. Oh, that that's too vague. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what what it means, but I could. You know, shame, 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 retard, long bus ride. It's easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Arnold Diaz, shame, shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. Last month, we reported that 17-year-old Andrea Avant, a special needs student, used to love going to school until this year, when the bus trip became a nightmare. Tell me about the bus, Andrea. They're late. They're late. <laughs> they're late. Yeah, they're late. Every day? Every day. Every day. Yeah, every day. 
As we told you, the bus Andrea rode had to pick up 17 special needs students on a long route starting in Far Rockaway, winding its way. Well, yeah, because we got to spread them out. You don't want them all in one neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> got to thin them out. <laughs> uh... On a long route starting in Far Rockaway, winding its way through Queens, not arriving at the Information Technology High School in Long Island City <laughs> until 9.30 or 10 o'clock, oh. long past the school's 8 o'clock starting time. So, Yikes. Andrea, you're on the bus for two to three hours in the morning? Two hours. Yeah, two to two three, three hours three. in the morning. Oh, who was talking first? Uh, and then who stepped in? You know. You know, because... Uh, uh, <laughs> well, you know. Problem. Uh, problem. I have a problem with the name of this school. Yeah. Shouldn't finger painting be in the title of that school <laughs> somewhere? <laughs> so how does Arnold help? Uh, well, I don't know. He's a do-gooder. He visits the bus company. Mm-hmm. The long trip, we reported, violated the education department's own guidelines that say no student should be on the bus longer than 90 minutes. But Michelle Avon said her daily complaints were falling on deaf ears. But because it's a special needs child or a child who, don't, who doesn't have a voice, it, it's like we'll get to it when we get to it. It has to be done now. And we told you, unbelievably, the manager of the Little Richie Bus Company pleaded ignorance. The parents say they've been calling and making complaints, and you're the general manager. I Shouldn't you know about the problem? Honestly, I didn't know about the problem. No. Yeah. No, I didn't. Uh, yeah. 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 When, whenever the guy admits to it, right? like unless somebody shoves their fist in the camera lens, it doesn't work for him. So it's like, oh, I didn't know about the problem. Yeah. 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 Well, Pete from Columbus, Ohio. Hi, my wife is a special need uh, amateur porn star on imawaterhead.com. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of confessions coming in on the instant feedback. Uh, keyboard commando from Boston. Opie, I found out my wife was Jenna Jameson after being married for four years. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Damn, that must have been a surprise. Uh, all right. And finally, uh, Arnold, of course, gets results. Of course he does. So last month, we put the city education department and the school bus company in the hall of shame. And what do you know? The next day, the problem was solved. After the broadcast, everything went the way it was supposed to go. More buses were added to the route, just as the parents had been requesting. So instead of having to pick up 17 students all over Queens... Now they only have 11 kids on the bus, and it's within my area. The result is Andrea now spends only an hour or so on the bus. After the story, yeah. I came here, here. It came here on time? Yeah, oh, on time. But right. It, it came here on time. Like and did you get to school on time? Yeah. Oh. In fact, we took these pictures of Andrea's bus arriving at school a few minutes before the 8 o'clock opening bell. She hasn't been late at all since our report. Thanks. She's not missing any classes, which is great. We're totally pleased. We're extremely pleased. I like to thank um, Fox. Thank you. Thank you. Good. It's our pleasure. I know who their audience is. <laughs> I certainly do. That was a that was a lackluster shame shame. Yeah, I like the ones where they're confrontational. The guy goes t t tells him to go shit in his hat. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold, go shit in your hat. <laughs> All right, let's say hi to Paul in Texas. What's up, Paul? Hey, boy, this is Paul. I got a got a little story for Patrice, being he's the man that knows the woman, and I wanted to give a little insight on it. Okay. All right. Um, dated a girl for a year and a half. She's 21. I was 35. We both come out of bad marriages, right? Everything was going cool. I let her get close to my kids. We decided to move back to Texas, where she's from. And, you know, she's one of these girls, you know, that told me that, you know, oh, I'll never cheat, you know, I'm loyal, I don't lie, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I drive a truck, and she was cool with that. And uh came home, uh, the, it was the uh, 25th, right around the 25th of October, kind of sensed something was wrong, you know. And then um, everything seemed all right, you know, she needed a new cell phone, got her new cell phone, go to work, call, say, hey, I'm going to be back this afternoon. Well, you're supposed to go to California. Automatically, you know, the alarms go off, right? Well, all of a sudden, it's, I need the space thing. And I said, hey, are you seeing somebody? Let me know. 
She says, no, it's not. Okay, so I get strung along for a week, and then just all of a sudden just stuff wasn't adding up. So being a former Green Beret, I called a friend, got into her cell phone, got a number I didn't recognize, and actually got a hold of this dude, started talking to him. And he, I go, how do you know my girlfriend, Jessica? He goes, well, she's my girlfriend. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah, we've been dating for about a week. I go, that's funny. Last weekend we were sleeping in the same bed together. I go, she's talking about marriage and babies and stuff. I go, so I understand. Well, the reason I was calling it to ask Patrice is, once she, uh, you know, she finally called him, she finally fesses up to it. All of a sudden, I'm the asshole now. I'm the one being treated like shit, and I didn't do anything wrong. And I'm trying to, I want to know from Patrice, is that because of the guilt is taking over? The what? The guilt? Is it because the guilt is taking over? Is that why all of a sudden I'm the asshole now? You're guilty nah, about it. man. Yeah, what, no, what, she, she, she's saying... He's trying to find some kind of saving grace that she's guilty. Uh, nah, man. Let me tell you what you didn't do. You're 35, right? She's 21. Yeah. Your fuck game, you're not going to be able to fuck a young woman so that her body belongs to you. So you have to have her mind belong to you. You're not, you're not a big dick fuck machine that she needs for her body to be completely uh, uh, under your spell. You're a middle-aged man now. You're getting up there. You don't want to fuck as much. You're, and you're on the road driving a well, fucking truck. Pretty, but listen, listen, that. listen, listen, listen. Your mind ain't right. You, you first of all, she's probably too pretty for you in your mind. But she's not. You have to have her think, this is what you do. You have to have her convinced that her cheating and fucking another guy in some weird way, you're happy about it. You understand what I'm okay. saying to you? You have to you. pretend to be happy about it because she she's doing that for attention. Let me tell you something. Women cannot do anything by themselves. There's always a reaction to something you did. You understand? So this is her little way to go, hey, you're on the road, motherfucker, and you're not paying me no attention. I'm some hot whatever, and I can get pussy or I can get dick anywhere. I tell my girl all the time, it ain't no big deal. My girl could fuck anybody, but I make it seem like it ain't no big deal for you to fuck. I almost take the sting out of fucking because fucking for her is not... It's not a fuck. It's easy for her to fuck. Then why were Here's you keeping tabs on her during our Halloween show? I wasn't when, keeping tabs. Flavor Flav Flav Posse, Posse, Posse showed up. No, but, you, I'll tell you what happened. Hold on, dude. I'll tell you what happened. Oh, this guy oh. won't shut up. Okay, hold on, hold, hold on. on. Hold shut on. up, Paul. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something, Obi. Ask, ask Mars. Marcelino, mm -hmm. I'll get up and walk away. Mars is, Mars is, you know, Mars is like a 50 grip black belt or some shit. Yeah. He's like, dude. She's been fucking talking to your fucking girl. I go, calm down, Ma. Calm down. Listen, they're doing their job. They're trying to fuck her. <laughs> and the only... And this this pertains to this dude. The only way I can keep my girl from fucking Flav's guys is that I'm on her mind. You right. understand what I'm saying? You have to be on her mind. Like, she has to say, it's not worth losing this for maybe the potential better fuck. Do you understand what I'm saying? The fuck means nothing to her. Women, dick means nothing to women. Do you understand that shit? It's easy for them to get. You have to make your knowledge, your guidance, and your your slight love. You give them love like like little bits of medicine. <laughs> my girl says, you know what my what I say when my girl says I love you? I say you should. Like taking a vitamin you every should. day. You should. There you go. You fucking should because because it's not e it's easy it's not easy for you to get love. I'm a pimp. Except I don't have bitches on the streets. Right. Because because that's that one little weak part of me where it's like I'd like keep your money if you're fucking. It's yeah. your pussy. But you treat him like a fat like, koala bear. She's she was keeping tabs on me because I have see. Let me say this correctly. I've devised a way. And, I, and you see my girl. She's a good looking girl, yeah. man. I've devised a way to have her discredit. The fact that she can fuck anytime she wants by seeing the the way I need, she knows that a guy has to have no affection, no no liking towards her to fuck her. She knows that f in order for me to get pussy, that most of the time a girl that wants to fuck me feels about me the way she does. So it's moving in on her territory. Right. If a guy fucks her frivolous, frivolously, it's not moving in on my territory. That's just you giving up your pussy. Hey, yeah. that's on. Yeah, you doing me a fucking favor. Now I can go shop again. You know what I mean? I can go open up the human resources department. That's why I act the way I fucking act. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. dude, this is what you did. You, as a 35-year-old man, you need to give her guidance, man. Stop trying to catch up to her. Have her catch up to you. You are better than her. You understand? Think about this. You're 35 years old. She's 21. That's 14 years her senior. Now, do you think that what's 14 uh, years, 8 eight years old or 7 years old? Do you think a 7-year-old can would, would, would let... A 21-year-old or a 21-year-old would let a 7-year-old dominate her mentally or dominate them. And, and, and you, you're you going to guide a 7-year-old if you're 21, right? Right. So you are still 14 years older than her. Guide yeah, the know. bitch. You're not guiding her. Don't dump her. She's just goofy. She's well, goofy. I was, I was trying to guide her. I'm trying to Patrice and Beat House right now. I was trying to guide her. And the thing is... It never was about sex. She just didn't really, she wasn't a sexual person. She would rather lay down and cuddle. That was more important to her than sex. And I was like, okay, but see, I'm, I'm, I'm a very sexual person. And, you know, three, four times a night, I want to go where she did, she never wanted to. And it had always been that way. And the thing is, you know, I, you know, I walked away from everything in Virginia to go back with this girl. And Jeez. it just came out of the blue. It was like one minute. It was like, move on. You know, yeah, that's that. Yeah, dude. You, 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 let me tell you, on. let me tell you what you are right now. You are if, if life was a a, 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 a a road you are you are behind you are three cars behind and you on a on a dead end one way street you're three cars behind and you can't pass her you're stuck soon as you said I'm gonna drop everything which innately makes you unattractive to a woman you're if a, you drop everything you're in a Taurus trying to keep up with a sports car <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's take the next exit yeah man. Man, learn from this man gone. because man, I mean you could turn it around but it might take more time than than you need. Well, actually, I don't. Actually, I don't. And I'm not mad about it because the fact that she was young. I'm not mad about it. I'm a little hurt about it, but I'm not mad about it. I, you know, yeah, it's, it's, right. I, I, I'm going to walk away from it because I look at it as a learning experience. All right, Paul. Good luck to you. All right, yeah, buddy? Good luck, buddy. All right. Yeah. Hey, wow. Doug in Canada, you know, he's got a confession, too, and... Uh, on the instant feedback, Doug writes, I found out my wife is tub girl. Uh, he's, oh, he's having a problem with that girl. today. So <laughs> let's say hi to Brad and Philly. Yikes. Brad, what's up? Yeah, I just wanted to give uh, Patrice some props, man. He really knows his women shit, man. Yeah. I'm a fat motherfucker in a world where I don't want to date fat bitches. <laughs> so I got to figure it out. And He's I figured it all it out, out that women do not, women aren't us. Nope. I am not fucking a woman version of me. We keep going back to that Halloween show. Uh, another observation I had, everybody at the Opie and Anthony Halloween show was uh, checking up on their women. When had Flavor to. Flav and his posse showed up. Had to. I never saw more checking think, up going on. I don't think on. so. Oh, man, I, what's that I, I don't think he was checking up on your girl hey, like I, that. I, I just don't I want no, them to be harassed. I have no problem admitting it. Matter I, of I fact, did a, a little more checking up than I usually do. Well, look, a um, more. If, if I'm not mistaken, I came back and and... Your girl was having a conversation. I don't know if it was survival technique <laughs> to have a conversation. Uh, I think even Bonnie, uh, miserable Bonnie, was having conversations. Yeah. Your girl was walking around with um, her fake uh, Marilyn Monroe, uh, whatever she was trying to be. Um, uh, uh, Nicole and Nicole, Nicole Smith. And Nicole. She felt mighty comfortable. I'm telling you, no yeah. one was was. I think more or less, it might have been. A safety thing. If if anybody was a little more protective that night, yeah. I think it was more because it's like if it, a, if a guy's a trying thing. to fuck her, yeah. it's just different from a guy harassing your girl. Where it's like, all right, dude, look, I know I went to the bathroom. You know she's with me. You tried. It mm -hmm. didn't work. Can you not pull her by the side of her face, yeah, please? Yeah, more of a harassment. Yeah, thing. can you not grab her draws because she can't defend herself physically. Yep. Mentally, I think I got her prepared for you. But, I mean, you going to do beat her up? Uh, uh, can I interrupt? Uh, Mighty Casey, very bummed today from Mudville. Uh, oh, my God. I just realized that horse gag girl is my mom. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Sorry to hear that. That's embarrassing. I don't know what we can tell you today, but... Uh, was, you up, was you checking up on your girl a little more at the Halloween party? A little bit. Make sure she's all right. I have no problem admitting that. W yeah, was, there, was there ever a moment where you uh, actually was a hairy moment? No, 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 no. Randy in Virginia. It was all good. She was. She enjoyed your girlfriend a lot. She, she's a good girl. And I'm like, you oh. said that with a surprise, motherfucker. And then I'm, yeah, no, right? Because I'm like, you want to swing? 
That's what I'm saying. Then, like, uh, huh? I'm fast forward. Huh? See, huh? how's it swinging, old dog? Huh? Hold, hold on, let me explain. So I'm fast forward in my head. I'm like, oh god, I'm gonna get the uncomfortable phone call from Patrice. Hey, uh, I was talking to my girl, and she was talking to the other girl, and uh, can we take her out? Oh. You're like, sleepy. Oh. <laughs> That'll be it. I'll be on. I'll be on a, a stir show. Like, hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting that phone call from you. Just you just feeling it out just to say, you know. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Oh shit! That's he was like, me. "Listen, and you probably tired of asking what did you tell? Hey, listen, don't be talking to this girl. Next thing you know, you know. Now she thinks she thinks you got to go on, man. She's a good girl. Yeah, absolutely. Randy in uh, Virginia. Randy. Yeah, man, I got to give it up to uh, to Patrice. Every time, is it me or is it like every time he starts talking about this shit, it's like, man, just shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. And then at the end, you're so enlightened. You're like, God damn, this guy has figured the shit out, right? Yeah, it's a he belief did. system. He did, and it he might be wrong. It Unreal. It's, it might be wrong, but let me tell you something. If you're a soldier in the army, right, uh -huh. and you are as tough as you think your commander is, and no matter what the fuck he tell you, if you believe in it and believe in the strategy, and they say, okay, this can't go on now. I could die, but this is he knows what the he fuck he's the talking man, about. Right. You follow that motherfucker. That's what women yeah, want. They I'm just want a you, fucking man. soldier. They want to. They want to be a soldier and follow the right lieutenant. They don't want right. one that goes. Uh, I don't know. You know, they want one that grabs them by the top of their head and says, "Look, man, <laughs> you gotta suck my dick better." <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Got it all figured out, man. man. All right, yeah, amazing. Yeah. We're having a good day today. I don't know how true this is. Let's say hi to Gene in Chicago. Gene. Gene. What's up with this Gene, Gene call? One moment, please. Mm -hmm. Wow. He's got a secretary. Oh, yeah. You know Karen Meyer, the deaf reporter from Chicago? Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, her friend Gene. Oh. And supposedly a uh, friend of Karen Meyer using Internet Relay Service to talk to us. Oh. So I think Karen Meyer, who's deaf, wants to say a thing or two. All right. <laughs> <laughs> About all the, uh, all the, the stories uh, we played. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay. <laughs> uh. Mm-hmm. Oh, isn't deaf just a pain in the ass? And a number thing. <laughs> My God. Uh. And a mother thing. <laughs> Did Tracy really go on stern? That ah, blows we wanted. Why are you guys so mean? Go ahead. So mean. Go ahead. Wait, could someone explain uh, to me what's going on? Yeah, Go how does ahead. this work? <laughs> can you explain what the fuck's going on? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I've, do I've done this with the police department sometimes when the deaf call, and, like, basically, you're going to, she's going to translate, she's going to type it in, hit enter, and then the oh. other chick's going to read it, and then... So the chick reading has nothing to do with this phone call. This is just an operator. Yeah, she's in it to me. Are you an operator, Gene? Wow, she's not allowed to even talk. Is she? No. Uh, why are we so mean, Anthony? Over. Uh, go ahead. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this stinks. It takes a while. Please, God, don't That's ever let me lose my hearing. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get, uh, two quarter pounders with cheese, um, no onion, extra pickles, yeah, what? and a small fry? Go ahead. Yeah, let's just fuck up the operator. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Go go ahead. ahead. What are you wearing? Go ahead. What? Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Mmm, your pussy smells delicious. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello. A moment, please. Yes. <laughs> oh, what is that? A two-inch clitoris? Go ahead. <laughs> She's typing as fast as she can. Jeez. She is a nice lady who has worked so hard to get where she is today. That is not nice. I cannot hear this. It's the only way to communicate. Oh. All right. So Asshole. this is this is Karen. Go ahead. <laughs> this is one of Karen's friends, I guess, and she is also deaf. Is that uh, right? Oh, Go so ahead. we're not. Oh, friend of Karen. Wait, Jean. Jean's the friend. Oh fuck! We're not even talking to Karen Meyer. No. We're talking to her. It's her friend. Her dumb deaf friend. Not dumb, just deaf. <laughs> just deaf. <laughs> uh, Jean. Okay, Jean's from Chicago. She's a friend of Karen Meyer. She's using internet relay service to talk to us. All right, Jean oh, Keller. Good. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh. Good luck well, typing that. Go ahead. <laughs> I go ahead. That's the go ahead. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ouch, ah, uh, ouch, ouch, ah, uh, ah, uh, ouch. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, Captain Jersey really bummed out today. Oh, my God. He's from North uh, Virginia, Anthony. Damn yeah. it. It's confirmed. My dad is a size queen on ghetto <laughs> gaggers. <laughs> oh, ghetto gaggers. Oh, dude. Thank you for saying that. What? Is that a good spot? Uh, oh. Site? Yeah. GhettoGaggers.com, baby. Go what on. is GhettoGaggers.com? I'm telling you, I have never bought uh, 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 the, su but the subscription to a site. Yeah. This, you I, did to that one? I bought Ghetto yeah. Gaggers, dude. I fucking downloaded every single one. It's just some corny white guy that goes, hey, honey, hey, uh, have you ever been, like, reamed by, uh, you ever been throw fucked? And she's and like, nah, uh-uh, bla all black. Yeah. And they just, she just goes, no, I'll, I'll do it today. And they just, some dude, it's, it's a fat dude with a small dick and a, and a, like a messy dude with a, like a bigger <laughs> dick. And he just goes, you ready? And they go, uh huh. And it's just, a lot of choking. It's gagging. just horrendously evil. Wow. Man. Just, uh, get it's a like slap hat, humble. But with a white guy and a. Wow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Over. Um, go, go ahead. ahead. Go, ahead. <laughs> go, go ahead. ahead. All right. Look at that. Oh Lord, it's despicable. No, oh, wow. just, it's just, just the sample. I jerked, I jerked off. I'm gonna tell you why I bought it. I jerked off to the sample movie. I never oh, wow. do that. Uh, to the white chick. I'm Paul no, R. Nelson. No. Go oh, ahead. It's a light, uh, light girl. All right. Oh, here's the sample movie. Yeah, watch how fast it goes by. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I like how the GG watch. and Ghetto Gag goes. Oh yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Look oh. at the fat oh. mess. <laughs> fat mess. Oh, he's my hero. Look at oh, that messy small dick and is still gagging. Wow. <laughs> ah, and there's the Wait a money minute, and shot. Then they, and they and they leave it there. It's so degrading. They leave it there. But I'm gonna tell you something. If you're watching, you watching, you look at porn. You don't, you're not a porn watcher, but it, it, let me tell you, man. Japanese porn dudes. Yeah. Japanese yeah. porn is the m single most sinister porn ever. So Jimmy says, yeah. I watched a porno, and I swear to God, they are they are creative with their filth. Is two things I saw. One, a girl they made fuck. With worms, they just pull worms on her, and then oh. some guy fucked her in some worms, and she's just going, ay, ay, ay. Why? And he's just fucking the shit out of her worms. It's degrading. I saw you played that on Web Junk. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the chair shot up in the air. Worm fuck. <laughs> Worm fuck. So look at his and, chink and then fucking one, with worms. When I watch these two lactating chicks, two lactating Asian girls, just squirt each other in the mouth with, with milk, and, and one would, they would go, Mm, that's delicious. And then the other one was squirting in the mouth. She going, and it was serious. It wasn't anything. Yeah. That's comedy, my new shit. No, no non-sexual sex shit. Just. <laughs> that's the new thing. Like my know? like my girl washing a hooker. Yeah. Without sexuality, just like scrubbing a hooker's underarms and making sure it's clean, just and turned just me. Turned, I yeah. lost it. They were seeing her go. No, not ready yet. You're just getting past the point. Oh, you're no, no. you're over the edge, yeah. Well, but first of all, don't judge me when you work I'm, with Norton every day. I know. Well, that Norton has said that the Jap and the uh, German videos are the worst. Just fucking something hate. about being a conquered this country. Is... When you lose a war, you just turn to pornography. I, German, uh, I, I caught some German porn. It's all about shitting and two girls, chickens, d definitively out in public, just peeing in each other's mouth at the trolley stop. <laughs> that's the trolley stop. Yeah, hey. that's trolley good. <laughs> Pete from Columbus, Ohio. I'm not sure if this is uh, accurate, but let's uh -oh. try it out. The clip Patrice is talking about with the worms is on videos. Hold on. Yeah, why don't you type that in first before they crash this site, too? These bastards. There's too many horny guys that listen to us. Videos. Wow, is this updating like crazy today? I gotta find it. Hold on there, Thin. Where the fuck did it go? Who the what? What the? What the? Who the? What the? Who the? I just lost it. Could be some just plugging their site too. Jab's fucking worms over. Videos. Go ahead. Where the fuck did it go? I'm serious. I have the URL, but I can't find it. Oh my god! Sorry about that. I don't know where it is now. 
I got it. I, I haven't seen the instant feedback update this uh, this fast in a long time. A lot of people on. A lot of people on today. All right. I, I, you got it? What is What's it? the URL. I, I can't find it. Oh, okay. Maybe someone just plugging their site? It could be. All right. If we find it, we'll, we'll plug the site. All right, listen, why don't we take a break? Oh, uh, Charlie, you had something? Yeah. Uh, can you please play today's show for best of this weekend? Because today was better than the rest of the week. Oh. Patrice and Borat rule. What about Paul R. Nelson? He was pretty good no, today. No, he just doesn't cut it. Well, no, today it was today in a in a XM commercial, so we had some of that today. All right, thank you, sir. I thought uh, we had a real good week of radio. All right, why don't we take a break? Patrice sitting in for Jim Norton today. We meant to do this uh, yesterday. Jimmy is in Atlanta all weekend. Uh, do we know what club? Usually the Improv. Punchline. Oh, yeah, it's the Punchline. Oh boy. How did Jimmy do? Kill. Yeah, we get to, it's so cool because Jimmy goes around the country, you know, on almost every Friday and does his thing, and then we get all the calls Friday morning, you know, for his Thursday night show, and yeah, the the, re, the reviews were great. And it's like he's doing reconnaissance for us. Yeah, it's weird. He goes, hey, yeah, that market's good. It's catching on. He's playing the punchline all weekend long in Atlanta, 404-252-5233. We're going to go to break with Jim Norton on Letterman two nights ago. <laughs> Woman gets half of her uh, lip waxed off. So what, motherfucker? In uh, Harlem. We were just talking about this yesterday with Tara Reid. When you're getting these things done, you got to do just a little bit of research. Well, she just thought she was getting a little hair removed from her lip. Yeah, but the women are doing this every day, and they're not, yeah. they're, they're not, they're not leaving the store with only half a lip. Must have been using that uh, rat, rat trap glue that uh, we use. Yeah. He yeah, about Oof. the girl that went to Mexico and, he, and got an ass transplant, and the guy put oil in her butt. Uh, regular, uh, like like motor oil, motor oil in her oh, butt, shit. as a as to put to give her, her ass a little shake. Oh Jesus! They had to drain her butt cheeks out. No bullshit. <laughs> Change the filter. No bullshit. They had, to, they had to drain motor oil out of butt cheeks. She went to Mexico oh, and motherfucker wow. put cut two slits in the booty and put motor oil in Come her butt on. cheeks. Yes. <laughs> she's got to go back every three thousand miles. Yeah. <laughs> she put a little jiffy loop sticker when she's got to go back. And they sewed it up and they and to give it a oily jiggle. Yeah. And, and and she had to you know she almost died and had to release oil from her ass. Exxon. Oh. Mm. Oh, no bullshit. That's what happens. Here's the story. You got to do your research is what we're getting at. A visit to the beauty salon turning into a lawsuit. A woman claims she got a lip wax that removed more than just hair. She ended up in the emergency room. Mercy Ago says hot wax disfigured her. Ago was a regular customer at the Master Nail Salon in Harlem. She says the wax was so hot it ripped off part of her upper lip. The worker applied some ointment and used bandages to alleviate the pain, but the damage, it was already done. The public assumes that they know what they're doing, that they're educated, that they're licensed, and that when the wax comes off, the hair comes off with it, and not your skin. This all happened. The salon says it is now doing its own investigation. Mm. Ow. Are penis pumps uh, accredited? Uh, I don't think so. Shit. You use a penis pump? No, not yet. You're thinking about it? I wanna, I wanna, I want like a 10 inch. You're not that big, huh? Um, I'm okay. It's like, it's not what I want. I want pain and suffering. So much for that stereotype, huh? No, I want, mine's is soothing. <laughs> like when I'm poking a bitch with my finger, she's like, ah, ah, and I, and I stop and then put my dick in, it's like, ah. Uh, <laughs> I have a make love dick. <laughs> 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 Uh, I don't have a hurt your fucking rib cage dick. That's, a, that's all we got on the the freaking lip lady, I guess. That's it. Lipless hoe? It yeah, was you, uh it was visual. You just gotta do your research. Yeah, the pictures are horrific. She had a big like, black lady? Yeah, and she had one half with still the mustache because she only waxed one that one half. And the other half was a big oh, like. You gotta do the other side and make it match. What the yeah, hell? I know. Unfortunately, it was the uh, first half of a mustache that ripped off the skin. Now, so my girl had a bad, uh, a bad wax day. Yeah. Pucked up. Now, Where? Now, uh, oh. uh, there. Yeah. And it didn't destroy it, but it just was like, oh. And then I said, look, we have pussy day from uh, once a week. So oh. I, I shave her with a. Oh, you do? With you have shave. pussy day? <laughs> pussy day. Ah. Where it's very, it's very businesslike. It's like, it, I, I shave her, shave her, shave her legs. Shave her pussy into whatever shape her, she wants her hair when it grows back. 
Um, Wait, she doesn't everything. go bald. She doesn't. Uh... She I, she likes little. She likes hmm. to have a little hair. Do something. Something. So I I'm, I'll shape up. I'll I'll shave like a little. Is like it up a, to you like to, a, to to pick the shape? Yeah, a little, maybe a thunderbolt. <laughs> maybe a fucking. Uh, maybe a heart. Maybe a fist. A power fist. Power. A, black power. Black power fist. <laughs> And uh, and then right after, after I, I wipe all the hair off, I eat a pussy. <laughs> so she come, and it's very businesslike, and she, it's very thank you very much, sir. Not a hair in your mouth. And I go downstairs and, and, and play. Hair in your mouth. And, it's pussy day. It doesn't matter. Stubble. And it's go, pussy day. And then go downstairs and I play give a her, video game. I give her a release. I give her a happy <laughs> happy ending. <laughs> You're a good man. And I go downstairs and, and play my video game. She good, goes to sleep. Good boy. People are saying, Patrice, if you didn't have a fat pubis, you'd have a 10-incher. A fat pubis. Oh, the meaty thing. It. Do you, have you pushed all that back to see how how big it, it would be? It, I've done that before. It's. Does it add I anything? I even shaved. Oh, to, yeah. yeah, to give it all shaft. <laughs> and trust me, it's. Look at man. It's a. It's. It's not. Put it this way: When I watch porn, I get upset. Yeah. yeah. I've seen a guy get a double-handed jerk, and I just almost fainted out of sadness. I have a fucking good sized dick, but I don't want a good sized dick. I want this mic stand. Uh, I want to fold it like this. You want, like, crazy I want to dick? adjust my dick. <laughs> you want to fold it before you go outside. I, I, I watched porn last night. I couldn't sleep. It was two thirty in the morning, so I said, "Let me just jerk off and get in the shower afterwards." Right? So I'm fucking. I I, I watching uh, some uh, Oriental gangbang. All black dudes banging these these Asian girls. Jesus, that and after, nice. afterwards, they they do a thing where they judge the girls and they go, "What do you give a man?" And they look like ten. And I, we give. I give her a five. I give her a seven. And dudes are standing there after the aftermath. Yeah. And <clears throat> then some of the guys' dicks are so big that where it f the part it would stick out and then hang down. Some of those dude the the sticking out hang down part where the dick starts to bend. Yeah. That part before it hangs down is bigger than my dick. Is a full dick. Is a full other dick. And it bugs me. That's got to suck. It bugs me. <laughs> Filled up, it's decent. Like I said, if if my dick was in Vietnam, yeah, some dudes' dicks can kill a whole village. <laughs> Come in, <laughs> everybody right. dead. My dick crawls around in the bushes with a knife in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Might take out a foot. <laughs> Cut your throat and then hide back in the in the forest. <laughs> uh, dang, with that, let's get a mic in Canada. Mike. Hey, Patrice, hey, thank, thank you so much, Patrice. You, you give me a lot of great advice. I used to think you were just a prick, but now I know you speak the truth. Nah. I do the same thing with my wife's pussy, but I just got to call you out and ask you what a thunderbolt looks like. It's, um, you know, you just, you, you got to wait till the hair grows a little bit. Yeah. You start in front of the clear and you, and you just go up. What he's getting at, it's a lightning You know, a lightning bolt, maybe? You said thunder. Thunderbolt, so... Oh, oh well, they have that in car... They say that shit in uh, cartoons. It's Thunderbolt. You bastard. All right. Picky. That's how dumb I am. I just fucking... I would have been sitting there going, uh-huh, yes. And? And he would have said, Thunderbolt. <laughs> I would have been like, uh-huh, Lord of Jesus. <laughs> Lord and Lord. Thunderbolt. <laughs> What's wrong with Thunderbolt, sir? Right, let's get to uh, one of the big stories of the day. This is just a wonderful story. Boy, that lightning was loud. We heard about this today, and we have a procedure in our church for an independent board to come in whenever there's allegations of a problem, and then they do a thorough... Wait, this isn't the actual story, that's unfortunately? That's a thorough investigation. Is this the, uh, are they talking to the dude? Talking to the dude, yeah. That got caught? Yeah. And now he had to quit? Yes. All right, the story goes, the president of the National Association of Evangelicals... Evangelical. <laughs> An outspoken opponent of gay marriage has given up his post while a church panel investigates allegations. He paid a man for sex. It's the post that was up his ass. The, uh, <laughs> oh, the Rev. Ted Haggard resigned as president of the 30 million member association Thursday after being accused of paying the man for monthly trysts over the past three years. Oh, I guess boy. once a month for three years. Haggard, a married father of five, denied the allegations. Yikes but also stepped aside as head of his 14,000-member New Life Church pending an investigation. I am voluntarily stepping aside from leadership so that the overseer process uh, can be allowed to proceed with integrity, he said in a statement. I hope to be able to discuss the matter in more detail at a later date. In the interim, I will seek both spiritual advice and guidance. And uh, I guess they got to interview him on uh, CNN. 
this morning. We heard about this today, and we have a procedure in our church for an independent board to come in whenever there's allegations of a problem, and then they do a thorough independent investigation, and they have the authority to fire me or discipline me or to exonerate me. And so they've received a phone call already, and they'll be coming in and talking about this and investigating it and deciding what they need to do. So they've already started that process? We started that process tonight when we got the word. I received the word this afternoon that uh, there were questions rising and my name had been mentioned in Mm -hmm. Denver. And uh, so actually it was your calls tonight that confirmed that I was the one he was going to talk about tomorrow morning mm-hmm. and make the allegations against. And so we have a system for that. It's wasn't. totally independent of the church. It's a group of men that will come in and meet with the person making the allegations Ooh, and then do the research and then discipline me if I need to be disciplined, Ooh. fire me if I need to be fired. Or exonerate me. Nah, he's hoping for the Sounds discipline. Sounds like he's looking forward to it. He's hoping for the discipline. <laughs> 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 discipline. Can only imagine what kind of discipline they have at that Old church. Old fashioned hoods in and the basement. Oh, right. chanting. A lot of candles with lit. paddle. Yeah. <laughs> Robes with hoods. Damn. Fraternity paddles. Yeah. <laughs> You've been bad boy. And then, uh, Ted reporter Haggard. asks if he knows any gay men. Do you know Mike Jones? No, I do not know Mike Jones. Do you know any gay men in Denver? Well, we pastor a church with 14,000 people. And so I know a lot of men and women. And I don't know that I know any gay men in Denver. However, there could be people that come to the church that are gay men or whatever that I know that I don't know are gay men. Mm -hmm. Have you had a relationship with? I have not. Oh, boy. Oh, no. You have. Yeah. That sounded a little... uh, I've studied speech and... uh, Gay men that I didn't know were gay men that sometimes were gay that I was with at the church, but (laughs) not with with because they're gay men. First of all, the voice a little gay. Does he have the gay voice a little bit? Second of all, he uh, answers the question before the question is... uh, (laughs) I already got an answer. (laughs) Officially asked. He answers it poorly. He answers way too fast. That's someone that is like, eh. Gotcha. Or whatever that I know that I don't know are gay men. Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you had a relationship with no, I have a, not. A, a, <laughs> kind of... I have not. <laughs> no. Have you? No. Stop it. Okay. Have you had a relationship with I have a, not. A, <laughs> a, <laughs> kind of oh, I've all. never had I'm a gay relationship with anybody. And... Uh, I, uh, I'm i steady with my wife. I'm faithful to my steady. wife. And so I don't know if this is election year politics or if this has to do with the marriage amendment or, or what it is. But I'm not even the guy that will investigate it or question it. I don't know what the dynamics mm-hmm. are. But this this independent group will come in and do that. All right. Well, good luck to you. I guess what happened, the guy that was servicing him yeah, just had it with this uh, guy saying that he was against, you know, all, all this gay stuff, gay marriage. Right. And, that, and he finally had it. Like, what a hypocrite. Are you kidding me? All right. I'm going to pop you right out of the closet. Yeah, he's calling me once a, what do you say, once a week or something once like that? Once a month. Once a month. What is this? How is that? Oh. What happened? Patrice's message. Is it me? Today. Today's pussy day? Today's pussy day. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> call you? <laughs> is she it's listening? Pussy day. <laughs> no, she just is, she, she just is reminding yeah, you that it's pussy, pussy day. day. <laughs> <laughs> what shape are you going for today, Patrice? <laughs> it's pussy day. In case you didn't believe Patrice, you believe everything you said. No. So Patrice what, don't lie. What shape are you going for today? I think I'm going to do a heart. Aww. That's romantical. I'm going to do a small heart on a the cooch. Then eat it and go play video games. <laughs> video games. All right, Angel. Does she just lay there all sleepy and stuff when you're done playing video games? Angel. Yeah, she's like out, down for the count. Took care of her. Done. Angel. Hello. Hi, Angel. Hi. How's Ohio? Oh, pretty good. Um, I just wanted to ask Patrice if if he was interested in swinging with me, me and my husband. We're full swap. 
I, you know what? Wait. Uh, She's What's full, full swap? Well, that... I, I fuck her and her husband fucks my girl. But there's other options? I thought if you swing, it's... N well, swinging could be, you know, it, it could be j two girls, a guy. That's all swinging. Mm -hmm. um, but a full swap is, that's, that's you, I, I, you know, I fuck her and she, yeah. and her husband fucks my girl. And what are you, just in the same room? And... Well, yeah, and it's not just like, eh, no, ready, hey. set, and fuck. Pff. It's like I start with her, with my girl. He does this thing with his woman, and they kind of show each other. We kind of show what we do with each other. And then as soon as, you know, everybody's feeling like, mm, this is getting hot. I like what you do you to know, your girl. Re and, I like what it, and you go, and action. And then it's like, you know, and then we both kind of are looking at each other, see what you're doing to each other's girl and see mm -hmm. what you're doing to each other's guy and shit. And then you kind of get into each other. And you shit, size you know? each other up. So, and do you, you size each other. Make sure look? that make sure that there's no code that he's he's finger popping me too hard or he's he's <laughs> sucking something I don't want to be sucked. I don't, he's, it's like you looking and it, once your girl's comfortable and his girl's com you know everybody's comfortable, then you could go at it and then you can add your own little touch to the whole. Do you say that thing. though? Or do you go ah, it's mm -hmm. bigger than mine? Mm -hmm. Nah, God nah, damn it, he's got nah. a big cock. Because we swung one time and the guy had a decent sized jammy. And my girl went at it, but he, I was in, I was cool because she was into the dude. You know, she was like, the dude was, you know, she liked him and she liked, you know, she, she, he, he was eating a pussy right. She didn't give me no, uh, help me looks. <laughs> you know, and, um. You've gotten the help me look? Yeah, with motherfuckers that come in and try to, like, pimp, like, okay, fucked up swingers are uh, motherfucker that come in and one of the dudes tries to, finagle it so he's fucking your girl and you not fucking his girl so he's trying to direct you on what to do to his girl while he's trying to it's a weird thing if you get an asshole but see real swingers are, are good people real respectful real you know hey look I don't I ain't trying to do nothing funny with your girl I mean I know I'm fucking her uh, <laughs> I, got, I got two questions no jealousy ever not nah, not there because it's it's like I don't get the mentality, you, man. You know, I it's be, I would be out of my mind. It's hot, man. But but see, you're you're. I don't know how long y'all been together, but there will be a time where you go. Ugh. What swinging is? It's just somebody else into your your person. Like if you get a little bored, if you get a little bit taken, like you take for granted the situation to watch another person pleasing your 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 woman and she's watching another chick being like she's saying yeah she like for a guy it's more like damn this guy finds my girl hot and i like that for a woman it's like oh my man can fuck like i thought he could because this oh, bitch yeah. is into him you listen understand? to her listen to her. oh yeah angel knows that here's the other question uh do you worry when you're in one of these situations and this guy is really turning on your woman to the point where she wants to now leave you for him no. Oh hell, that's not how it does. Nah, wow, it's I not. It's like you want that to happen. I have no clue. It's like you, you just, you, yeah, you just want, especially because swingers probably most of the time during their own personal sex life are animals. You know what I'm saying? Me and my girl, when we have a, a real session, man, we're just despicable people. Mm. So it's like you, you, it's normal fucking when you're swinging. It ain't what you do at home because if you're swinging, you're not regular fucking at home. You understand? You're not doing no missionary, and she's not right. going yay and uh, and <laughs> yay. she you 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 know she's being choked, she's being peed on, she's being tied up, and now it's like hey, let's do a little swapping thing, cause you know, and, and that's what swingers swingers are despicable anyway. In turn, but I say that in good good terms. Yeah. And, and 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 you just all the only thing bad is if you get an asshole. If you get like a girl. That like the guy might come. This is another thing. A guy might come with a bitch oh. that ain't his girl. <laughs> I thought you kept saying when you get asshole. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> no, no, no. When you get an asshole, when you get a fucking dickhead, right? <laughs> I'm thinking not a dickhead, but right. <laughs> when you get a, wait, wait, when you get a jerk. No, not a jerk. <laughs> we, <laughs> we sure do use a lot of sexual terms for idiots. Somebody's foolish. <laughs> the first time you said it, I swear to God, I'm thinking. Uh, you, know, when, you know, when you get an asshole, I mean, that's like a very when you rare get a, thing. When you get, like, when you get Bizarre, yeah. That's where they draw the line. If Look, you can fuck my bra, but not other, If y'all not into each other as much as, like, if she's into me, yeah, yeah. but my girl ain't into him, it's, 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 not, it's ugly. Or if he brings a girl that he pretends to be his girlfriend, but it's not. So it's, some hope. it's just some bitch. It, it's not good. It has to be too... Swingers are good people. That's what happens. Swingers are good people. And all right, it's, all it's right. Hard. Enough of that. Wow. Angel, so you guys want in? 
yeah. Full swap, Patrice? Full I, can't, swap. I can't just say full swap right now. And another well, thing, you know what happened, Angel? And I'm going to be honest with you. My girl is 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 almost fifty one percent, forty nine percent in favor of women. She's Oh, I am in women too. And we I, I, I don't know oh. about your husband or your man, but I hate balls. And and my <laughs> girls do my girl does we hate balls, Angel. I, I, I just hate it. And it's not that it's a jealousy thing, it's just some other ball I I have trouble with another pair of balls in there because I'm yeah. I'm an intimate dude. Like I'm I'm into I'm uh, you know I'm I want two girls to lick my nipples. I want fucking one sitting on my face and one riding me. I, yeah. I, I don't. Oh my God. I just don't really want another balls. guy's balls. And I don't blame if you don't want my ball. I'm a mess. I don't want to be around up some other dude <laughs> naked. Well, Hoping you know. You're honest, and that's the way oh, to be. You're balls. honest about what you so you're want. Just looking All right, for Angel. Yeah. A girlfriend. We're letting your relationship. Yeah. We're letting yeah. her go. Uh, well, I don't know. What you looking like, pumpkin puss? I have. Um, have you ever heard of Swing Lifestyle? Oh, I it's thought she was going to mention a disease. I have. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have. Uh, yeah, scoliosis <laughs> and psoriasis. Where, where are you at? A profile. I have a profile up. If you want to see it. Yeah, but you have, have to be logged in and all that shit. You have to be logged in and if stuff. Jim, if Jimmy was here, he'd be yeah. eating up this info, because he'd be uh, just like, "I'll just, I'll just watch uh, you two fucking, I'll jerk off." And yeah. uh, I, you know what? You sound sexy, and, I, and she sounds confident. Because any I'm any girl that says, "Look old. at my girl," and you're how old? I'm 20. Oh God. And I'm. <laughs> are you are you thinking about breaking uh, up with this motherfucker at all in in the near future? I hate married. to I hate to cunt block him, but I just. Just a mere child. I, yeah, 20. That's so delicious. And my girl's a predator, too. She'd be... I don't... A predator. I'll be 21 in a couple of weeks, and we can go celebrate my birthday. Oh, all right, fuck. See if we all like Damn. each other. All right. Oh, delicious. That's oh, give us some on. illegal delicious. booze in the next couple of weeks. Angel, hold on the line. Okay. They want to give you um, a prize. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's They want to give you a... Uh, a John Mellencamp CD <laughs> for that call today. <laughs> uh, yeah, please hold on the line. Twenty years for old. your Burger King coupons. Did you did you ever <laughs> fuck another guy's girl while he just watched you? No, no, mm -mm. no. Nah, he'd have to be because my girl would have to be there, so she had to be yeah. involved. Never. Yeah, yeah, your girl would have. Is like, there a yeah. reason you're asking this? Uh, no, I, actually, years ago when I was like 21, and uh, I I went to a swing club. Because back in the day, some civil servants are the dirtiest. Cops are the filthiest sons of bitches you ever see. <laughs> Fucking Keith, the cop swings now. He's but he's a cop. Yeah. You know you can't say it. I, I, it's, look at look at Keith. Look at his eyes. You telling me Keith don't do some evil shit? He's an officer of the law, my friend. That's right. I know he can't admit it. A respectful very responsible, man. I, here's what I'm saying. These are these are called allegations. <laughs> See, you, are, you are alleging. I am alleging. You are alleging. That strong that said Keith is a nasty one. <laughs> oh Jesus! All right, listen. I have to kill you because you're sorry. Put that away. Uh, <laughs> DJ in a light bulb from post horrors. I've never heard someone say I hate balls that casually. Holy shit! I'm dying over here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, uh, Patrice, when are you going to do another Black Phillip show? Uh, let us see. How about December? December? First week of December. Why that oh, late? Fucking are out of town for the next few days. All right. We're, we'll uh, figure it out off air because everyone's asking. Because now the questions are coming in about swinging, and this is what Patrice would do on his show. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tim in North Expert. Carolina. Yeah, I want to hear Paul R. Nelson. Please play it for me. Oh, shit. All right. I'll, we'll end the show with that today. I promise, Tim. One last time. Paul awesome, R. Nelson remix. You. The election is uh, around the corner. Uh, Ryan. Oh, by the way, if you're just tuning in, make sure you listen to the replay because we did talk to Paul R. Nelson. Yeah, the today. real Paul R. Nelson. Yes, we did do that. Uh, Ryan, what's up? Yeah. Hey. Hey, how's it going, guys? What's up? Hey, man. Hey, I, want, I had a question for Patrice. Me and my wife were wanting to get into swinging. Uh, I, I must say, first, uh, congratulations, man. Both have the American dream. Women that like you. To have their cake and eat it too, but uh, how do you? What's a good way to get into swinging? Let's go to a swing club, and then uh, meet, and, and then you meet somebody who's deep in the in the game, and then they give you. It's a very uh, it's a very secret society to to like. There's places you can go, but what you want to do your first time is meet like a, a unattractive old couple 
that that have been doing it forever that you wouldn't want to fuck. So like and, a video game, you gotta work your way up. Yeah, yeah it's levels. You gotta work your way through levels. The Russian gangsters, then the Chinese ones, and then the fucking yeah. Boss. You want to figure out how your character moves. Yeah, you gotta figure out. It's like the training fucking level. And then you gotta push X X up down square square left right Y. Jesus. Triangle L one L one. Can I go immediately? Yeah, give and me the you, cheat codes and you meet, right you just, away. You just meet an old couple and and they'll tell you all the places to go because the best ones are like at at someone's house and stuff like that because it's a like a swing party yeah it's really on some old everyone's nice shit it ain't like everybody fuck ah it's just like hi how are you and wow she's beautiful and you're beautiful and you have blah 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 mm -hmm. and you have you to have a lovely home here <laughs> 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 serious that's it man you just have to learn from better swingers how to really get into it and don't go on like fucking i love you dot com and no shit like that right. it's bullshit all right. All right. We thanks. should go with that bit. <laughs> oh, this is Hi, would you like some? Oh, wow, wow. Nancy, is that a Chippendale chair that you got? Because I remember, uh, well, me and my husband had gotten a one. Chippendale chair. And it was just the most lovely. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Don't come on the chair. <laughs> oh. well, let me give you a tour of the house. Tour of the house first, yeah. You don't want to just jump in and start fucking. It's got to be it's kind not, of. A, it ain't like yeah, Rome, nice. nigga. It's like, hi, how are yeah. you? Spaghetti. <laughs> right. You know? Boy, that meatball looks good going down your throat. And then, you know. All right. Hey, uh, another mission for the pests. Yes. Go on uh, Howard Stern's website and ask why uh, Howard is advertising on our show all day long today. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. Because yeah. remember, that, like, uh, Tom came running in? Yeah. Because we uh, got word that Howard's, like, running commercials on our show. If we suck so bad, why is he using our show to promote his his shit? Yeah, well, why would you uh So Tom ran in because... No listeners. I forgot to mention this when it happened, because then the show was was just uh, flying by with Borat and everything yeah, else that was going on. Yeah, a lot of shit going on. So Tom ran in and said he's taking care of the problem in New York. Well, it wasn't taken care of in Washington, Philly, Boston, yeah. and, and every other station we were on uh, earlier this morning. Howard using our air... To promote his shit. Yeah, whatever. Take their money. But has no problem, you know. It's their money. Saying how much how much we suck and how much we've uh, we failed in the last two years. Yeah. So why don't you go and uh, ask uh, why he needed to do that today? Do you think they um, they go around and say what are the least popular radio shows? Book all those. Yeah. Let's buy those. The ones that don't have any listeners. Or do you think they sit around and go? Who really is uh, has the, yeah, but he the has big to prove audience? All that, and he, you yeah. know, just shows that he's full of shit. Of course, that's what I'm getting at. Of course, <clears throat> you you won't hear us advertising on his show. No, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, we would do it as a goof, just to get under his skin, probably. Uh, I don't yeah. think he's doing it to get under our skin. He's just that desperate. Yeah. See how we spin things. That's what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready for line of the day? It's the goddamn truth. Line of the day. Oh, boy. Oh. Uh, everyone wants to know where they can see Patrice. He's going to be at the Helium Comedy Club in Philly. No, sometime. 17th, the 17th, 18th. You got it all figured out. Yes. You usually come okay. in here with like a very vague plus. What's today's date, Dan? November 3rd. Okay. Two weeks from today? Not November 10th. Oh, boy. Right now they're so, taking November 10th wait, now. No, not November. So did we got November, that Thursday, November 15th, 16th, and 17th. No, November oh my 16th. God. Listen to me. No, oh no, no. Listen, God. listen. Don't go nowhere. November. Wait, listen, erase, wait, wait, wait. Erase. Erase, erase everything they November just heard. November 16th. Which is a Thursday. Which is a Thursday. 17th, which Friday. is a Friday. And 18th. Which is a Monday. Which is a... <laughs> <laughs> and that is at the Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia, PA. Right. The Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia, PA. All right, we got a guy calling mm -hmm. from Philly. It's Jim. What's up, Jim? Hey, there, Jim. 15th, 16th, 20th. Okay. Got it. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> Patrice, when you come down, when you come down to Philly, you uh, we'll have to hook you up. Uh, I actually uh, DJ at one of the clubs, and uh, we'll have to get you and your girl in for nothing. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Bring you down. That. Have a good time. Thanks, man. We're uh, it's a good time. Interesting, always. Oh, uh, thank you. Good, uh oh, thank you, sir. Let's say hi to Kenny in Jersey, Kenny. Yeah. 
today I learned from Patrice that he doesn't mind eating chickens because chickens live a chickeny life. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe you said that? <laughs> like, you know how chickens are. What the fuck? Just walking around being chickens and shit. They just lead a chickeny life. <laughs> this motherfuckers just bark, bark, bark till they That's die it. and run shit. Run up the ramp, run um, down the ramp. Nick, Nick in Ohio. Peck, peck. Nick. Repeat. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Well, I had something else, but now that you're switching on lines, I think line of the day would be Patrice O'Neal. I learned that his uh, dick is running through the woods in Vietnam with a knife in his mouth. That was a great line. <laughs> yes. <man. laughs> but he spelt uh, it out perfectly with yeah, that analogy. That great line. All right, punch it out, guys. It's all about being well, able to communicate. I want to know if you've ever been to a key party. What I've never it? heard of that. That might be okay. above my So uh, old knowledge. school. That's old school swinger. Storm, you, you know the, key party? It's like one of those things that used to be like in Playboy magazine. Back in the old days, you come in, you put your keys in a big hat or a mm -hmm. bucket or something, oh, no, and then uh, they would pull the keys out, and whatever key you got was what couple you you went with. That's pretty fucking cool. The nah, key party. That, uh, that certainly, I haven't been up But those haven't been around since fucking, But know. that would be cool because that would be Jerry, certainly Jerry exclusive. Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. That would be Martin. super exclusive. That would be just like be, everybody there would want to fuck each other. Right, you, know, so you don't know who you're getting. Yeah, that would be cool. All right, right. so they all better be good. Let's get into line of the day. The, you don't want to get the keys to an old Rambler. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> With the Ferrari keys. Line of the day, sponsored by BodogFight.com. Log on and watch American fighters battle for the right to represent the U.S. in a bout against the Russians. It's all on BodogFight.com, a mixed martial arts tournament and docu-reality unlike any seen huh. before. we got two runner-up uh, lines two of the day. runner-ups. Two runner-ups. Here's the first runner-up line of the day. And I eat uh, 14 hamburger and uh, 2,000 packets of this red soup uh, that's called ketchup. Uh, and now this morning, after what just happened, my anus, it hang loose like a mouth of a tired dog. <laughs> he killed. Ah, oh, is that funny? Yeah, we didn't know how to handle it. We weren't sure how to handle handle him, I should say, but he made Let it real easy. Let him rock, man. All right, here's the uh, the other runner-up line of the day. Like, Anil. A lot of a lot of women have been talking about uh, your film and saying that it uh, it doesn't show them in the best light. Like you, you. Ah, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it. That's good. That uh, was funny. I like the uh, taking photographs of uh, women making toilet. Making toilet. Or making the toilet, Making right? uh, the toilet, yes. I don't know what he said. I'm gonna Best he just say it. <laughs> I'm going to congratulate uh, Patrice O'Neill. I think he got line of the day. Uh -huh. Oh, Here it is, line of the day. I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> uh, uh, Jimmy's song gets cut off again. That was professional. I was going to talk up to the singing. All right, just play it. Here, here comes. If my dick was in Vietnam, wow. yeah. some dudes' dicks can kill a whole village. <laughs> Come in, <laughs> everybody right. dead. My dick crawls around in the bushes with a knife in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> my dick got a fuck. <laughs> that is a yeah. Dick. That's a great line. Wow, you guys pull that one fast. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You beat out Borat. Helium Comedy Club, Patrice O'Neill. Uh, yeah, uh, the 16th, 17th, and 18th. I got it. I got it. November 16th, 17th. November 52nd. Executive takes. Uh, and foot, you got a yeah, plug? Uh, comedy Cave in Calgary, oh, Canada. Cut the shit. Oh, oh, the shit. Comedy Cave in Cal Calgary. Calgary, Canada. I killed him in Cook. Gamanga. From the Lumberjacks, I guess. The 7th through the 12th. See, see you prove, Please leave it in You prove we're not friends. <laughs> Mics are just about to be turned off and you're already out the Patrice door. Patrice has to leave before He's we're done. He's already up. I understand. I didn't see him out on the sidewalk making a call. <laughs> it's pussy day, though, so I don't know. Oh, pussy day. He Get might. the hell pussy out of here. <laughs> it's, it is pussy day. He's got to like, leave early. He's got to go to like a... <laughs> He's got to go to, like, a stationary store and get all those things uh, and figure out what shape he wants. What, what are they called? Yeah, boss. Yeah, i gotta leave, uh, I got to leave early. That Johnson account's going to have to wait. Yeah, pussy day. Pussy day. Gotta, you want to stay, boss, right? Boss understands. <laughs> I, I thought it was done. I'm Who's sorry. not going to give you a sick day for pussy day? <laughs> uh, secretary, could you run to the store and get a card? It's pussy day. Thank you. Get me the read file. <laughs> Pussy 
This pussy <laughs> day. <laughs> like, what else can you say? <laughs> it's pussy what day. What else can you, you say when it's pussy day? Trim it up for it, make it look nice. If you I'm going to complain a, about it being a hairy mess, I got to be willing to do something. You are a good it. man. <laughs> hey, yeah, um, good man. Uh, we're off for a couple of days. Oh yeah. Yeah, the boss is over at the other place, not happy, but the XM boss is very happy. Yeah, okay. Because they know we've been working really hard. I, I, I'm going up to Rochester. Rochester. Uh, the next show we do will be Wednesday. Wow. It's, what are you doing in Rochester? It's my mentor's birthday. Oh, Brother uh, Weez. Brother Weez. I met him in Montreal. He's amazing. Brother Weez is, I think he's turning uh, the big 6 0. Jesus. Ooh. Maybe he doesn't want me to announce that. I think he's making believe he's 50. He's like a grizzly old uh, dude. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a whole thing going on up there, a awesome. roast and the charity event and all that. And, uh, you know, it, it's <laughs> it's important to me. So I'm going to I'm gonna be gone for a couple of days. He's in Montreal. He goes, he goes oh, Patrice, I know, man. No, get him over here. I sat out. He goes, yeah. All right, get out of here. <laughs> 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 the interview with him, yeah, I don't give a fuck. I'm out of here, man. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> he truly is the man. So, <laughs> wish him a happy birthday. He works. For, he works for ninety six WCMF in Rochester. He's wish him 96. a happy birthday. Nah. Oh, he's uh, so, okay. Well, I think it's the big six L. Yeah. Sure. Happy birthday, brother. We do. All right. So we'll see you guys on Wednesday. Okay. Yes. See you have, Wednesday. Have a great uh, long weekend, and uh, and we'll talk soon.